I'm taking phone calls now, Gary. Stop interrupting every minute. What is it? Oh, it's not my fault. It's Jessica Hahn on the floor. Oh, she wants to promote something. I told her she could. Oh, okay. It is your fault. You don't plan well. <laughs> All right. Go buy some art. <laughs> you know, I can't walk down the street without people yelling out the name Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey, they yell from the windows. It's really taken off. It has. It really has taken off. And where is my Baba Booey? And where's all my carts? Where are all my carts? They're oh. back in the office. Well, why don't you get in charge of something? <laughs> why don't you go handle something? Yeah. <laughs> People are screaming for your mustache to grow back as soon as possible, too. Baba Booey. Baba Booey, they yelled to me. <laughs> Baba Booey. You know, he started explaining again to me in the office why. <laughs> and he couldn't get that part right either. Yeah. Hey, Gary, come in here. Explain to the people why you said ba ba booey. He ha he's had days to think about this. <laughs> he was like, you know, boss, quick straw McDraw. <laughs> it's like he prepared his defense. Yeah, like he, prepared, he went home and prepared a whole explanation, and nobody buys it. Can't you cut off one of your eyebrows and paste it over your lip? <laughs> Oh, boy. Was the question? No, the question was, Gary, seriously. Remember we were sitting in the right. office yesterday? I said that sometimes he would call him Bubba Boy. And Robin says, no, that's Bubba Bubba -bu Boy, like he was stuttering. He would say Bubba -bu Boy. Yeah, Bubba Bubba Boy. That's what he used to go Bubba Bubba -bu Boy. Well, maybe I don't remember it good enough. Maybe I have Bubba no defense. Boy. Maybe I'm an idiot. <laughs> there you <laughs> go. Just, I, I, maybe just, I just sit in my room, my pants are on my ankles, and my paintings lined up all I over the I don't know what it is with you, but it's just like when you were giving that explanation, I was getting, I was getting nauseous. <laughs> He was still in there explaining. He goes, you know, really, in all seriousness, and then he gives me like, oh, in all seriousness, I know you were joking around yeah. on the air, but it was very easy to confuse the name because Quickstraw would say, Ba Ba Boy. <laughs> Listen, you, once time you said Tucson instead of Tucson, things happened. Now, come on, you got to admit that was pretty, you know you went home and thought about that explanation. <laughs> yeah, but... <laughs> and now everybody's sending him letters with drawings of uh, Baba Booey and, and charging him money for it. Yes. What, let me. One. Hey, did little... you buy some new? Um... Yes, I did. I'm about to purchase it tomorrow, actually. Yeah. What do you? Gary okay. says, "Hey, you know, boss, it's not so bad that you say Baba Booey on the air, because a lot of good came out of it. <laughs> some guy called me, and he's only charging me like 300 for." Uh... So I'm, I'm picking up a, a rare piece of animation art. Which is? <laughs> <laughs> I can remember. <laughs> I don't want to say anything. It's oh. A... You know, boss, he says to me, you know, boss, seriously, though, I have to figure out why that coyote never seriously, you know, never got seriously hurt. Injured. Yeah, injured. <laughs> never experienced personal injury. <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously, what are you purchasing? It's a... <laughs> is it a Frizz Freilang? No, I, but this one is a Chuck Jones. Yeah. It's a Bugs Bunny and uh, the Monster. Wow. Yeah. That's uh, rare. Well, it's hard to come by. <laughs> and, what it, and, so he the, says, and the guy's only charging me like 300 No, the guy's charging me. You didn't me. have to go all the way to Cedar Rapids. I'm amazed. Cedar Rapids didn't have this didn't one. Didn't the guy find this in the garbage somewhere? No, this, no that's a different Still guy. Still got the creases in it. That's yeah. a different guy. <laughs> So he's only charging like three hundred for a hundred dollars no, no, no. worth of art. No, no, no. He's charging me six hundred for. Well, this one would be. Well, this one would usually cost now around a thousand or eleven hundred. Oh man! <laughs> Boy, do they see you coming? It's very lucrative business, boss. All right. Oh, dear. cartoon art. He's buying it up so that he can destroy some of it, Howard, and then it'll right. become rare. But it's not even the actual cartoon slide. No. It's some guy just sat around and drew up a bunch of slides. Well, not some guy. It's the guy. Yeah, the guy. The guy who sat this there probably the for months, and, and there's probably millions of these on the market. This is uh, the stuff that was probably rejected. This wasn't good enough for the movie. Just, uh, how do you know the guy drew it? How do you know it's not a phony? Because it's signed by him. <laughs> what are you, a, a handwriting analysis? <laughs> He's a handwriting analyst. There's some goods come out of this. Some good. <laughs> yeah, I'm now down to six hundred more dollars. For some worthless art. Why don't you let me draw some pictures for you? I'm I drew a picture the other day, I charged him a hundred dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's signed by the guy. It's signed. <laughs> <laughs> it's signed. <laughs> what do you want from me? Haven't you done enough? Just and like... what are you gonna is it framed, Gary? Does it come with a frame? Yes, this will be framed. Hmm. Excellent. You don't have to go out and hassle with that. Right. It's going in the Garrett Museum. <laughs> <laughs> Wait till all the girls see it. Yeah, chicks dig this stuff. The monster, the monster and uh, bugs. bugs. A very rare piece. <laughs> it's very hard to get a picture of the monster. 
I do admit, when I go to the gallery and I hear grown people talk about bugs that way, it is kind of yeah, embarrassing. Yeah, yeah. It is a little wacky. <laughs> I have not uh, you know, I told you about my cousin who... Um, Was the comic book artist. Yeah, he actually... Drew, and he has a garage full of all that kind of stuff that he drew. the, But the actual stuff that appeared on the comic. Why don't you take Gary there? Um, I don't, you know, he keeps talking about how he has this garage full of stuff, and then his grand, he's going to leave it to his grandsons and stuff. And you know, I would love to ask him if I could have some of it, yeah. but uh, you know, I'd feel real funny asking him for it. Was he in the documentary? I, I don't know. His, what's his last name? Adler, Jack Adler. Yeah, I think he was in a William M. Gaines documentary. He probably was. He was the guy, you know, for years, and he developed their whole. Uh... Is his son? <laughs> and he signed all his own. <laughs> and it's signed. But, like, it's the actual comic book. Yeah. You know, it's like these they, they make these huge uh, plastic things, and then they shoot a picture of it and blow it down. That's how they make the comic book. So he has the giant plastic stuff, which is kind of cool. Well, that sounds great. Yeah. Wow. We don't know what Gary's collecting. <laughs> and God knows, even if it's the real guy, he's just buying it from guys on the street. 99% of my autographs are signed by Ronnie the limo driver. <laughs> I mean, so you know. And Gary knows that. It's not just some guy in the how street. Big are these, how big are these? How big are these slides? Are they as big as your teeth? No. No. Nothing's as big as that. No, seriously, how big are your uh, slides? Are they big? Yeah. Well, you know. They're You're about, calling them the wrong thing. How they sell? They're cells. Oh, cells. Pro oh, yeah, pro production cells. Production cells. But they, then thinking of Baba Booey, could that be right? <laughs> Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. You guys never made a mistake on the air. Ten no, we years. We make lots of mistakes. Baba Booey is just an extremely the one you funny feel like, one. The one you feel it's like... just that we've never collected art <laughs> and not known the name of the guy we were in search of. That's all. <laughs> cells. I mean, we've never collected cells. <laughs> I tell you, the guy who sold that to you should be in a cell. So lock him up. And they should lock you up. You're a mental patient. <laughs> All right, enough out of you, too. Hey, you know, nothing wrong with collecting cartoon art. You're just jealous. As a matter of fact, I'm about to divest and go into paper mache Greek statues. <laughs> He's got ah. one of the greatest origami collections. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, Rare origami. I'm only buying my second one. You guys make it sound like I got my well, apartment stacked with It's just that for a couple of days straight you were coming in and telling me all the different ones you were looking for. And the day you leaned over and you told me you had better art than the guy, this guy over at that other place. Right. I don't know what you're talking about. Hey, where's we my... were over in some guy's office. Oh. Where's my Baba Booey cart? It's in the machine. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> My cousin was sitting and talking about this garage full of neat stuff that he had. And, uh, you know, and he's got all the Supermans and rare Aquaman and all this. And his, his grandsons don't even appreciate it. Because oh. what they do is they just get it out of his garage and sell it to collectors. Mm. You know, they want the money. I want the art. Yeah. So they've been selling it off for him and stuff. And, well, it's not that they want the money. He get, They give the money to him. And, well, but, why don't you buy something from them? I feel a little strange going to my cousin and buying stuff out of his garage, and I'm sure he'd be uncomfortable with it. You know, he just more or less said, I want to give it to my grandsons. And quite frankly, his grandsons don't appreciate it the way I do. But I'm saying go to the grandsons and say, I want to buy some. Yeah, it's too weird. Then it's you just, don't want it. Nah. Well, I'd want it, but... It's just a very weird thing, you know. It's it's supposedly their heirloom, you know, so. Well, you'd be paying them for it. Yeah. Well, I guess you're right. I, God knows what they got in that garage anyway. <laughs> I haven't ever seen it. I've just heard about what it is. And they don't even have any Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. <laughs> anyway, um. Not one Baba Booey in the bunch. No, he never painted <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. I got it. I got it. I got it. The governor's call was gracious. I thanked him for his years of service to the state. He pledged, he pledged, he pledged a smooth, he pledged a smooth transition to the new Christy Guadano administration. Now, now I'd like to I, I'd like you to indulge me in just a few thank yous. I want to thank you for watching. 
I'd like you to indulge me in a few thank yous. Hi, this is Johnny Carson, and you're listening to Bowie 25, only on Howard 101. Oh, boy. And on our Gary's nuptials that are going to take place soon, I have the Van Morrison song that is Gary's uh, song. Now, what is it called? Uh-oh. What is the name of this, Gary? Jackie Wilson said. No, no. <laughs> uh, which, wait, which one do you have? Have I told you lately that I love you? Was that it? Where's the CD? Robin. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going to have tombstones in my mouth. Uh, <laughs> Who does hey, that? What are some of the songs that Scott says is the... Uh, like Always by uh, Atlantic Star, and then Evergreen was very that popular. Go? Always. It's really, it's just, you know... Always. No, no. And I will love you always. And then it's just... That was a big one. Beautiful. Thank you. In recent years, it's Don't Know Much by Linda Ronstadt. And Aaron Neville. Fred, what's your song going to be? Nick's Flicks from one Flick, Lacko? The Martian Ballad? <laughs> That's one of them. No, he, Fred told me what his song was going to be. What it's, is it? Ted Nugent. Yeah. Wang Dang, Sweet Poon Dang. <laughs> 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 uh, what is this? This is uh, Van Morrison's what? Uh, it's called Have I Told You Lately That I Love You. It's a All right. very nice, you know. There it is. Van Morrison. Let's hear this. Well, it's not far down to paradise. <laughs> At least it's not for me. I got a girl who's sitting next to me. Her breasts are double D's. All the doctors can do miracles. Just you wait and see. Baba Booey. Saline, saline implants are better than the silicone. Do, 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 do. It's nice. I like it. Sort of a bare acoustic version. Yeah, all right, let's see. Let's just Van Morrison. <laughs> oh. oh wow. Who picked this? You or your um, I think betrothed? We pick, I think we picked I it together. I can see you picking it. No, we picked it together. From his best record collection. No, no, no. It was a song that we both liked. <laughs> it's sort of Boner Time. Boner <laughs> Time. <laughs> when, when will they actually play this? When you guys walk in? No, probably at some point we'll dance together. You'll dance this, and, and now. But, we're, but we're not, I don't think we're going to do a lot of announcing. And now, for the first time, for the first time as Mr. and Mrs. Delavate, we present. We, pre- <laughs> we present. We present. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Delavate. <gasps> I'll throw up on Jackie at this point. <laughs> Jackie. Yeah. Wait a second. Can I just say one thing before Jackie tells another joke? Yeah. Why don't you tell how it, at his house when he got married? He had the pool party, and he and Nancy danced to Eric Clapton's uh, Wonderful, Wonderful Tonight. Tonight while they each tried to tug at each other's bathing suits. Yeah, well, that's Jackie. At least he didn't take she it seriously. He was pulling down on his bathing suit. He was pulling down on hers. That sounds like fun to me. Bubba bathing suit. <laughs> <laughs> You're going to dance? Uh, presenting for the first time, ladies and gentlemen, let's give a round. Let's, no, let's give a big welcome and a round of applause to, to, to the new couple, Mr. and Mrs. Gary Delabate. That Baba is Bowie. when the Baba, Baba Booies Bowie. will fly. Yeah, Baba Booie. Baba uh, see, Booie. That, they're more than welcome at We're that gonna point. We're going to drown out the music. Yeah, but there's got to be one during the church service. There's got to be. There's got to be a theme. How can Baba Booie get married without it? Baba Boy. <laughs> Baba Boy. Baba Booie. Baba Booie. Let's hear this song. <laughs> You know, when Gary was looking for a DJ, he said he wanted somebody different. He didn't want the same old stuff. Right. He's got it now. How can I you mean, have a whole ceremony well, of ball busters? <laughs> you know what I mean? Without without us doing something. Let's hear this song. I got to hear All this. Right. Baba Boy. I got to picture him and Mary dancing Baba on the Baba Boy. The last time anybody had the whole gang at a party, was that, besides your party, was, was yeah. Craig oh, Kahn's oh. party. And I, he was and pissed Howard, off, and that was just a birthday party. Howard oh, no. passed Wreck wind that. into the microphone was why he was pissed off. Craig, <laughs> Craig from the Window Factory had a big birthday party, and they gave me the, they gave me the camera for his special videotape, and I apparently took a dump onto the microphone. <laughs> well, you know, you know what's so great about I it? I shoved it up my butt. And oh! My, you know what's so great about it was they had the uh, the DJ was on it. The music was really loud, yeah. and when you did it, you couldn't hear it in the place. <laughs> but Howard took the microphone and put it right down there, so on the video you heard it loud and clear. Yeah. And, and he loved it. And there were people standing all around, and nobody noticed it. Yeah, that guy's got a big heart on for me. Believe me, <laughs> he uh, was happy. He loved having that special piece of tape. Guy prided himself on it. He'd marry you. You're damn right he would. <laughs> Let's get back to the song. Here they go, dancing on the floor. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. and Mrs. Gary Delabate. Baba Boy. Baba Boy. Baba Boy. Baba Boy. Baba Boy. Baba Boy. Gary, you sorry now you're having a formal wedding? Yes. <laughs> Have I told you lately that I love you? Baba Boy. 
Listen, Willie, no jokes. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Baba Booey. <laughs> Gary's mom crying. <laughs> Mr. Delabate, they need a hanky. <laughs> Actually, to cry in unison with this singing. <laughs> and at this point in the ceremony, I'm feeling up Gary's cousins. <laughs> Mrs. Delabate continues to cry with the music. Baba Booey. You can almost smell the garlic. Hey, are you going to have a... Uh, I don't even know what Van Morrison's saying to you. Bubba Bolt. I tell you, one day we tried to listen to it, and some points in the middle, I couldn't understand it. And the it. band is going to play this? Or no, you... no, no, no band. Oh, He's just going to play this on record. Yes. He's my troubles, Sounds like you're pulling out all the stops. That's right. Ooh. Have you ever heard a wedding band? That's what you know we're having a DJ. Good idea. Bubba Bowie. And I'll be in the corner laughing, of course. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Now, isn't this the dance also where at some point you have to dance with your mother? Or no. You? Yeah, I can't no. wait for that. We're not doing any of that. Ah, uh, yes, you are. Oh, yeah, right. Well, I'll get up on the on the freaking microphone and tell him to do it. <laughs> Be hiding in the corner. <laughs> isn't this song over yet? I was gonna say you picked a long one. You gotta do something. It's gonna be some dance. My son. <laughs> My son, Gary. <laughs> Baba Booey. My son, Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> Baba Booey. Uh, Baba Booey. All right, Robin. Wow, what a show today, huh? Yes, quite. We gotta we gotta say Baba Booey during Gary's wedding. I think it's a done deal now. We've Baba got Bowie. to. Everybody will be Because everyone will be expecting it. it. Baba Booey. Oh, Baba Booey. Baba Booey. <laughs> you realize he'll be a total wreck between now and then. I know. <laughs> he'll be a wreck the day of. Oh, boy. I can't believe it took us this long to think of it. I guess when I got the wedding invitation, it this all came into... This will be individual in. speeches. You know, the corner Where do you of think each of us the... saying this isn't funny. Right. And we all, used to, you should, we all should do it at different parts of the ceremony. No, you can't. You see, Robin, that's overkill. we got to oh, just do it once. One Baba Bowie. You know what? We need somebody to load Baba Booey into one of those little talking things like they have. Yeah, you know, those... Baba Booey. Baba Booey. So someone get rid of the smoking gun. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey, boy. Baba Booey, boy. Baba Booey. You know what? Oh, 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 oh. Wouldn't the preacher just be great if the, if the priest would just say, oh, oh, no. the, the Do you, Baba would... Booey, take this? I would love that. Oh. The best thing Bob would be if Abui. we could say... Who is the priest? How about if we just slip the... We get the little Bible where he puts the names. And oh, yeah. instead of no, Gary it's not a Bible. They have a piece of paper. A little paper, you no, put no. Bob Abui in. Not Howard, this is a Catholic Bob, do you take... No paper. <laughs> Are you talking about the contract that people... No, 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 no. I'm talking about the piece of paper that the priest uses oh. to just so he remembers your name and stuff. Right? Bob, Bob, you, you, don't you think Bob, this Bible. is a heavy, uh, a heavy, like, what is this, like a CIA mission? Yeah. We should get one of those things, you, like a timing Bob, thing hooked up to a tape that can just put it, hide it somewhere in the church. And then it goes off. And we have no idea when it's going to happen. How about an M80 and a cigarette? But just, you know, all of a sudden when the timer goes off, just out of a clip who's got Baba Bowie. Bowie. So we wouldn't even know when it was coming. We would have no idea. <laughs> Baba Bowie. Baba <laughs> Bowie. You got to admit it's funny. If it, wasn't... It, it is funny, but it's but it's 
you know, not right, but it is funny. <laughs> so should we do it? No, you really should. But it's Come funny. On. You see, you're telling you're us not to do it, but you want us to do it. No, no, I don't want you to do it because you it would. Want it, your it, wedding to be would special. it ruin the wedding? It, it would upset my family. It would ruin the wedding. You think your mother would really odd. care? Yeah, yeah, I do. I think she care a lot. But you're you're part of the gang. We got to do right, something. Right, right. But this is a religious ceremony. Yeah, but you know, know like in the movies, like, like in Porky's and stuff. Right, but this the guys always goof on each other. But the same Porky's. This is a religious ceremony. Oh, Gary, come on. You know that movie? There was a karate movie I was watching the other day, and these guys, I know what it was. It was Delta Force, Chuck Norris. Uh-huh. But this ain't a karate movie. And all of a sudden, they were just about to get married, and the Delta Force calls for this guy. He was he was like, remember there was a black guy? He was getting married in the beginning, is and all of a Delta sudden. Is that Delta Force or is that that? Uh... What is that? That's the movie with um, uh, Charlie Sheen, right? Yeah, when that was, was it. Uh, the Navy SEALs. Navy SEALs. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, the beepers go off and the guy can't get married. Right. Right, but that's because he had to go save the world. Yeah, but I mean, they, but they all, always... All have, you're doing is making fun of But then at the end cartoons. of the movie, they did pranks on each other at the wedding. Right. So we got to do Baba Boy. <laughs> How can you not do that? Because it's just, you know... Imagine you sitting up there, your whole, you're standing there, your whole family's in the audience, everyone's dressed up to the nines, right. they've completely planned this day, your girlfriend walks out, she's beautiful, she has her white thing on... She's got the dress. The music is playing. You get up there. Everyone's quiet. Right? And they go. Ladies and gentlemen. I'm not doing this to say Pat, you know. <laughs> Give the altar boy 200 bucks to fart. <laughs> no, but then all of a sudden, we don't know when, but we know there's going to be a Bob a buoy. <clears throat> and then I don't know where in the service, Robin. But Everybody's going to love it. And then all of a just on you hear. And people will Bob a buoy. It happens. It's great. <laughs> Bob a buoy. Three times. Bob a Bob buoy. buoy. See, now you've already upped it to three. Yeah, but all at once. Yeah. So everyone hears it. Oh, my God, that would be such a scream. <laughs> I didn't think you guys were coming to the church. We're not coming. We'll just set up the machine. <laughs> yeah, we don't need to be there. We'll just we'll get John to Come set on, up the you machine. you know you want to see it. Oh, it's going to be so funny. We're going to all be laughing our ass off. We ought to tape it. Well, Gary's taping it. He'd give us copies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, that's right. <laughs> I won't be able to get much. It's a it's a strict church. Is it? Yeah, they, they don't, don't like let to shoot you... inside the church. Yeah, you got to be all the way in the back of the balcony. Imagine the priest's face when he hears "Baba Booey." <laughs> Baba Booey. Well, I told Baba you. Booey. I told you. I go to. You uh... think it's some sign from God? You're like, my son. <laughs> this marriage is blessed. <laughs> God said something to you. Baba Booey. <laughs> I don't know what it means. Baba Booey. The greatest discovery since the Shroud of Turin. <laughs> I uh, I told you when I go. To Gary, my, we're gonna do it. When I go to my supermarket. Don't be mad. We're gonna do it. I am mad, but that's okay. What can I no. say? When I go to the supermarket on Broadway, they, they get on the on the intercom and say Baba. And Booey. I'll be like getting like spaghetti and Baba just keep Booey. yelling Baba Booey all through the store. <laughs> and that's you know that's pretty funny. <laughs> <laughs> so this is gonna be a scream. Hey, you're you're famous. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba boy. Baba boy. Billy's going to be sitting next to me, I know, the whole time going, Baba boy. And I'll be laughing. No, I'm just going to wait for the priest. Is it in Latin? I don't even know. Baba boy. 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 Because it is going to be goofy watching Gary get married. Get married in a serious ceremony. Yeah, right. Baba boy. But the ceremony's not for you. Baba boy. Baba boy. You put so much energy into this. Why are you inviting us? Yeah, why are you inviting us if it's not for us? Then don't come. <laughs> well, we were invited. I know, but... You must have wanted us to be you there. Invited us to you see... know we don't like... <laughs> you don't have to be there. Jackie, I... the one drawing... Do you, you take this man to... I da da do I da da Come on, Gary, you got to do it. da da do da da do ba ba boo ba ba boo I ba ba boo da da do well, I started. I could start with Robin and just tell her that I have Edward James almost as beeper number, and I could tell him anything I want about you. I said three input will be the nicest thing that you do when I get done. Oh. It'll work my way around the room. Though, you're gonna want Come some hijinks. On. Little hijinks. Little hijinks. Not a lot. A little bit. I'm working on Martling next. Da da doey. Baba boo. Are we agreed? Are you going through with it? Yes. All right.
Fred, don't you chicken Fred, out. I don't, don't want you chicken, chicken out. out. Don't you listen See, to Fred's easy because I'm there. We're all together in this. <laughs> You don't listen to my mother. Yeah, your mother will be on the phone. Jackie. I'm going to call your mother. Walk us into the sea, boss. presents What Does Baba Booey Mean to Me? Hey, this is Jillian Barbary. What does Baba Booey mean to me? Wow, it means so many things. Well, first of all, it means Baba Louie, which, you know, is the original. But it means Fa Fa Flow High. It means Ta Ta Toothy, Mama Monkey. Um, it means so many, many things. And I just love Gary Delabate. I can't tell you, the show would not be the show without those teeth and those gums and those lips. I love you, Gary. This is Bowie 25 on Howard 101. July 26th, 1990. A day like any other. That is until executive producer of the Howard Stern Show, Gary Delabate, says... What do you call him? Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie instead of Baba Louie. And just like that, the Baba Bowie legend was born. Join the Howard Stern channels in celebrating the 25th anniversary of what some call the moon landing of stupid. Experience 25 years of Bowie Stern Show moments, songs, and epic shout-outs. Bowie 25, playing through... Throughout the weekend, exclusively on Howard 101. See how one monkey misstep changed pop culture history. Ports remain potential targets for attacks of mass destruction. Live in Waterbury tonight, Jason Newton. Oh my goodness, we have had the best time. And uh, let me just tell you what. Have a nice day, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. We got it, we got it, we got it. This is Booey 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. And Baba Booey to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. Well, New Yorkers are certainly eagerly anticipating the Pope's arrival. CBS 2's Hazel Sanchez joins us now live in Bay Ridge, Brooklyn, with more on that part of the story tonight. Hazel? Christine, many members of St. Andrew the Apostle Church behind me have tickets to see the pontiff, and they are hoping his presence here will help to revitalize the Catholic Church. Classic movie. i got to do that Sue Simmons contest. Maybe I'll take some phone calls. What are you doing in here, Gary? Well, you had a couple of things you wanted to do, and I wasn't sure what you were going to get to. Yeah. If you're going to do the Sue Simmons Floyd. contest, I'd yeah, stay. You're right, you're right. Okay. You were just annoying me. I, not on purpose. I know. Bop, I thought bop, you were going to talk about this woman. All right. All right. Listen, get out. I, I can't take it. I can't talk to you right now. We'll do <laughs> Sue Simmons so later. I, I just can't talk to you. <laughs> He's a whack job. Oh, man. I got so mad at him yesterday. What? I go from really liking him to getting mad at him. Why? Yeah. He just made a mess of something. Um, he comes to me, and he says, hey, Hollywood. Now he's been working for me for like 15 years. How do you want to? Do you want to have evidently Sega? You know the game Sega. Yes. The game company. Mm-hmm. Evidently Sega is coming out with a new cable channel, where you'll like when it's hooked into you. You'll probably be one of the first people to get it, Robin, because you're you're wired for everything. But it'll be an interactive channel. You'll um, have a Sega control panel in your house, and you'll just uh, call in and. You'll turn to that channel and it'll offer you a menu. And you'll what? pick one of the Sega games and you'll play it. Sounds good. So Gary comes to me and he says, Bull, there's a new Sega channel. You want to try it? You know, me, I run around here like with a chicken with my head cut off. I remember he asked me when I was, he was at his desk and I was running around. And I said, oh yeah, what's that all about? So he says, well, it's a new channel and you could try it out for a while. Now, I could swear he even told me that they're a sponsor, but he claims he didn't. So that's an argument that, you know, he could be like Dennis Funk. No, 
Not yet. Mom, mom, no, mom, I, mom. I told you to leave. I'm not leaving on this one because you're so off base on this. No, I'm I not, was Gary. Never, never part I of this never. conversation. Good. Thank you. Didn't because he say it was a sponsor? I this, yes. And I said, oh, he did. Oh, you I are know a liar. it. Thank God she I got did. a witness. Oh, she's a you liar. I asked you 20 times if it's a sponsor. Oh, no, absolutely not. And she Robin, told me you Bucky. You think it's one of Bucky's? Why would Gary, I, oh, I swear Robin, you get Robin confused. Out and out lied. She's not. She just out Say and I out swear lied. to God. I swear to God. I knew it. It was a sponsor. Yes, Gary. Gary, Gary, stop for a second. Gary. Don't get defensive. You really did. I did not. I always asked. I did not. I asked. I always asked because said, what is this all about? Right. You were and there. I, I it was in the office. Why yes. did I say they're a sponsor? Why because you, would I because say you, that? because you space out. You get. You're very no. busy. Gary, and you, don't you think. hardly knew what it was at the I time, exactly and you always what... like to ask, answer questions. Uh, you do, Robin. You just lied. You're a <laughs> Robin, piece of crap. I told him that he. <laughs> he, he, he told me. Oh, he told me it was a sponsor. <laughs> you know, I don't have any. Thank God, I got somebody to back me up. I walk into this guy, and he tells me it's a sponsor. I would never even accept this. Listen to this. I, they I don't, want you to try it out, so when you talk right. about it on the air, the whole rap. Right. He gave me a rap on it. <laughs> I'm telling you. He even I told can't me it believe was. He's carrying he, on like this. I know, but you see what it is. When it's his word against mine, everyone assumes that I just don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> he does this to me all day. It's I thought you were so leaving, not the whole true. Time. Gary. Honestly, this is the, this is the honestly, scariest thing Robert's ever I done. swear, <laughs> the scariest thing you've ever done. <laughs> but Gary, I'm telling you, How I remember the conversation happen. with so you. Two of us are wrong. Gary, oh wait a second. Stop. Stop. That stink is in. Here again, Howard doesn't know. Can we what get happened. rid of this garbage. He count? wants it to happen. No, so I could be wrong. Gar and you're just gonna lie for Gary. Him. I don't take product. First of all, let's assume you're right. You didn't tell me. Where is your brain? You know that I don't accept anything from someone who's not a sponsor. I don't know that. And then, like, of course you do. You're working for me for 15 years. Why did you go to that movie the other no, day? No, no, no. When I'm talking, to, I'm not talking about going to see a movie. I'm talking about, I can go see a movie. That's a $7 movie. I can't accept a whole Sega channel from somebody. I did not know that. And I, and we You don't know that. Discussion. How could you not? We've had this discussion a million we've times. We've never had this discussion. You see me taking things from people who I are not. I don't know. You don't know. I don't know. I know. You don't know a thing. This is my problem with him. He just doesn't know. He doesn't no, know what to do. It reeks in here. I know. I don't know. I have two minutes. Tell me all you know. <laughs> I don't no, know. Goddamn liar. Robin is not a liar. So I walk into the just office. Just because I don't agree with him, I know. I'm a goddamn liar. Yeah, right. <laughs> so I walk into the office, and he says to me, the Sega channel is going to be on the air. I, I know what he said. I Believe me, I wouldn't accept something that isn't going to be on the air. And you know what? Even when it is a sponsor, I don't want anything to do with it. Mm -hmm. I don't want the product. But he kept hocking me with this, do you want this Sega channel? Do you want this Sega I channel? I even remember him coming back again, and he didn't know whether it was TV right. or computer. Yeah, yeah. He didn't know. But that didn't happen. I didn't see it. Right, I'm I know. Goddamn lie. Right. <laughs> I know. And he's telling me that I don't know what I'm talking about, yeah. so what am I supposed to do? Now I'm in the embarrassing situation. So listen to this. So I finally said, hey, it's a client. They want me to check it out so I can talk about it on the air. Mm -hmm. My kids would probably love to use it. So I'll try it out for a couple of months, the Sega channel. And then they have to send a guy to install it in your house, he tells me, and all this stuff. I said, no, you know what? Jeff Schick's the IBM guy. Maybe he'll help me out with it because uh -huh. it's a computer thing. And, and Jeff says he can handle it. So I go home. I see the Sega channel, and it's great. It's all installed, and I'm telling you, it's a big menu, but it's a big computer box and a whole thing because it's not set up on Long Island yet, so right. we have to do it through a computer. It's not the way it's going to work in your house. So then all of a sudden, there's like a contract that has to be signed saying that I'm responsible for all the equipment in case it's damaged. And I go, this doesn't sound like anything that I've ever been asked to do by a client. Yeah. What? I don't want this obligation. Let's get this thing out of here. So... Uh, I call up Gary. I have Laura, my assistant, call up Gary and say, what kind of client is this? I mean, why am I signing? I mean, I didn't ask for this. I don't want this. If I, I don't want this responsibility. Uh -huh. I don't know what this thing's worth. It could be worth, I don't know what it's worth. Well, maybe I have to put my house up for collateral. I don't why know. I don't want to be. Why would you automatically assume it's a client if somebody hadn't said that to right, you? Right, because I would never, first of all, I never would accept something right. from someone because you know what they're going to expect? A free mention every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And I'm, I can't represent that. If somebody lends me the Sega system, I can't, I can't represent that I am going to sit there and do free commercials for them. I don't own the radio station. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's proper. So, uh,. I get this whole thing installed. It takes, you know, it takes a long time to install, get it all set up. And I see this contract. So I say to uh, 
Fafafui, what, what is this contract? I go, this is a client, right? He goes, oh, no. They just wrote a letter asking if you wanted to use it. Uh, and now he gets a letter like that and he doesn't know that I can't accept something like that. Where's his head? He knows I can't accept something like that. Why didn't he just give me the letter? Well, I don't know what he's doing with the letter. Just give me the letter. And I remember 20 to 7 times asking him if it's a client. There was no letter. What was there it? There wasn't a letter. The publicist for the Sega Channel And called, you don't know I can't accept that? I told that? you that. I told you that so many times. No, Gary, you just didn't. I just you absolutely just, did. Gary, I I would, there... then why would I accept it if would, I didn't no, no, know no, it was first, a publicist? You don't even, you don't even know yeah. that I told you that. You want to think that. I got a witness, I, an eyewitness I who's telling me, they're I telling me the same it. thing. You told me it was one of the accounts of the station. You did. There's no reason for me to tell you because it just wasn't. You just didn't that, listen to the question. I knew that up front. I knew right. And if you knew it, you should have said to me, Howard, you can't accept this. I don't it's... tell you what to do. No, excuse me. I never Listen tell to you me. What to Listen do. to me. In the ten or fifteen years that you know me. I don't know. I wish I could think. Have I, I ever taken a something from anybody? What did I have you do the other day? Did I have you return a printer? Why did I have you return that printer? I'm I'm not a sure. A company which, decides right. to send me a computer printer, a portable printer in the mail. Mm -hmm. I said, I, I can't I can't take this. That's it, one of the reasons is why I sent it back. That is one of the reasons. That's the only reason you sent it back. I thought the other reason was because we already got three of the same one as well. No. Bop, 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 bop. That's not the same. And I don't have three of the same ones as well. I don't even know what you're talking about. What do I have three of the same Didn't of? Didn't we get like a, no. a bunch of those for your birthday? No. It's a portable printer. I don't need it. I don't want it. And they're not a sponsor of the station. And even if they were a sponsor of the station, I have trouble taking it. I don't want to owe anybody anything. He doesn't know this about. I don't know how he could not know this. He gets a call from a publicist. He just say, "Howard Canix, are you a sponsor of this station? I'll refer you to the sales department." He knows this. He knows this. I don't know this. And you were in the office when the yeah. phone call came in. No, there was not no the phone call. call. He there was, was no letter. Not when the phone call. He was doing his thing. I was behind was him, and he said to me, "Both, both, both. You want to say this is the news?" I said, "Oh, he's a client. Yeah, he's a client." I never said it. You did. You I did, Gary. I remember it. Swear I remember my, it. Swear on my mother it never happened. I swear on my mother's life. You got you got Robin who I heard it and I heard I it. Oh, Robin doesn't book. know anything. I got Robin's book. Wasn't yesterday, wasn't Robin like kooky? Now all of a sudden she's like the world. <laughs> she's got a great possible. memory. For what? Uh, you just said everything in her book isn't true. What memory does she have? Everything. You said Howard Stern said everything in Robin's book is not true. Yeah, but that has nothing to do with her memory. Of course it does. <laughs> does she made she, that stuff up? No, no, she claims she remembers that it happened. No, no, said, no, 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 no. No, her words, Robin's exact She even admitted words, to me in private she made it up. No, over. wait a second. Oh, liar. <laughs> Robin's oh, exact you. words yeah. were, hey, that's the way I remember it happened. All I know that, is you said I Robin, got, you got a memory a and I remember you, you saying remember it to me. It. Because in my 20 years in show business, if you want to call the show business, I've never yet accepted anything unless it's a client of the station. I just think I made it. So a you don't know myself. this. You don't know it. Mm -hmm. you don't, you're oblivious to anything I do. And I know what you said to me because I wouldn't even get started with Sega if I didn't know that they were going to be on the air with us with this product. Gary, I'm not going to argue with it. On two counts, you should know automatically that you can't get a phone call from a publicist and line me up with, I don't know, a $200,000 worth of equipment or whatever yeah, that's, it is. That's what it was, $200,000. you got to see this whole rig. There's a huge computer rig in my house. Okay, I didn't know. It wasn't mine to... I just... It wasn't you, all right, listen to me. You. Don't pass me any information like that. That's what I'm telling okay. you. I can't accept that. You Why? know this. No, I don't know that. And I am telling you, I was in the office. I don't remember Robin being there, but I remember me no, being I in there. I remember Robin being there. And me asking now. you, listen, I don't want to spend so much time on it. My point is... Then why is, you even bring it up? You can leave. No, no, but what, leave. what are you going to hammer me about on the air? You, you know, you, why bring it up why? at all? Why did I bring it up why on does the whole, air? Why does because, the whole country have to know this? Because it's important that me. they know that I have an office that's in disarray. No, it's I want important to they know it. that you're a dictator. Oh, oh, I'm a dictator. No, you're a dick. I'm a tater. Right. Right. <laughs> I was trying to get the second half All right, out. get out. You do your job horribly. Bop a flunky. What did he scream just now? I don't know. He's Nazis. A, he, <laughs> Nazis. <laughs> I mean, I stood there, and I remember saying to him, is this a client? Oh, yeah. He told me it's Bucky's client. He tells me things. He just says things. So then I said, oh, my God. I've gone through all this trouble. And now they got to take it And I, I'm, I'm going to have to unhook the whole damn thing. I didn't know any of this. And then I, said, I wanted to call up Tom Chiasano and say, hey, listen, this is what happened. It's a, it's a blunder. Mm -hmm. Because Chiasano's got to know about it, and now i got to have it all unhooked. What is he screaming about? Did he or did he not? 
create this fiasco? Of course he created it, because first of all, he, he knows already, I can't accept stuff from some guy who calls up and says, hey, you want the Sega channel for free? Even if, all right, let's say, you know, mm. the worst case scenario, we are both wrong. He never said that. Yeah. He has to, he, his job is to make it clear to you what's going on. I know. And I had 27 discussions about this Sega with him that it was a client, and he told me it was. Because he doesn't know what he's talking about. He told me it was Bucky's account. Mm. That's my story. I don't know what his story is. He's yelling that you, you're, you're a liar and you don't know what you're talking about. You were there. Absolutely. Because it was one of those days where we were all in the office and it was crazy, and he kept blurting out, Sega Channel, Sega Channel, Sega Channel. The day I remember wasn't in the office. I yeah. wasn't there when this call came in, but I remember no, him not... sitting there at the table. Right. And he had his little little post-its, you know, right. stuck to his pad. Right, Mr. Organized. And he Organized. kept uh, flipping through them, and he goes, oh, and uh, Sega, uh, yeah, they're coming on, and they yeah, want to put a thing in your house because yeah. they're starting this game channel. So I and said, I, in fact, he didn't even know whether it was games. He just said Sega. Yeah. And I don't know. And they're and coming on. And they're, and they're coming, coming on. on. Yeah. So I got, I just said, ah, eh, for once, they're coming on. I'll have something to talk about. Why not? Yeah, my kids might like it. Yeah, my kids do love it. And then I, and then they thought they were getting it for a couple of months. And yesterday they're playing it, and I came in, and I go, you know, I, I think we got to take this thing out by tomorrow. <laughs> I think we only get it for a day. And my kids are like, what? Oh, man. Oh, they're like, we're just getting into get it. used to it. Yeah. Where's Tom? Hey, Tom is our general manager. So now I got to deal with Tom on it. There's always a little fiasco going on. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I'm pinning this on Gary. I'm not taking the fall for this one. <laughs> so here, so I was told that this, I, I say, you heard the whole conversation. Yeah, I heard the whole, absolutely. Yeah. So I got to return this somehow, but man, it's a major job returning it. So I'll get it out to them in about a week or so. I mean, what did they send you? It's, it, well, first of all, the Sega channel is going to be it, it, no. It's going to be it, it's going to be hooked up eventually into everyone's home through their cable system. The problem is right now cable systems don't carry it, so it's a whole big computer. Seems like a lot. Yeah, it's a it's a, ter like, it's a terminal like what they're going to. It's a whole system. It is not even patched into your computer. Right. It's its own separate computer. <laughs> so you have like the mother computer that they'll eventually sh use to feed all the home. Exactly. Oh, no, it's in your house. It's no in my wonder house. they were having you sign a contract. Yeah, thing. and I'm like, I'm like, I said, what kind of client makes me sign a contract? Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm using this thing because they told me to. <laughs> now I'm signing on contract. This is the, the whole thing. This morning is the first I've heard of it. Yeah, I know. Right. But we, but I was under the impression that this was Bucky's account. No, that this is what they were pressuring me to do. It. I mean, as far as I know, Sega is not an advertiser. Oh, okay. Although well, they have been for the last twenty minutes. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> well, all right. So there, there they got a plug. <laughs> I mean, you know, Sega is not giving me a system because I'm a great guy. They're giving it to me because I have a radio show. What do you think they expect? Yeah. They expect mentions. Right. I think they got everything they were looking for. Well, uh, can I ask you a question? Uh, yeah. How come you don't know this? That that's what Sega is expecting is mentions. I don't know what I have. Why do you no think? Idea. Let me ask you. Let me ask you a question. You're How a smart guy. How come we go to scores? <laughs> You're I a bright guy. How come we go to scores and they're not a sponsor? I'll tell you in a minute. I'll tell you the because difference. It's good for the air, right? No, no, I'll tell you the difference. The difference is I've cleared it with Tom ahead of time. You have. And I've sat. Yeah. Okay. He knows about it. Right. It's okay. Okay. All right. Now, let me tell you something about uh, uh, any company out there. Do you think, let me ask you, when I was in high school, do you think that Sega contacted me in high school and said, you know what, you seem like a really down-to-earth guy. Right. We would like you to have a free system. Do you of think that happened? Okay, but let me do, ask just answer the question. I'm asking what, the questions, no, and then you, you can ask okay, questions. Okay, fine, I got right. one. When I was in college, do you think that anybody contacted me and said... Howard, nobody did anything for you before you, Howard Stern. We've established okay, that. Okay, now, now I have a radio show. It's a very popular show. We know that. Right. Why do you think Sega would contact me without contacting Tom? about advertising, why do you think they'd want me to use their brand new system? Why Take you, a guess. Take a guess. Why do you I think, asked a question. Why do you think that you're on there the mailing list? There you go. You're asking me a question. Why do you think you're on the mailing list of millions of movie companies of that course. don't... Excuse, excuse of me, course. That don't advertise, that send you movies, and then you get on the air and say they're great movies because that's the way you feel. Right. But you're on there. What do you think? They're because it to you because, you're because a nice guy? I am a movie reviewer in a sense. I give my opinion. Right, on they're sending it to you in the hopes that you'll talk. No, no, about no, no. You're excuse not a movie me. Reviewer. Excuse don't me. Don't delude yourself. You're not Ebert. No, excuse me. Something. <laughs> you don't know what I am, Gary. You are a moron. You're not a, mo a moron doesn't know what anybody is. You're not a movie for reviewer. a living. It's I told. Oh, I'm not a movie. I don't give my opinion. Listen. 
Listen, jackass. It's a thin argument. You are so stupid. It's a thin argument. It's not a thin argument. I cannot accept a two hundred thousand dollar. I don't know what this computer is. I do cannot accept things like that. You don't know the difference between going to see a movie. No, no, but okay. So if you're in a movie, a, a movie mo is part of pop culture. Everyone goes to see the movies. Therefore, I comment on movies. So uh, as far as the Sega system, no, wrong. The Sega system is a different thing. It's completely different. It's a lot of hardware. It's a big expensive item. It's a luxury item. It's like I can't accept a car from uh, Mercedes Benz because right. they want me to mention it. It's an implied thing. A movie is one thing. It's a seven dollar item. You understand? Seven dollars every week for two years. No, no, no. Over it's and over a again. seven. Would you explain the rules to this maniac? <laughs> there is a line. There, there's. He's I my mean, producer. That's what scares me. <laughs> I mean, I, I don't want to. I don't want to jump in, a, you know, and uh, and get on Gary. But I mean, there's a difference between a seven dollar movie. He doesn't and see a, it, and a, Tom. And Five hundred. I swear to you, I never told them it was a client. I swear well, I, on I, my I, son's I can't, I'm life. Not gonna, I'm, oh, you do? I'm not then your son is going to drop dead because he's you not, just lied. He's not. I would never lie. Somebody call the hospital. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> I just cannot believe how Robert could just jump on that. She doesn't lie. She you does. know she doesn't. Gary, you think she's making that up? She sat there. Why would I do that? Why would I do that? She sat in the weekly meeting. Why would she? Why would she do it? Because this is a great thirty minutes. No, there. because she would say she that, didn't hear it. Why would she do it? She'd say, "I don't know anything about it." But you, you still two made always a have mess, this problem. Whether you said it was a client or not, but I heard you say they're coming on and they want you to try this out you and did. they want to put it into your house. You can. See I would what even it is. guess that Jackie was sitting there when you said it too, no, because I, I remember saying you, to myself, was, "Oh, Jackie probably wants one of these." Robin, yeah. you and I hey, one time. You and I discussed it three. Jackie, can I ask you something? Were you a witness to any of this? And be honest. I might have been in the room because I remember the word Sega, but I was paying no he attention. He mentioned it a second so, time when Jackie and I were in the room, and that time is when he told you it was a co he. They had to bring the computer or hook it into your right, computer. Right. I would take a polygraph. Because I would be more than one to take a polygraph. In wasn't your own, on I would take Island. one because you're a cabbage head. You I'm probably not a would pass. Head. You probably don't remember <laughs> saying you don't know what you say. I know. I am telling you, me. you. I don't accept gifts like that unless it's a client and it's a specific reason because I'm going to talk about it. What? Hello? Wolf? Oh, Hello. here's Gary Puppet. I'm party. so happy in my last work. <laughs> and my job in life is making you miserable. Yeah. <laughs> it is. You're good at it. Where'd Listen. He, go? he left. He left. <laughs> Gary left when the puppet came out. <laughs> you don't need him anymore. Drove him out of the room. Puppet. Here's my point. I'm telling you, he talked. Listen. I was about there, and right. he certainly I mean, didn't right. sit and say a publicist from Sega called no. and they'd like to give you a system. I know. I never said I that. I can't accept systems. I will swear to that. And he knows that. He's heard me on a million times say, Gary, I can't accept something like that at this point after this half hour conversation about Sega they should almost turn you down when you say you're gonna send it back but yeah. you should send it back no I'm gonna send it back right. but is, what I'm telling you is it's gonna take me about a week or, well, or so because okay. I can't I gotta get Jeff to do it and he's busy with IBM and all okay. that okay no problem good <laughs> just so you're aware thank you very much yeah I'm signing contracts on this thing I'm going <laughs> what, what, what I got better call Baba Booey why is a client having me sign a contract it never occurs to him that there's a big mistake and it must be him if you're no. calling him saying, what is this co uh, contract all about? Since he's been working for me, he has never once admitted to making a mistake. <laughs> he has never once. Like, I'm, like, all of a sudden, I went out of my mind and said, hey, I'm going to accept a publicist's yeah. gift. I'm gonna take. I'm gonna throw all. I'm gonna throw my career out the window for a stupid game that I don't you know, even play. You know, I I just love Sega so much. Yeah, I gotta have that. I can't afford to buy a Sega system for my house. I can't afford to buy some some Sega. Wolf. What is that, uh, Gary Puppet? Wolf. Did I happen to mention to you that NASA wants to name a rocket ship after you because you're so handsome? <laughs> oh, is that right? I swear. Uh huh. <laughs> Hey Gary Puppy, you're not stupid. Uh, you're not stupid squared. You're stupid cubed. Well, I know I'm a barren brain, a dead dome, a blank brain, a dense skulled, monsoon mouth idiot. Stop me when I go too far. <laughs> Let me ask you something. In the, all the time that you've known me, have you ever seen me accept something from an outside source that wasn't a client? Absolutely That, that not. wasn't coming on to advertise? No. I mean, and aside from made, a book or there a, has been yeah. a, a lot of conversation about how we you, you send them back a number of things right but gary doesn't know about it gary says i never heard of that i just I don't know that i don't know that he says i don't know that how could you not know that after working with me for 15 years we constantly sit around talking about payola and plugola yeah. and all of that stuff yeah, i'm going to come in here and do a commercial know. for sega every day <laughs> and he can't Make the leap yeah. that Sega wants to put it in your house right. because they want you to talk about it. Right.
And that that would be wrong. Yeah. That I'm, like, how am I going to reward these guys for doing this? Yeah, I won't talk about it. They'll be real thrilled. Yeah. That they just want to give this to you. Yeah. And he doesn't know about any of this. He's never heard this before. He, he's never heard this before. He says he's never heard this before. This is what he, he just said. He doesn't know that. I don't know that. I just, <laughs> I just take the phone calls. I got a call from a publicist. How come? That's why Morty makes so much more money than Gary. Because Morty knows Letterman can't accept. Do you think Letterman accepts a Sega system? He doesn't know. He just he, he has clu he's clueless. There's his sign on the door. Baba Booey. See it? <laughs> Baba Booey. I got a big sign to remind him of who he is. <laughs> Baba Booey. I put that up yesterday. <laughs> oh, Isn't that great? Oh, oh, oh. One of our listeners sent that in. Baba Booey. He doesn't he doesn't know. He doesn't know anything about how I run the office back there. And you're supposed to catch every mistake he makes. Yeah. Then he's screaming at you. Yeah. You're the one that's wrong. You didn't catch me. How come you take a movie? <laughs> how come you watch a movie? You're not a Cisco and Eber. You That's a thin argument. How yeah, come you a... go to school? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a thin argument, boss. That's a thin argument. You are no Ebert. And Robin, you're a liar. Yeah, and he doesn't know that I'm a movie reviewer. I'm anything I want to be. I'm sitting there saying to myself, what is a better uh, plug for a movie than for you to say, I really enjoyed it. Right. You are totally tapped into your audience and its likes and dislikes. Right. But you're not a reviewer. No. Not Ebert. I'll bet you I'm better than Ebert. You're no Ebert, boss. <laughs> <laughs> now, how come you can take a seven dollar movie, but you can't take a two hundred thousand dollar computer? All right, yeah. seven dollars over three hundred sixty five days in twelve years. Yeah, did you hear that logic? <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was great logic. <laughs> yeah, I know. We're gonna pull that and play that. I'm Gary's a human calculator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Ga Gary Puppet. What are you, the human calculator? I'm a human calculator. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was so crazed last night when I heard all this. I was out of my skin. I was just like, what is he doing now? <laughs> and they, my kids are digging this thing, and now and it's like... But you've got a whole yeah. big contraption there, too. Yeah, yeah. Needs now an expert to come take it out. Yeah. It's not like pulling out a plug. No, I can't just pull out the plug and wheel it back in. Ugh. And you know what? I, even, when it's, even though they were coming on the air, I wasn't even going to do this. <sighs> I just said, ah, for once, let me have some fun. Yeah, with this. I mean, you were a little bit like, well, what does it take? You yeah. know, it's like you, you didn't even want to go through the hassle. No, of it. I didn't. <laughs> but I'm sure he doesn't remember all that. No. <laughs> and none of the, I didn't hear him once say, this is some publicist who dreamt this up. Never. Was a client of the station. But he doesn't remember. He's going to take polygraph tests, and he's swearing on the life of his kid. <laughs> <laughs> I have a memory like an Etch-a-Sketch. I shake my head and I forget everything, Wolf. You know what? He has a terrific memory, Gary, but the problem is he doesn't... It's stupid crap. Right. <laughs> That's it's it. dumb crap. Remember that scene in Scarface when he gets in the car and he's eating the yogurt? And right. he looks at him and he says, look at you, you F and F. Right. Look at you now. <laughs> he remembers movie things. <laughs> he can, Gary can walk in and, and actually memorize movie scenes. And remember the tracking shot from Citizen Kane? Yeah. Yes. Which denotes like the passage of time when Citizen Kane's marriage is breaking up with his wife? But he doesn't it's know. It's unbelievable. What but happened he doesn't... yesterday? <laughs> yeah, uh... what happened yesterday? What happened on the show yesterday? Uh. <laughs> I have to go eat a Fig Newton. That's brain food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Gary Puffin. Uh, don't mention it. All right. <laughs> don't mention it. A Fig Newton is brain food. Oh, was I going nuts yesterday? I'm sitting at home, like my, pounding my head into the wall, and my kids are playing this Sega and going wild for it. And now you're trying to figure out how to talk them down from it. Yeah, and I'm pumping them up. I'm like, you're the, f you know, because like Jeff was telling me, you're the first kids on Long Island to ever play this. It hasn't even been put on anywhere. It's just in oh. testing, and they're all excited, and they're inviting their friends over. And I, and then all of a sudden, I see this contract I got to sign. And I said, wait a second. This doesn't sound right. What client would do this? I call up Gary. Oh, I never said it was a client. And I was just <laughs> like, oh, oh. You start to hyperventilate. Yeah, yeah, I was just like, what? <laughs> no, you told me it was a client. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. <laughs> Must have been somebody else with big, huge, smelly choppers. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm looking at this contract. I signed a smaller contract when I signed up for my movie. <laughs> it was like a 97-page contract. Oh, man. <laughs>
And I'm just like, what is this? I got to go get an attorney. <laughs> oh, I tell you, another fine mess. Drop dead. <laughs> what was that? That was Gary. I'm trying to call him back in the office. <laughs> oh, oh <man>. boy. <laughs> He's not speaking to us? Uh, idiot Central. Head idiot speaking. Hi, I'm calling from Toshiba Cameras. I have 20 free cameras Stop for right Howard. Stop right there. Say no more. Send them all over. We would like to give Mr. Stone we don't care. Whatever three you want. cameras, we're, so he'll mention them on the air. He'll plug it and add nauseam. Just send them over. Send two extra for Gary. <laughs> when have you, when have you ever <laughs> heard me plug that kind of stuff or uh, do that kind of stuff? I've never heard you plug that kind uh, of that's stuff. That's right. We want to send over some free cameras, and uh, I'm also calling for American Airlines. We want to give you free tickets to anywhere in the world. And a plane. And a plane. <laughs> your own private plane. We'll at least have a full tank of gas. Yeah. Then send it over. Yeah. And we have a ticket for your for your uh, Mr. Stern's monkey as well. We've seen him on the E show. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> what are you doing back there? Making deals. B. See, Hello, you know why I know. It? What do you have for both today? <laughs> you know what? You know why I know he's lying because he knows that I don't accept things yeah, like that. Yeah. He knows that, and he says he doesn't know that. Well, he conveniently forgets most of what he knows yeah, all he the time. <laughs> yeah. Hey, by the way, there's a guy calling me later. Accept it. And he's got some. Whatever uh, he wants. He's, I think he's from Hewlett Packard. He wants to give me free laser jet printers. Yeah. <laughs> well, then go get him. So you decide whether or not I should have them. Okay. Don't and don't check with Tom. Because that'll ruin everything. I wouldn't dare think of it. All right. You know you did wrong. And you knew you were doing wrong. No, I don't. I really don't. I got it. The only reason that you let that go through is because you knew you thought it was a sponsor. Because normally you would never even entertain that. I, I know that. Howard, I knew it wasn't a sponsor from the very mm -hmm, beginning. Mm -hmm. Never thought it was one. Why would I think it's one? I, that I can't explain. You, there's no <laughs> that I have no explanation for. Hey, what's the difference? <laughs> what's the difference? Is it a big mass? It's a big mass. Hey, Bolf, Budweiser wants to send you a pony. Because <laughs> <laughs> you're a good guy, and it's a little horse like a little movie. <laughs> it's just a little horse. <laughs> and you are a horse reviewer. <laughs> right. You're the Cisco Neva of horse review. <laughs> <laughs> Gary, if Budweiser calls and wants to send me a pony, don't accept it. I can. They're, they're an advertiser. Yeah, but it wouldn't be right. No, sure it would. No, it wouldn't. You see, it wouldn't. Of course it wouldn't, Howard. Oh, you know that. We're either going to do this then or I'm going to leave. Then why do you think leave. it's not right? We're either going to do this or I'm going to leave. You're not leaving anyway. I am leaving. No, you're not. I am too. <laughs> am I a horse reviewer? <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, what is it? Seriously, what, how would how come you know? You're a horse rider. Why don't you just throw you know, a saddle on me and ride me around? How come What's you know? Left? Wait a second. How come you know that I can't accept a horse I from Budweiser? Know. I don't know that. Oh, you don't. I don't know. All right, okay, because that's inconsistent. Uh, I, exactly. I'm going to be. You're saying you didn't know. Anything. I'm going to be consistently stupid. Right. Uh, I can't determine. Quiet, Does he really you. not know? I don't or is know. He just saying he doesn't know. Because he just said, "Of course I know you can't accept a horse from Budweiser." And I'm going. Well, why don't you I'm, just thinking, I'm just taking the easy road. I'm going to be right. I'd better just be consistently stupid than to disagree. Hey, Wolf. Like Gary Puppet wants to tell me something. One second, he has something to say. He got a little talk. bastard. <laughs> Wolfie of old Wolfers. Yes. I have a big announcement. Con Ed wants to send you free electricity. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. Will that be AC or DC? <laughs> DC. Okay. Come All right, on. Thank up. you. All right. Let's drop it now. <laughs> why? Why now? Why now? All right. And don't uh, shirk your responsibilities because I'm in an argument. With I you. thought we just dropped it. No, no, no. You didn't come in during the commercials and tell me my agenda. You, you. I can barely get in here to get you to listen to me anyway. Okay. <laughs> if you want something, you'll call me. <laughs> Bop, 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 bop,
Baba Booey lifted the Stanley Cup over his head. Did you hear that on the news later in the day? Put, I heard Pharrell uh, talking about that. It was, you know, I would personally, I wouldn't even know that you can't lift the Stanley Cup over your head. But uh, evidently, if you're not a winning team and you lift the Stanley Cup over your head, it's this huge offense. Oh. How would you know that? I, I, you got to be a hockey fan. I mean, I know Pharrell was outraged because he knows all that hockey shit. I wouldn't know. Somebody hand me a cup. I mean, I don't know why Gary has to raise it over his head anyway. It's not like he won it. Well, I guess that's what they're saying. Yeah, that's their point. They're yeah. mad if you didn't win. And Sounds crazy. You get the insane pleasure of holding it over your head without winning it. I was listening to the news report that Steve Langford did, and it was funny because like, when Gary holds it up over his head, you hear people going, no, 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 no. Uh-huh. Everyone's, no, 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 it's like the fucking Hindenburg. And it's like, God, it's just the Stanley Cup. Gary Delabate in hockey hell after violating alleged NHL protocol by grabbing La Coupe Stanley and hoisting it triumphantly. One of those things where somebody makes it up and then everybody buys into it. But when Gary lifted up the cup today, getting his picture taken with hockey's holy grail here at Sirius, the protectors of the cup practically choked on their hockey pucks. Take a picture really quick. Oh, don't. Oh, no, 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 Sports God Scott Farrell. No, 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 no. Wow. Did you hear that? Man. No, yeah. no, 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 Gary. It's funny, huh? What it's, a life. It's a fucking crazy. But no, I, don't you hold up the cup. <laughs> that's like when we, I don't know, years ago when we were at K-Rock. I'm sure everybody remembers us who's a fan of the show. Uh, they, one of the teams came in with the Stanley Cup, and we kind of figured out ahead of time that Jackie was going to take it in the bathroom and then pretend that he shit in the Stanley Cup. Mm-hmm. So we put chocolate pudding in the Stanley Cup. They went <laughs> fucking berserk. They said they would never bring the Stanley Cup. And like, I didn't, like, that's sacrilege. I had no idea. I wasn't like, you know, people say, oh, you're so disrespectful. I was just goofing around. I didn't know it was like such a big deal. So. You know, Howard, the word was yesterday that the whole point of bringing the cup up here was to keep it as far away from us as humanly possible. Yeah. And somehow you got involved with it and fucked up. I didn't think it was going to be that big a deal. Really, people just started freaking out. Why did Ralph say he thought that you were an asshole for doing that? Because he flipped a coin and that's what he decided to think. No, really. What was his rationale? I don't know. He said something about, I don't know, Gary shouldn't have done that. It's, you know, why would he have to do that? It's just a Stanley Cup. I, I don't know. It didn't make any sense. Uh, he just thought I shouldn't have done it. But see, Gary knows better because he's a huge hockey fan. Gary plays hockey. So you knew you weren't supposed to lift it up over your head. No, I said in the news report, I sort of heard that was the rumor, but I didn't really believe it was true. I thought, that was, I thought it was like an urban legend because it sounded so stupid. But, yeah, I sort of knew you weren't supposed to do I it. don't understand the whole thing with the cup anyway where you take it around. It's always on tour. It's the oh. Stanley Cup, Robin. It's the Cup Stanley. Cool. The they, they say it's the most recognizable trophy in sports, and they're probably right. Really? I wouldn't. If you put three trophies in here, I couldn't pick it out. Triumph the Insult Comic Dog on location at Hofstra University. Hofstra University! The place the Vry applicants use as a safety school. Look at the crowd. It's amazing. There hasn't been a crowd this big in Long Island since the last Baba Booey book signing. Celebrating the 25th anniversary of Baba Booey, this is Booey 25 on Howard 101. See how one Tata Tiny screw up changed music history. Baba Booey! Baba Booey! It's the remix. It's Jamie Foxx with the remix. Music is my love, Bull. This is Booey 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Booey. 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 And Baba Booey to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. 
Like Saint Nick, he bought a garden hose for a water pick. Gary is a horse tooth jackass. His canopy of calcium hangs beneath his lips. Sal the stockbroker always pranks on him until Baba Booey just quits. Oh, big baboons and chimpanzees. Horse buck teeth, that's Baba Booey. Gary is a horse to jackass. Just see those chompers moving like a fat cow chewing on grass. He's Howard Stern, producer, that big fat loser jackass. He's got a big fat belly and breath that's smelly and funky. Frank called like a freaking dummy, he's a horse tooth funny monkey. Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Baba Booey, ta 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 to thee. Ba 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 Booey. Mama monkey, Mama monkey, Mama ma ma monkey. Ra 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 retard. One whiff of his freaking breath, it's sure to knock you to death. Well, his teeth are very frightful. His breath is not delightful. He walks like a chimpanzee. Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. His ass is like a school bus. He uses sandpaper for a toothbrush. He smells like a freaking monkey. 
Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Taka Tootie, Taka Tootie, Baba Booey. See how one little mistake changed sports history. Baba Booey, uh, he threw an incredibly bad pitch. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Baba Booey thought that was a joke. Kristen Arpia going Baba Booey on the fields tonight. Hey now. This is Booey 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. And Baba Booey to go. All weekend long on Howard 101. Maybe the best running back of the year, Todd Gurley out of Georgia. He went 10th overall by the St. Louis Rams. Of course, we have to mention the Bengals. Going with offensive lineman Cedric Agbui, not to be confused with Baba Bui out of Texas A&M. He's huge, by the way. Yes, John, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, John. Hey, hey now. Hey now, John, in Dallas. Hey, Howard, you got to just listen to this. This is off the WebMD on the whooping cough. It says, when an infected person sneezes or coughs, tiny droplets containing the bacteria move through the air. Oh, no, don't read this. And the, and oh. the disease is easily spread from person to person. Oh, my God. <laughs> Dude, you better go to the fucking ER right now, man. Oh, my God, Robin. <laughs> Robin. She said she had been on antibiotics for two weeks. Yeah, so what? You know that what means... doesn't mean they worked. You know no, no. She it did says, cough at the end. Say? Right? What does it say? It also says that antibiotics sometimes may help prevent... Some spread of the disease. It's not a hundred percent deal. It says oh, it may it's not a hundred percent. No, it may help some spread of the disease. Oh my God! <laughs> What's she doing? Oh. She's like typhoid Mary. I know. I, I mean, what, you know, I just got to say something. I, I love Carol. I, you know, I admire her career, and I was looking forward to the interview. But yes. You know, if, first of all, if you if your voice is shot, just tell Gary and say, listen, I'll reschedule. I mean, I know she had rescheduled once, and I would have waited another two weeks till her voice was back, number one. Number two, I'm such a paranoid as it is. But I know, I know. I mean, well, who's next? Gary, bring in Gilbert Gottfried with leprosy so I can see if I can survive that. I swear to God. I mean, you know, I, I, I you know. Oh. So what happens now hey, when oh, she Howard. shows up like that? Did you know she was sick before she came into the studio? No, Gary. Gary, you know, but Gary's such a fuck. Oh no. <laughs> oh, no, you should have got. You know what, Gary? You should have said. You should have said, Carol. This. You know what? You know what? You are a fuck. I'm going to tell you why, and I want. And I want to make this clear. You know, you really kind of are. It just dawned on me. I got to tell you why you're not a friend, and you're not, and you're not a good guy, and you're not, you're not my producer anymore. Because when you see somebody walk in in that condition, you know they have no voice. You turn to them, so I'm not the bad guy. You say, Carol, look, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make a decision here. I'm listening to you talk. Your voice is shot. You've just gotten over whooping cough. I'm guaranteeing you a, show, a, a slot on this show. Howard wants to interview you. But I'm going to say, Howard, Howard is a guy, you, I know he's afraid of germs, as it is. Healthy people walk in here, and I don't even want to fucking see him. So go home. I'm not a put, bu- putting you on the show, and and then that's it. Who wouldn't do that? I've never sent a guest home in the history of the show. But you, you could but, no, have. But, but you, you, and you would be like, it's easy to say now that you saw it. Plus, I told you during the break, and you could have said to me, you know, just send her home. I had no idea. The, I, I mean, but I told I, I you. Gary, you said she came in and her voice was a little fucked up. No, I said it was a lot fucked up. I said she sounded really bad. And no, said, you no. said it. You, I said, so I guess I'm going to have her on. I'm not out there to evaluate. All I'm saying is, you can take over. You're the producer of the show. You always leave everything up to me. Some well, because you, you want do. to, you want no. to do that. How many discussions have we had? I say, Gary, you can run things. You're the executive producer of the Howard Stern Show. If you see somebody out, this is for the future, okay? Because now that I'm dying, because now <laughs> that I got to go be in the hospital for a month with whooping cough, you, you know the difficulty of turning a guest away, and I will do it. Gary, if you it's difficult. I know the difficulty. No, no, That's I, why I have a producer. If I could do it, I, I, I wouldn't have you. You're here to do the things I can't. I don't know whooping cough. I just she, she said I was getting over being sick. If you hear somebody <laughs> with their voice in bad condition, you can, you can dismiss them and say, "Look, uh, I'm making a call here. I'm not consulting Howard on this." Hey, Howard. Well, hold it. Uh, Jay Thomas just came in. He has a touch of E. coli. Gary says it's okay. <laughs> hey, Howard. First of all, I got to tell you something. 
And, I, and Gary, this is the truth. You didn't say she sounded awful. You didn't say she sounded bad. You said she doesn't sound that bad. No, so she doesn't sound that good. No. And you said, you is said it, and you asked Will me, Murray just wrote me a note and corrects you. He listened. This is not coming from me. You said, is it noticeable? She and I said, yes. She doesn't sound that bad, you said. Now, based, I, based on that, I made the call. Listen, I'm giving you the power to protect me. I'm your boss. I told you, Gary, I'm out of here in three years. You're going to have no job. Despite you thinking you're going to be uh, working on the Kelly Ripper show or something like that. Well, I'll be working somewhere. Whether, we'll whether it's up to yours. We'll see. Whether it's up to yours. Gold what standard Carol is fine. Miller said. I, no matter what, I'm going to work somewhere. best year was 160000 Howard, when you leave. As an announcer. When you leave, everybody's going to work somewhere. The reason, but, but here's the thing. Everyone can blame you for me leaving. Because <laughs> if you don't protect me, if you don't make this job easy for me, I'm telling you, this is everybody's response. Everyone listening to me who works on this show. Benji, Fred. Those two maniacs in the back room. All of you. Make, hey, I know. Make I know it, excuse place. me, John. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. giving someone a reaming. Don't interrupt me. Yes, sir. I'm sorry. Protect me. David Letterman wouldn't be interviewing uh, somebody with whooping cough. The reason they protect them, they know if Dave retires, they're all out of work. Now, it's true. You might get a better job than this. I, that's not my thought. You might. My thought, my job, I'm but here. But I'm saying, I'm in this if moment. it's easy for me, if I got people thinking with me, like it's the, like their life depends on it, it becomes easy for me to work here. Then I go, you know, and then someone like Mel or somebody says, well, you want to sign up for another couple of years? Hey, yeah, you know, it was pleasant. Well, now all I'll think about is I don't want whooping cough. Well, this is this is all I'm going to say, and and I, and I, apo and, and, and I apologize. Thank you. But this is what we're going to say. There's definitely been next time someone comes with whooping cough. What are you going to do? There's been, there's definitely been a shift in the way we're thinking, and I'm still thinking the old way. And it's and and I wouldn't think I I've would never think thought of you any other no, way than a competent. A, a but competent you might say, guy. why would you turn a guest away? I, because they have whooping cough, and I would have sat there. I would have blown you. That I would have said that. this guy. Yeah, I would have blown you. I would have pulled your pants off and sucked on your disgusting <laughs> cock because I, I'd say there's a guy who thinks of me, who cares about my health, and you know. Oh, by the way, Robert, I didn't tell you this. Uh, next week, a guy's coming in with a black plague, and we're going to see if I survive that. I mean, come on, look out for me a little. I know I'm a dick. I know I'm a shit, but at least I'm the guy who puts food on your table. I, I don't think you're a Keep dick me or a healthy. shit. I'm out for whooping cough. That's it. I'm out of here. I'm not coming back. But why would you put those words in my mouth that I think you're a dick or a shit? Because because you must. Why no. would somebody expose me to the whooping cough, which John tells me is the most dangerous fucking disease? Bigfoot too. What, what, who, who, who is John? There? John is a listener from Dallas. No, I'm who just knows saying, what's his medical he's expertise? Reading, he's reading from a thing he just found yeah, on the on internet. internet. Yeah, what, what, what do you think? He's lying? Well, I'm just saying, you just told Sal to never use the internet for medical advice. Because Sal hey, can't boy. read. He's an idiot. I'm, say, I'm not saying John's wrong or right. I'm just saying John's not the. John, where'd you get your information from? It is WebMD, the National Institute of Health. Thank you. Well, there you go. <laughs> WebMD. Oh, and Howard, but the good thing about it, it says. You've got a good week and a half because it says it takes 10 to 12 days before you really notice any symptoms. Oh, oh Lord. Lord. Thick the mic. Wait, what, what is that big foot, Junior? I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. I'm too upset. What? Thick the mic, scabies right now seem wheezing and feverish. I think they <laughs> might have <fought. laughs> Hey, Gary, don't don't bother applying to the CDC after your three, this next three years because... Fred, am I out of line here? I mean, for God's sakes. I mean, protect me a little, right? I don't know what, who knew what. If, if I knew someone had whooping cough, I'd but, say I mean, maybe if, if don't come in. somebody even doesn't have a voice to talk, it is radio. You say, you say, so Gary's in charge of yeah, that's one of these things. You, I, think, I don't think you decide on the moment. I think you decide a couple of days in advance. It's like, I think their voice is really sucky. I really but feel, I don't know that I, a couple I, of days I in advance. I feel something in my chest. <laughs> Robin, I'm not kidding. If I knew this a couple of days in advance, I would have said something. <laughs> Oh, oh no. <laughs> He's already developed a cough. And you know what? Then I'm out for a month, and then the company looks at me cross eyed like I'm trying to put one over on them. I'll be in here with fucking whooping cough. But let me ask you something. In the when she walked in, was there a moment you said I should send her away? For me? You're no, to, for Howard. For me. Yeah, the second. Yeah, because now sat you're down. confronting her. I think the Every moment said, we were here, I, I could barely concentrate. Said whooping cough. 
Mm-hmm. When I hear whooping cough, I'm, I'm uh, you know, do me a favor. That new TV show view on Nerdist, review whooping cough. Learn about it. <laughs> give, a, give me a review. I, I you know. Because uh, you could have stopped it and said, you know what, Carol, walk out. No, it was too late. The drums are already here. I don't think you could do I, And it's really embarrassing. Yeah. I can't do the embarrassing stuff. That's Gary's job. What do I need him for if I if I could do all that? Well, true, but you have to think of your own health. I know. I, I sacrificed myself like Jesus on the cross today <laughs> for the audience. Listen to John's phone. I know. <laughs> We're sticking with it. Be, well, he's got medical information. He's our, he's our authority. Yeah. No, we just confirmed John's uh, whooping cough facts on a government website. It's the truth. The guy's not making it up. I do feel a slight ag- uh, uh, aggravation in my chest now. A tightening of the chest. The first sign of whooping cough. Seriously, Carrie, I've told you. You've got the power to do whatever it is you want. I'm not kidding. Somebody out there isn't doing their job, fire them. Your call. You're the producer. Makes my life so much easier when you take over. I mean, why? I'm sitting here thinking now. Why would we take yeah, no, Carol's word? Robert, that's the key words. You're sitting here thinking now. Why would we take Carol's word that she's oh, not contagious? She come, oh, don't worry, you won't get it. But what, <laughs> what, 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 is that a written, did that come with a written guarantee? <laughs> oh, Robin. Oh, am I in for a day? I'm going to walk around with my whooping cough. I hope I survive it. The beautiful thing is that you're a healthy person with a strong immune system. I know. So you'll be fine. Thanks, Robin. Oh, if only you were here to cradle me. (laughs) (laughs) Ophelia. Uh, Because the whole time I was like, this isn't even good for her. Because she sounds terrible. Of course. Yes, Marianne. Oh, my God. Gary, you know I love you, and I felt so bad all week for you. You fucking dropped the ball. First of all, her voice is like my voice, horrible. Second of all, everybody knows 25 years ago isn't what you're going to do now for the show. And whooping cough, you don't have to go on the computer. It's been, over the last two years, one of the biggest diseases that's uh, so catchy. How would you have to go to the doctor? And I'm gonna go, I, by, by the way, really thank good. God I have a doctor's appointment today. It, it, oh, my you do? Year, my yearly physical. I'm going to be treated for whooping cough today. Oh. It's very, very catchy, and I don't care how much antibiotics she had. And she also, Gary, sounded terrible. Didn't you pick up on that? No. Yes, did. I did. No, he said not that bad to me. Oh, come on. <laughs> I mean, people didn't really hear Carol Miller today. No, Carol has a beautiful voice, by the way. Hey, can you get uh, Carrot Top on the show? I hear he has cholera. <laughs> maybe maybe we could get rid of me that way. You must hate me. You must hate me, Gary. That's such a terrible no, thing to say. No, I, I think you do. I think you proved it today. You want me to have whooping cough. You're an evil, evil person. You really have some fucked up thoughts in your head. Yes, I do. I and mean, you, should you know really that think that we, you really think I hate you? Yes. Come on, be, let's be honest. Yes, you hate me. That's a terrible thing to say. It's your revenge because I don't like your show. Oh, please. That's it. You got me back good, though. I'll tell you that. So, so you gave me the shift. So, so the, the thought is that my crummy little show I do on the side yeah. is more important than my yeah. career. Yeah. I think you smell that's big for, things. That's, I don't think like that. I think you're hoping Nerdist becomes the biggest channel yeah. on the internet. I don't think it's going to take over the I, house. I hope for you it does. It's not. <laughs> <laughs> You got me good. <laughs> oh, Bigfoot Junior, thank God you're here. You seem healthy. Did she say she'd be signing copies of her book at the Red Cross Respiratory Clinic? It is? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's got to wear a mask for that signing. I mean, come on. But, Gary, please, if you see something like that going on, don't leave it up to me. Just say, hey, I made a decision, boss. You know me. I got no problem killing an hour. I could kill 10 hours. You're you're empowered. I don't know how else to say it to you. You're my guy. You're, I depend on you. Keep me healthy. Keep me whole. Keep me sane. Oh, God. Can I be done? Sure. You can leave right now. You can be done. Are you done with me? Oh, I was done minutes ago. You just won't leave, so I'm going to talk to you. What else would you like to blame me for? 
So no, it's, uh, no I, the phones. I, I, here's what I'm going to say. The yes, email yesterday. I do blame you for the phones. Carol, you're the executive producer. Tim and I have Straighten sat down with the people here about the phones. And by the way, the program we're using is the industry standard. It's not a unique program. Then why is no one else having trouble with it? Other people have had some trouble with it. Who? Who? Name them. Uh, WFAN had it. There was a bug. How, that did, was, they, how, how did they deal with it? They, had, they got a firmware update. All right. Find out who figured out to get a firmware update. Fire yourself and hire him for me. Okay. Evan's now the executive producer Thank of the you. show. Thank you. Thank you. Because someone's got to fix it. But the, but and you should not sleep until it's fixed. You should be here every it day. It was until it's fixed. fixed. No, it isn't. No, it but, broke but down this morning. If, if if you have experts in different areas, right? You, in other words, you depend on people. So people tell well, you. Well, then get a new they, expert. They tell you that. Get a new expert. I can't. He's not the executive producer of the show. Oh, uh, stop it. Get a new what expert. What do you mean, stop it? Get someone who can fix it. Go up the chain. We did. Bang on Mel's door and say, Mel. It's a huge problem. The, the the channel that 60 to 70% of the listeners listen to, the Howard Stern channel, can't. we have a repeated problem. Have you gone to him? I have not gone to him. He He's a problem solver. He solved my problem. He solved it good. Shut me right down. Go over and let him solve it with you. That's what he's here for. Say, Mel, I've got a huge problem. The phones don't work. You're the CEO. Fix it. That's what you do. That's it. Howard's upset. He wants his equipment fixed. I'm in hell. You, you got to make it less hell around here. Not more hell. You see people with whooping cough. That's a signal in your brain <laughs> that says. <laughs> <laughs> that's a signal in your brain that says Howard shouldn't get whooping cough. It's too much to expect from this job. It's a dopey job. My job is meaningless. I sit here and talk into a microphone. I shouldn't have to get whooping cough for it. <laughs> if you told me Osama bin Laden's out there, that he's whooping cough, go in and kill him. It's worth risking my life for. But for this job, it's stupid. You go up the chain to the highest, whoever owns Sirius, and I'm not even sure who owns it. Go to him and say, we got a huge problem. The only station that actually counts here at Sirius. That's why Bob Lefsetz is saying if Pandora hired Howard Stern, I would buy, I'd go to Pandora. I'm the franchise. Go to the owners, whoever owns this thing, and, and fucking tell them what we're having a problem and you'll solve it. Don't be afraid. You're the executive producer of the most important show I'm not in the world. I'm not afraid. Don't be afraid. I'm not. You are fearless. I'm empowering you. I'm not afraid to go talk to people, and we have. But you, at some point, you have to trust your experts. And if they're wrong, then you have to get rid of them. I mean, it's unbelievable. Hey, look at this. Anthony from Opie and Anthony missed two weeks of work with whooping cough. What? It's going around here like a fucking... No, she's saying that that's where she got it. That was... She's saying she got it from him? That's what she said. Really? Yeah, she started. Well, all she said, I know is "I'm going to get it, and, and I, I, I know I'm going to get it. I'm rushing to the doctor today." Look, you have the power. I've told you that. This is your show, as much as it is mine. Forget that it's called the Howard Stern Show. I'm changing the name of the show. You ready for the new name? The Gary Delabate Show. I don't want that to be. No, it's that's what it's called. Nobody's listening to that. We're going to call. They call me Baba Booey. It, nobody's listening. Can we use that name, or there's nerdist on that? No, you don't want that name. All right. And the same as your book. It's going to be the, your book, your your internet show, and your radio show. Now are called. They call me Baba Booey. It's called Quivers. It's Alive. your show now. <laughs> it's just your show. Don't be afraid to take that name of the show. This is the Gary Delabate. I want all the jingles, everything changed. You hear that, Bigfoot Junior? I, oddly, I don't. I know it seems you're like you're glad a you're here today, Bigfoot Junior. You might have whooping cough. <laughs> I had it once, but I cured it with a good sedative. <laughs> you shit out the whooping cough. <laughs> well, I don't know if I'll be that lucky. <laughs> I'm cursed. I was cursed the day I met you, Gary. No, it's been a long curse. <laughs> what are you laughing at, Bigfoot? Listen to this. The, the building won't let Anthony in until he has a doctor's note. Is he out? Is he still out? Or is that a period of time? Yeah, I don't know, but it, you could see the guy's suffering with it, and now I got to suffer with it. Whooping cough. Who, I, I didn't even know I well, could get that. Wait, but if the building won't let Anthony in, then why are they letting Carol I in? don't know. 
I don't know what's going on around here, but now I'm exposed. And by the way, just for the record, to tell you I'm not crazy, here is the actual tape of you telling me about Carol Miller's voice. So is it distracting to talk to her? A little bit. A little bit. A tiny bit. A little bit, a tiny bit. Well, let's stop right there for a second, if you don't mind. A little bit, a tiny bit. I fit it. Keep going. Oh, all right. I, 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 maybe that's better? it, but I, maybe <clears> maybe <throat> it makes it worse for me. Maybe not. Let's hear it. To the audience, that she's a chick with a hot voice because that hot voice is not there. That's her. That's her tool. I don't know what that means, but I, it's, believe me, I zone out when he talks anyway. <laughs> but a little bit, you know. Look, look, you make the call. You're my man. It's the Gary Delabate show. It's no longer the Howard Stern Show. I'm giving it over to you, the name. I don't it's want a it. huge thing for me to do. I take the responsibility. If anyone calls the, I, it the Howard Stern Show, they're fired. I take the responsibility. Take that sign down. I don't it's want the, the Gary Delabate Show. I don't want it. And now that it's the Gary Delabate Show, I think you'll think of it. It doesn't change my thinking. I don't want really? the name. You, well, you've got it. You've just been handed what I consider the most precious thing in the world, the Howard Stern Show name. So you're changing that sign back there? Not enough room. <laughs> Wait, uh, hey, this is wild. George Clooney's on the phone. Hello, George. Gary, <laughs> 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 can I come in to meet Howard? <laughs> <laughs> Gary, now I'm fine. Is, I'm fine. This is George Clooney, one of the biggest stars in the world, wants to come in and uh, meet me. What do you say to him, George? You're going to have to wait till you feel better. All right, thank you, Mr. Clooney. Wow. Gary says it's okay for you to come in. How soon can you get here? I'll be here in five minutes. Five minutes, all right. All right, he's going to be up here in five minutes. Now I'm getting a note. Ronnie warned Gary about how sick Carol Miller was before she came in the compound. Yeah, he said, really? she, no, he said she doesn't sound good. She's sick. Yeah. Yeah, to you, that's uh, that signals how, uh, Howard is not going to be pleased. And then you evaluate her voice and her illness, and then you can uh, you make the decision from now on. I'm empowering you. Does everyone hear this? Bigfoot, you hear what I'm saying? I mean, if you understand this. What? I, <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying if you understand this, everyone will understand, but I don't even know that you understand it. Well, lucky for me, I can't get the whooping cough it is because they already got the smallpox and it prevents it. Right. Really? Yeah, it cancels it out. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He had smallpox. <laughs> He's a doctor. Oh. Wow, I want to go home, Robin. Uh, I'm, I'm beaten, man. My guy, Gary. You know who you remind me of? Joe Paterno. The great <laughs> Joe Paterno. He doesn't see anything. He doesn't hear anything. Nothing's wrong. Goes on goes on and on. I on. thought you were going to say a great man who made one mistake. Oh, no, 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 no. Hey, You've no. made many mistakes. No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> Look, let me just say this. I love you, but can you love me back a little? Just a little. You know I do. I don't believe it. I know. That makes me sad. I know. Makes because you know, sad. Because, because you I know. thought after all these years, maybe you care about but, me. But but somebody makes a mistake, and that's it's it, 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 it's unequivocally they hate you. That's how you think. Would you pretend you're my mother and no, you're taking care of a you. son? Help me. Your help mother me. or a my mother? My mother would protect me. Well, actually, she wouldn't. She threw me a You think she would have let Carol in? All right, pretend you're not my mother. Pretend you're... <laughs> a mother. Who is somebody who would protect me? Mother Teresa. I guess I don't have anyone like that. I wouldn't have let her in. Thank you. Just Where because she doesn't sound good. You know, you should have Robin be your mother because she knows everything. She after, does. After the fact. No, 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 no. You don't know I'm that. I'm still sitting here saying to myself, you know, like, what I do, Gary, is listen. I, and I'm listening and listening and going... Can she actually make a connection with the audience with that voice? You know, I'm sure Letterman or Leno or Kimmel's uh, producer would say, hey, you know, they, listen, you don't have a voice. You know, they got to make that call. You can make the call. Yes, Sheila, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Um, <laughs> whooping cough is very contagious, and I'm your age, and I had it when I was two. I nearly died. I was in the hospital forever, and wow. I'm not so sure you do have a defense to it. Uh, you, you, you almost died from it. With your doctor. You I almost did. died I was from it. in the hospital it. for like two months. I mean, I was very young, but, but it's very dangerous. And I'm your age, so I'm not so sure you have an immunization to that. Thank you. See, I wouldn't let that woman on with that voice. I can be. You can be sure my mother didn't immunize me. 
Oh, come on. You These had, doctors, I, they'll kill you. You're not you getting You had that. the polio vaccine. You, I have You remember polio. taking the... Oh, stop it. <laughs> I, would be, I wouldn't be surprised I didn't get vaccinated. Oh, my goodness. Don't you remember taking the sugar cube? In college, I do. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, my mother took me to a dentist for my entire life. I got no Novocaine. Every single fucking filling in my mouth is... I know that. ...drilled into the nerve. But it, You think she babies, knew to get me a fucking shot for the whooping cough? They always made you show up for these shots. And You're they not going. You sh- They'll oh, kill God. you, those doctors. <laughs> and Novocaine will kill you. You take an aspirin. Uh, Don't even take an aspirin. Doug Goodstein, Let's talk to her. Doug to Goodstein she... had whooping cough. He was contacted by the CDC. Wow. This is no joke. Well, right, let's they, call they, your mother and see if you actually got the no, original shot. she wouldn't know. She's got to remember. Bigfoot, I'm freaking out over you. Bigfoot Jr. Well, someone big me toilet paper is. I just had an accident. <laughs> Does anyone have toilet paper? He's not kidding. His whole pants are loaded down. Uh. He just, he's got a full metal jacket. <sniffs> Gary, please protect me. Are you sad over there? Yes. Are you crying? No. It looks like you're about to. No, I, but, but I'm not going to cry. Look, just love me a little bit. That's all. You don't have to love me a lot. Just care about me. Why don't you cry about this? You should. <laughs> <laughs> you're, a, you're a, a really... I thought you cared. An unbelievably cruel person. No, I'm not. And you think that... I help you. you. you I'm helping you to be a better producer for your next job when I leave. You think that being cruel to people is somehow making them... It's so funny because you played... Can I just say something? A couple of weeks ago, you played a manager, a baseball manager, yelling at... The players. And I laughed. You know they went out and won after no, that? I laughed. You, 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 and you, you were sitting here and you're playing it and you go, my God, who thinks people respond to this? You said that on the air. Uh, Gary, I've tried everything with you. No, I'm just I've saying. tried nice. I've tried. I've, I've, I, for the last couple of months, I've, I've put my arm around you and said, Gary, I've empowered you. You're my guy. You make the decisions. I don't know. I've tried nice. I've tried angry. I've tried everything. But I got news for you. I helped you today, and I'll tell you why. See, I love you. You don't love me back. Not true. And I'll tell you how I helped you. If I do leave, which I'm going to leave, and your next job, I don't care what it is, someone walks in with whooping cough, you're going to know. My boff, you're going to associate with how you're going to know. My boff didn't like whooping cough. I'm going to say they can't come in. You're going to do it. You'll see, and you're going to thank me for this, for this excellent lecture I've given you in this endless lecturing series that I've done for you. You are the beneficiary of all my wisdom. You'll protect Imus very well. He will not die of whooping cough. I will. T- I can s- unequivocally yeah. now. No. My family were on fucking destitute on the street. I would not work for him. We'll unequivocally. See. You might be destitute on the street. He'll be dead by the time you retire. No, he won't have whooping cough. His producer <laughs> t- t- turned Carol Miller away. You're going short. That's right. <laughs> I know you don't give a shit about me. You made that clear. But. I'm going to tell you something. I care about you because I'm preparing you for a real job. With me, it's not a real job. It's a, it's, it's a cakewalk. I excuse everything. But when you get a real job, which you will, you will see. All of my lessons will have paid off. Thank you. Well, I, I agree with that. All right. Time for news, Gary. I, I, t- I mean, I think that anything I do after this, I will take everything yes. I learned from you with me. So everything. let's rehearse. Your new boss is there, and he's, uh, oh, Gary, uh, is there anybody out there with whooping cough? And then what do you say? Just one person, but I had to send her away. You sent her away? Oh, thank you, Gary. Thank you. Oh, my God. Is that nice of you? I, I would like to give you a raise. That would be okay. That's how your boss is going to go. You're going to say, wow, you are a real... You know what it is, Gary? You think of the show like, like it was your own show. Smart man. Oh, are you going to be a great employee? Not for me. But for this next guy, right? Right there, Bigfoot Jr.? Well, I don't know how else to put it, but Gary's just not a team player it is. Right. (laughs) All right. Well, let's hope I uh, survive the whooping call. (laughs) I'm sure your doctor will put you at ease this afternoon. Yeah, I'm sure. 
Right after he sticks his finger up my ass. <laughs> oh, that's right. I'm in for that today. Oh, God, oh, God in heaven. Do me a favor. Put Carol Miller on the wrap-up show so you can sit right next to her. Would you do that for me? Of course not. You wouldn't do that. She's not here. What? No, you can get her back. Oh, I can't wait to suffer through that. I can't wait to suffer through that coffee. I hear it's painful. Maybe they can suppress it somehow. Uh, I'll be over in a month. You watch me, Robin. I'll spring back. <laughs> I'm I'm guessing you won't get it. Yes, Martin. Um, you know, Gary said it himself. Um, people who are experts should be trusted to make these decisions, and if they're not trusted, then they should be fired. But isn't he supposed to be the expert of ex- of producing the show? Of course. And so, but he's only had the job for thirty eight years. I mean, give him some chance. Give him a chance. Let's be fair, also. So, by his logic, you should get rid of him, and I know you won't. So, I'm maybe suggesting alternatives, right. like ask him to wear a dunce cap or. Uh, come on, I'm not going to humiliate him. After all, he is an adult. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not into emasculating anybody, as Robin isn't either. Howard TV has video of a kid with whooping cough. Oh, I don't want to see that guy. Uh, Please. Will you guys stop providing him with information? Don't torture me. Poor Gary looks like he's going to hang himself. Uh. Are you going to be all right, Gary? Uh Uh-oh. He might have already hung himself. Are you going to be all right? Now you're making me feel bad. Yeah, yeah, I know. Thanks a lot. This is your move. You yell and then you feel bad. Don't worry. I'll be fine. I'll live. No, I you still won't. love you. No, I see you. I know yeah. you don't love me, but yeah, exactly. <laughs> Howard, Howard, getting the fucking scalpel out to dig at the Achilles heel that he know he touched. Did I touch on it? Of course. When you say when you say to me, I you know that I don't like you. Yeah, yeah that bothers me. Stop it. No, Come but it, it bothers me. It 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 it's it's a terrible thing to say because right, you know, I take and it you back. know, and you know, back. I take it back. But Sorry. you can tell, and you keep going to it. All right. Sorry. But you're not. <laughs> and you know you're not. Sorry. Now you're just even worse. <laughs> what do you want? I'm trying to fill four up. I hear you. All right. Thank you. You're all right. You're safe with me. I love you. I don't know why, but I do. All right, with us today, Bigfoot Jr., by the way. Uh, great guy. Uh, he's here. He's got scabies, and he's proud of it. <laughs> Good to have you here, Bigfoot Jr. Well, thank you so much, Tower. I want to know if I can make a request to this. Yeah, sure. Will you start calling me Bigfoot Kennedy? Because I'm hoping Taylor Swift will hear you and then want to fuck me, too. Right. <laughs> Bigfoot Kennedy it is. You're That's Bigfoot a good Kennedy. Idea. All right, you're Bigfoot Kennedy from now on. We'll see what happens. You know, for a big dummy, you know a lot of stuff. <laughs> yeah, you know how to get girls. That's right. Stick Big that f- Kennedy name at the end of Big anything. Foot Kennedy. Uh, it's time for news, Robin. In your vagina, Robin, it would feel so good. We can sixty. I'll lick you while I eat, while you eat my wood. That didn't rhyme. Vagina and wood don't rhyme. No, I think it's in every other rhyming oh. verse here. <laughs> uh, I'm no poet. This song. <laughs> it's a little Mikey. Yes. Did you see what David Blaine's newest uh, thing is going to be? He's going to be um, t- uh, tottering from a pedestal for three straight days. Without sleep or food, while a million volts of electricity are sent pulsing around him. Yeah, I got an email to, from him that inviting yeah. me to go down. You know, you know how he likes people, like celebrities, to show up at his events where he right. uh, does all this dangerous stuff. Yeah, but I don't want to. 
It sounds dangerous even to be yeah. around him for this one. Please, I've been in enough danger. I was just in a studio with somebody with whooping cough. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's you, dangerous. You think you're risking your life. Yeah, I mean, you're going to be surrounded by electricity. Yeah, I'm surrounded by electricity. It doesn't bother me. I, I, but I'm whooping cough, that bothers me. What I've done is death defying. No celebrities came down and visited right. me. You could, you may only be shocked. Yeah. I was in the room with whooping cough. I'm sitting to here avoid with... being burnt to a crisp, Blaine will be outfitted in a chainmail bodysuit, a wire helmet, and metal sold boots nobody knows what being in an electromagnified field for that long will do to a person and uh, he it cures whooping cough it gives him <laughs> some ability to shoot electricity from his fingers is what he's thinking even All kidding aside he says uh, this is no no uh, joke it's a uh, you know it's for real why do he has to stay up while all this is going on I don't know nah. <laughs> he even gets whooping cough anymore well, it's coming back uh, because, as Carol said, a lot of people aren't taking the vaccine. Oh, now i got to go get a vaccine. What the... Was I vaccinated or not, Robin? I'm sure you got that. In the vaccination, it's called pertussis that they're vaccinating you for. Mm. And it's a part of a, a whole group Serious. of vaccines they give you. But didn't Carol get vaccinated? Well, apparently your immunity wears off at a certain point. Yeah, well, I'm pretty sure mine's gone. <laughs> you know. Hey, Gary, seriously, can you call my mom and get her on the line? I want to know if I was vaccinated for whooping cough. Uh, hold on a second. Yeah, she probably uh, wouldn't remember, but I'm hoping. Well, she knows that you got your baby shots. She don't know any of that. What are you talking about? How does she know? Because she was the one who took you to get them. You know, they, you know, when you go to the well baby clinic. It's harder to get whooping cough if you've been vaccinated, but not impossible. Yeah, I, I watch me do the impossible. <laughs> You're always doing the impossible. Yes, Shannon. Hi, Howard. I'm just calling to tell you to calm down. Mm -hmm. I've lived through this. My husband brought home <laughs> whooping cough. We don't know how he got it. <laughs> He coughed all over my children because he, oh, we were, well, wait, we sensitive. were new parents. My oldest <laughs> child was vaccinated. My youngest had not gotten all the shots. Right. And both babies, both kids got it. My husband got it. Yeah. I held that baby, was coughed on for oh. a month and never got it. Now, yeah. my husband and my four-year-old at the time did not get a bad case of it. They really, you'll learn this if you do more research. First of all, the vaccine only only is 60% effective. So that's why my four-year-old got it. Mm -hmm. um, I had never been vaccinated for it, and I didn't even get it. And I, right. And the other thing that I learned was... You're that, lucky and I'm not? Is that no, what you learned? No, it's, <laughs> honestly, it's about susceptibility, number one. Right. And you never know mm -hmm. if you're, what you're going to get, what your body's going to... Why get weren't you vaccinated? From. Well, I'm an adult. A lot of adults are not vaccinated. Yeah, you know, I mean, I was vaccinated either. as a kid, but it only has a seven-year All right, thank you. It still doesn't make me feel better, but oh, thank you, Oh, don't Shannon. worry. Right. Milton, go ahead. You're on the air. Thank you, though, for cheering me up. <laughs> My cough seems to be... <laughs> Hello? Right, yes, Milton. Yeah, hi. Um, Jake, you know, I'm a, I'm a surgeon in Buffalo, and, and you know, it's been a while since I've been to, uh, to medical school, but, you know... I, if I you're a surgeon in people. Buffalo, does it count? Yeah, kind of, because I took care of people with whooping cough. Right. And the bottom line is, is that you know the thing is, they're most contagious when they're um, when before they're symptomatic. So people don't even know that they're passing and they pass it. The whooping cough part is actually the part where they're least contagious. So this old lady's already canceled about you know two weeks ago. She wasn't. What did he just well. say, Robin? I'm not following Milton. He says He's got that a most bedside of manner the... from hell. Yes. <laughs> most of the the disease is spread before the symptoms ever show up. Ah. So before you get physically uh, visibly ill, you're very contagious, and I afterwards see. you're not as contagious. Well, uh, doctor, you do make me feel better about that. Oh wait, I gotta go talk to my mom and find out if I had a vaccination. Can I just ask one question real quick? Yeah. If, I, 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 don't get me wrong, I love Gary, you know, he, he's a great producer, but if Bigfoot Kennedy was the producer at this moment in time, what would he have done? Bigfoot Kennedy, what would you have done uh, if you saw Carol out there coughing and uh, carrying on? I would have bucked her. <laughs> That's what I thought. That's what All I right. thought. All right, thank you. Hey, Mom. <laughs> thank you, Doctor. Uh, Mom? Yes? Quick question. Mommy? Yes, I'm listening. Was I vaccinated against whooping cough? Howard, 
I'm not. I'm pretty sure you are because in those days there was a whole series of injections that kids got. But how would I? I couldn't swear to it. I don't. No, I'm not he did. Absent. Mom, a terrible, huh? terrible thing has happened. <laughs> I, I, have, I was exposed today to whooping cough. It's a very serious thing. Thanks to Gary, I was exposed. Gary has whooping cough? No, he allowed a guest in who has it. He what? He didn't protect me. He allowed a guest in who has it. He didn't think Did of... he know? He knew. Can you imagine? Why did he allow him in? Mom, I just want to say goodbye yeah. to you. I love you. Uh, listen, I want Howard, you to know that you are so dear to me. Howard doesn't mean you have Mom. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> well, I'm telling you. I feel what already. What are you carrying on? I've, you know me. I got no luck. I'm going to get it. Howard, stop that. Tell me I'll be all right. Of course you'll be all right. In case I'm not, I just want to tell you I love you. Howard. Cut it out. Mom, I'm sorry I masturbated You're in your bed my as a day, child. Right? What? You're making my day. No, I'm just telling you I've been exposed. You're not clear. I'm probably sure I didn't get vaccinated. It sounds no, to me. She, when she says that you got those series of baby shots, yes. the pertussis vaccine was included in them. Mom, do you remember anything like a pertussis vaccine being mentioned by Dr. Vitor? No. You do not. I remember, I remember that. You know, kids got the shots uh, after a few months old. You got a series of shots. Can I say I something? Three times, Mom, right? I went to all the shots? Yeah. I did. I want you yeah. to know something, Mom. I love you very much, and I mean oh, this. I'm not joking. No, would stop that. No, I want you to understand something. If the worst happens, you make Gary make the funeral arrangements. That shouldn't be your problem. He did this to me. Oh, stop that. Gary, he did. He Gary exposed didn't me. Do it deliberately. No, sure. it's you know, who's to, do you think there are any do you think there are such things as mistakes? What did the Maharishi say? There are no mistakes. <laughs> ah. <laughs> did the Maharishi say well, that? Well, he did. Well, uh, it's an oversight maybe he did. Well, know. it's a mistake. He made a mistake. And now I have to suffer and I have to be separated from my mommy. Did the guy cough in front of you? She, it's a she, uh, she coughed at the end, yes. Did she cough in front there of you? There was one cough, yes. And that was the cough, one I cough. think, that did it. <laughs> and, and you have hope we coughed out. Oh, stop it. Well, think positive. I'm not going to come visit you for two weeks at least to make sure I don't get it. If I should okay. get it, though, don't visit me because I don't want you compromised. I, I never mean, heard of such a thing, Howard. Stop. Ma, I've got to say my goodbyes now, just in case. <laughs> what? Well, th this guy, uh, this person is living and has hoping corp, right? Well, she Today, might not be long for the not world. But it used to be years ago, I'm sure. I never heard of people today having hoping corp. Mom, I'll see you on the other side. Do you know what I mean? Oh, Howard, cut it out. I love you. And uh, you make a tragedy out of everything, right, Robin? Well, that is true, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Where do you think I got that from? <laughs> not from me. Of course not you. Dad. <laughs> oh, my God, Mom. You have been terrific. You are a terrific woman. <laughs> you are a terrific You know, son. the first time I tried, I'm going to tell you this. The first time I tried to masturbate in my life, I did it in your bed. And I did that Do because I, need to have this information? I want to apologize to you for that because that was wrong. No apology necessary. And how it and I was so stupid, mom. I admit this. I urinated instead of <laughs> ejaculating. <laughs> And in my oh my bed, you urinated? A little bit. A little bit got on the bed because I, you had a TV in there and I was trying to uh, masturbate to Gilligan's well, Island. Now you're really upsetting me. Well, I'm just saying I want to apologize for the things I've done wrong. And you're a wonderful mother. Well, thank you very much. I'll accept your apologies. Right. And uh, think positive. And, uh, Wish me luck, Mom, in my battle against this dreaded disease, whooping oh, cough. Oh, cut it out. <laughs> I'll speak to you later. I'll speak to you when you get off the air. 
Okay. I'm, I'll be fine, Mom. Don't you worry about me. I know. I'm strong. I know. I live for you. I know you're fine. I know you're fine. I know that. I love you very much. I love Dad. you. I was a brave little boy right when I lived in the black community. I went there every day. You were the, well, I was stuck with the black community. You I know was brave. something? <laughs> you, ought to, you ought to pay me for, for ha- letting you live in the black community. Oh, Mom. <laughs> you have enough what I owe you, is, I don't even want to talk about. <laughs> You're right. I owe you plenty. I did, the, I did the right thing, let me tell you. And make sure Beth doesn't date anyone after I go from whooping cough. Oh, How Beth. long should she not date? N- Beth never. Probably Ever. Her off your rocker. I don't want any man inside of her, <laughs> Mom, and I'm leaving you in charge of that. Howard, have a wonderful, wonderful day. I love you very much. I love you. And if the whooping cough should take me, what are you going to do about and, Beth? And call me with good news. About the fact that I am free of whooping cough? Don't tell That's me any right. bad news, Jason. What do you have there, Jason? Jason's well, got no, bad no, no, news. What is it? You're going to what? Die. Well, somebody else from Sirius just wrote me that has had whooping cough. Yes. And it is, uh, do you want me to, to read you what he wrote? or No. No? Okay. What did he write? <laughs> no. What, what did he, he write? write? <laughs> Mom, listen to this. Here's my death sentence. Go ahead. I'm making an executive decision that Jason shouldn't tell you. It's only going to upset you. Now you Let making... me ask you something. There was nobody else in the studio but you? Who else counts? <laughs> I mean, Bigfoot Jr. was here. <laughs> Listen to him. <coughs> yes. Well, yes. Well, right, Fred, 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 you Fred was here. Fred, you're not concerned seriously. For you? No, for you too. For me, I was, I'm behind this big barrier, so that yeah. I think I might be a little safer. What does that say? So, do you want me to read it? Or all right, read what it Gary? says. Let my mother hear. <clears throat> it was horrible and all exclamation points. I had whooping cough eight years ago. Oh, all right, don't read it. Yeah, what did it who say? Who had it? Uh, this is Jose, who works on. Uh, oh, Jose, I know, know him. Jose, yeah. yeah, he looks like he has a whooping cough. Hospital yeah. thought I had tuberculosis. Oh my oh. God, mom! I was in isolation for a whole weekend. Oh my God, mother! I coughed up blood. Oh, oh. my God! And I stopped breathing. The ER. Oh, was oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! Mommy, <laughs> mommy, no, You're mommy. In good condition. Mom, did you Don't hear that? Don't take a run in the park. He'll feel better. I mean, uh, Jose is in top shape, this guy. Yeah, and? You should have breastfed me. I'd have more immunities. That's right. <laughs> you know I was not breastfed, Robin? Robin doesn't know this. I was not breastfed. <laughs> and they I think say... You told me one Robin or two times. knows it. Believe me, everybody <laughs> knows everything. Mommy, it's not too late. No, nope, never too late. <laughs> right, Bigfoot. Straight from we'll the tap. talk about it. Straight from the tap. All right, I love you. I only wish I had had your breast milk. Oh, my. Because I would be free of <laughs> whooping cough right now. I'll see what I can do about it. I can it. feel the whooping uh-huh. cough uh-huh. attacking my immune system right now. I'm fi- I'm in the fight of my life. But what, what, aren't you, isn't your immune system fighting back? Don't you have this, good soldiers? I feel there is such a huge battle, but <laughs> I feel the battle's being lost. <laughs> <laughs> stop. All right, Mommy, have a good day. You too. I love you. Don't I worry. Love. I will fight this. I'm not worried. Fred and I will fight it together. Thank you. Absolutely. Bye-bye. And be careful, Mom. Don't talk to anyone. They have whooping cough. (laughs) Stay away from people. I need you alive. I didn't know anybody got whooping cough anymore. Oh, yeah. Making a comeback. And if I die, you can start talking to that other child of yours. What's her name again? (laughs) Ellen. Other Ellen, oh, right. What other child is oh, right? Both of you forgot. <laughs> <laughs> my mother only has eyes Are for you me. Find that I don't talk to Ellen? No, I'm saying uh, I should be number one, always in your mind. All right. All right, I'm just kidding. You're number Listen, one. Thank you're you. Wonderful. Have a wonderful day. Why are you rushing to get off the phone so much? I feel like you're avoiding me. That thing's to do. What do you think? Yeah, but I need <laughs> I need help with my medical scare. Medical care. Right. What medical You're care? You're probably hanging up. You're scared to catch whooping cough from me. <laughs> oh, no, please. All right, Mommy. I love you very much. I love you. A love Bye-bye. to Dad, by the way. And tell him I said goodbye. I will. All right. Thank you. Well, my mother obviously is shaken by this nervous that I've been exposed. <laughs> <laughs> my own. Whoops, Moth is sick. 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 Sorry, Moth. She sounded fine to me. You're listening to Bowie 25 on Howard 101. <laughs>
Becoming a guest on the Howard Stern Show is no easy feat. You must pass the extensive screening process of top producer Gary Delabui. Hello. When are you going to meet those guys in those record companies who are going <laughs> to advise you and are going to tell you how to deal with all of them? Hold on, Mr. DeGaulle. I'll put you right through to Howard Stern. Right after I put through Marilyn Monroe, she's calling from the moon. If you want to be a guest, you'd better have your credentials in order. What is it, uh, Baba Fohai? I know it's late in the show. I know you're really busy, and I know we'd rather do this live, but um, would you like to talk to Madonna's sister on the phone for a minute? Sure, I'll tell her to come in. Papa Flunky. Uh, try. Robin, this is an exclusive. <laughs> Madonna's sister. This is Paula. <laughs> hey, Paula. Huh? You're Mad- hey, Paula, it's Howard. You're on, the, you're on the air, Paula. You're on the air, Paula. How much are you getting paid for this? Me? No, Madonna. How much is Madonna getting paid for this? Uh, I was down there with them show. What? Z100 is getting paid. You're getting paid. Madonna's getting paid off. We're all going to get bumped. I mean, we're all going to get... Uh... Super screener Gary knows how to authenticate the genuine from the counterfeit. Because uh, I have official word from Madonna's uh, publicist, Liz Rosenberg. That? This is not Madonna's I didn't sister, think so. But a woman who's been going around with Paula Chacon's ID and telling everyone. I mean, she was advertised in the paper. Why don't we take a look at the videotape and compare faces? All right, very and good. And to go with it. And beauty marks. Right. Fine. You, you come down and here. And how about if I get my godmother? And God only knows I'm not lying. All right. All right, listen. I didn't know what happened when I was born. I said, no. Robin, has there ever been anything funnier <laughs> on this show than Gary buying no. this story? No, Baba this Boy is going to be legend. Show, but this is the best. Show? This is legend, Gary. <laughs> you now go, that, this woman duped you. <laughs> Mark the date. Joking. Mark the date. Mark the date. This, what is it? I, every, I everyone's calling and asking for Gary, saying they're Kurt Cobain. <laughs> You know what, Gary? <laughs> hey, hey, wait a minute. I'm not crazy. I'm you duped Gary. <laughs> it proves what I've been saying. Amazing. Hey, this is a day in history. So we can never fire you now. Hey, you know who's stupider than Gary and her? <laughs> Me. I hired Gary. <laughs> Nothing escapes the scrutiny of Gary. All in all, a good week. I've got John Wayne Gacy coming in. I know it's him because I checked his license. Gary only books the big stars like Joe Pesci. What is it now? Well, I'm taking a chance on this one. Yeah. It, it sounds like Joe Pesci, and he did know a lot of the answers. You know, it, it, it almost doesn't sound like him because it's early in the morning. You're but saying I, it's Joe Pesci on the phone? I think it's Joe Pesci on the phone. I hear what you're saying about Spike. Well, what do you got me on the panel? Mine with you? I'm sitting here four hours waiting for you to talk to me. Have you ever been married? Have I ever been married? Oh, God. We're going to get into my personal Go life. ahead. Tell me. about Spike Lee. We're going to get into my personal life. Well, we got Tell me you. if you've ever been married. But no, I've never been married. This is not this Joe is not, Pesci. It's not you. Way to go, Gary. All right. Very good. You've proved to me once again that Gary is. Uh, Gary can be fooled by anybody. Oh, come on. Very good. Thank you. Thank Bubba you very boom. much, guys. Uh, bye-bye. I appreciate it. Right. Bye-bye. Gary, on line three, Cleopatra's on the phone. <laughs> Oops, fooled again. I know Abe Lincoln was on the phone because it was a 212 area code. If you want to be a guest, don't try to fool Gary. I guess it's part of my job to be stupid. There he is, uh, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. <laughs> Why is that so entertaining? It's great. I can oh, hear that a hundred times. Oh, man. And who knows, Papa I might. <laughs> Thank you. And now, another Sour Shoes instant classic. Anniversary of Baba Booey. This is Booey 25 on Howard 101. 
see how one Baba Blunder changed Stern Show history. Hey, Gary. Baba Booey. I mean, Baba Booey. Come on in. A little Baba bashing this morning. Boy, what great luck. Baba Booey, no, I'll fuck up with him. It's so much fun to fight with Gary. We can fucking argue with you all day. It's a lose-lose. This is Booey 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. And Baba Booey to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. had a blowout with Gary. Oh, really? Yeah, I was a little pissed off at him. Because on the uh, wrap-up show yesterday, he's playing bits I haven't played because I haven't played them fast enough for him. Uh. So he wanted to give an example of a bit. But like I said, Gary, when do you ever do that? Uh, what am I, on a timetable? I mean, if I don't get to something within a week, I, I get the shit on? <laughs> he had decided that you had ne- were never going to play that. Yeah. So, I, he, so he started arguing with me, and I said, Gary, what's the argument? You know the rule. Oh, I, I'm glad we know now. I, I go, no, you've known that for... Just stop it. Enough of the wrap-up show, then. Enough. It's done. Over. The yeah. wrap-up show. I said, just, just don't, don't go in and invade my shit. <laughs> you know, I'm, I'm like crazed out of my mind over, and I fixate, you know, and then I can't let go of something. Right. We had a saying in AA about drinking and drugs. Don't admit it. Don't deny it. Stop it. Right. <laughs> no and argument. What pissed me off is he acted like he didn't know that's the rule. Well, what are the bits that they used to, you know, because it was sort of like, you know, they used to have bits yeah. that were... Bits re- Howard wouldn't play. Right. Yeah, well, they would come to me and say, here's some bits that uh, you're not using. Do you mind if we use them on the Friday show? And I'd say, no problem. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'm never going to use those. The Grandpa Pizza clip that Sal's been busting my ass to get on, I just kind of keep there. And when I feel like playing it, I play it. Okay. You know? Yeah, I'm actually glad. to. I like to try to keep at least five to ten things in the chamber, so to speak, in I, case I need them. Okay. You know, if I need to take a break or I, or I feel like I want to just play a bunch of things in a row, you know. They were I got looting my, the reserves. I've got my madness. <laughs> yeah, they, they looted my vault, so to speak, <laughs> because I didn't do it fast enough for Gary. He goes, well, I'm just looking to make it interesting on the wrap-up show. I go, no, no, no. I don't care about the wrap-up show. It's irrelevant, the wrap-up show. I mean, really, you, you, you're fucking freaking me out. First of all, Howard, it's not... I, you, you focus on this thing and, and like as if it wasn't about whether you play... Oh, so you don't understand. Hold on, can I just make a point? How many I'm, years are you working with me? First of all, it wasn't about you, whether you play the stuff fast enough or not. It was about the, how the guys freak out and nag me that, you, that you're not getting Fine. stuff. Fine. Talk and about then, it. And then, we did talk about all Good. that. And that was, we all sort of agreed, and if we're wrong, I'm sorry, we all agreed that that was a bit that you had decided not to play. No, that, that was never, ever fact, discussed. Sal said, Sal said he saw you take it off your page. I took it and off and thought, I said to him, Sal, in the but, next hour, remind me. I'm not, I, Howard, I swear to you, I'm not. Gary, I'm are you my producer or not? Yes. F- fuck Sal and Richard. And Are you we, my producer? Yes. And when, hold What's on. the rule? When, when, when we did the you Friday show. You call me up and you tell we, me. I never played any of that stuff for you when we did the Friday show. Yes, never. you did. You came never. to me and said, do you mind if I play this? Bits Howard rejected. I didn't reject the bit. It, after like, you got to fucking be kidding me. You're yeah. going to argue this with me? I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm trying to give you some insight into what happened. I'm no, not no arguing. No, no insight. I'm, not I, arguing I'm sick with of your you. insight. Just tell me. Boom. But you pay me for insight. No. Listen to me. Here's the rule yet again. If anybody doesn't understand it. You call me up and you fucking ask me if I'm done with something. How's that? That, I understand All right, that. thank you. 
But you I'm don't not, understand I'm it. not arguing with you. I swear to you, I'm not arguing No, I understand with you. you had a rationale. We I, all get I'm just it. trying to tell you what I was thinking. Yeah, so I you don't understand, understand that. Stop thinking. But I don't, I don't want you to think like I'm just some fucking renegade lunatic just playing whatever no, I want. No, it's just that you get excited it, and you listen to Sal and Richard and they boss you around. That's and not you true. Can't fucking, you gotta, you that, gotta fucking use your head. Robin, did, did you say, it gonna, wasn't like that at all. It no. wasn't, Robin. Robin no. was there. No, you and, know. I'm just saying it wasn't like that. It was very. Of course it's like that. It was very organic and it just seemed. It's not like I'm. It's not organic. What is this organic? It just sort of happened. What is organic? It's not like I walked in. I'm more the organ. I, I know what's organic. It's not like I walked in and said, oh, let's play bits from the show today. It just sort of happened. And it no. Seemed, and it Don't let right. things happen. It felt right? It did. It feels wrong to me. It does now. <laughs> yeah. It felt right. No. This is, let me explain to you yet again how I work. I don't necessarily play something for 10 years. It comforts me to know there are 10 things that my audience hasn't heard that's fresh and new. Robert, did I say that on the air yesterday? Yes. Yeah, good. So then where did you go wrong? We were all... Under we. The, hold on. We meaning... Who's son. the we? I want to hear the royal we. Me. You me. is we. I'm going to take the me. You call yourself we. Was under the assumption that you were done with that bit. And no. it was a mistake. It was a mistake. I, I admit it. Done with it. I haven't but, played but it yet. nobody... nobody but, I never said to Sal I'm not playing it. I said not today. I'm not ready. And Sal knew that, too. He didn't. Yes, he did. In fact, I said to him, I'm taking it off this page. I said, in the next hour, remind me. And he never reminded me. He's incompetent, and so are you. <laughs> and listen, I wasn't looking. Howard. Sal, get out of here. Just okay. leave. You, you'd be the smartest man on the planet if you left right this second. You'd be now. really smart if you left right now. I got one thing to say. Say it, but I told you. Okay. What did I warn you? Yes. You'd be really smart to leave right now. Okay. On so the wrap. Right, go I, ahead. I you, you're left. so smart. No. You're going to stay. On the wrap up show, I said, Gary, this is not a good idea. Howard hasn't played it yet. Oh, ah, fuck no. you, Robin. Did he say that? Well, then yeah, he's no. right. I'll Robin, pull the no, tape. You I'll pull fucking the tape. cocksucking no, lying piece of you on, shit. Uh, you are a fucking. I'm not piece throwing. Of shit. No, you're telling you. You're telling him. You know what? I now look at you and see you. I swear to God, I can't win. So Sal told you. Howard, no, but Robin I'm not just, saying shut that. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck I'm up. not. Listen, Robin just said that he did not say that. Robin was I in swear the, God, the I'll pull the tape. I'm glad you actually stayed. I, I apologize. <laughs> but wait a minute. That's not the point I'm trying to make. I'm not saying you're wrong. What I'm trying to say is that. No, you said he's wrong. No, no, no. <laughs> the point I'm trying to make is that um, you did pull it off the page. Yes. And Gary is and right. And what did I say to you when and, I pulled it off the page? Quote what I said to you when I pulled it off the page. Why don't you just page. say what you told me out there? And I said. Why don't you he, say, I, here's what he goes. What did I, wait a second. What did I say to you when I pulled the bit off the page? Remind me about it again in another break. In another break. And I did, though. No, you didn't. No, but Howard, we have. But and I don't thing, care. That means I'm still using it. But I'm not saying what you Gary. Go here, here's no, lunatic. here's the point I'm trying to make. What Gary what was saying. What do you mean what you go through with the lunatic? This You're lunatic, the lunatic. You know, him. He's not a lunatic. You are. He's a fucking lunatic. No, no he's I'm not. not. He just, okay, I'm going to tell you what he just said out there. I walked out. I go, I just want to let you know, Howard's really upset about yesterday. He goes, he about pulled that it off bit, the page. He goes, woo. So it's making the crazy sign about no, you. No, I didn't. I'm crazy. No, fucking deny it, cocksucker. No, now he's selling me out. He goes, I'm not telling you. You went in there. You went in there. You went to me and goes, fucking Howard. Howard's going nuts on I me. Mean, I, I go, said, why Howard is furious why are you about yesterday. Why are you reporting to Sal my reaction? Because I want them to be ready for this. No, no, no. You should be ready. Oh, God. Why are you reporting what I say to you to Sal? Is he the boss? Absolutely not. So in other words, when Mel Carmazin, uh, you go into a meeting with him, do you sit there and tell everything Mel said to everyone else? If it affects all of us, yes, because I want them to know not to play. How does maybe, it affect If, you, if you're doing your you job, want, how does it affect them? You can't ask them? a question and this not get an insane. answer. insane. He goes and reports to Sal. You can't get a question. can't ask a question and not... Go ahead. Not, what, what, else you what if they think it's okay to play bits, and I didn't say anything to them? Say, to by the way, I made a mistake yesterday. Okay, well, don't report it? on my oh, mood. Stop. No, you. What do you mean? Let's well, stop. You know I'm right. When you, if you're in management, you go out. You don't sit and, and bust me. You go busting, out they and you need say to know that you. That it no, comes from you, that you no, it wanna... comes from you. Right, I'm done with you. You wait. don't know. It comes from Gary, you. Hold on. Stupid. No, wait, uh, Gary. You need wait, to come no, back here. See, he thinks I'm selling him out, but I'm not. Sold him out. No, I did. But I'm glad you did because I knew it. No, but it sounds you like you what? sold him out with a lie. He's never Sal. done that before. No, but I didn't. I said on the wrap-up show. Did yesterday. Gary say what you said? He said. I mean, no, did you say listen, to Gary what you said? Sal, you said don't to Gary. worry about it. Gary knows he did the wrong thing. I've told him this a million times. That's I, why he came uh, running in. Both. Guess what happened yesterday? Uh, both. Uh, something happened on the wrap-up show yesterday, but I think I did the right thing. I go. Well, how's that the right thing? You didn't call me. Gary kept saying to you today, mm. goes, uh, Sal said you took it off the page, which is true. All I right, did, right. but, okay, I, but, that does, but even though you took it off the page, the point I'm trying to make is that when he decided to play on the wrap-up show yesterday, I said, Gary, are you sure you want to do this? And Gary said, 
Trust me, it's not being played. Oh, wow. That's the point I'm trying to make, Gary. Trust him. I I'm, think that there was a... Cons- you guys felt that it was never going to be played. We did, too. Yeah. yeah and but Gary gets pressured by these guys. It wasn't who can't- a pressure. It was sort of like a consensus that, yeah, this is a bit Howard's never going to play. I've never said I'm not playing it. I think Gary used common sense in this case that it, it really sat for a <laughs> long time. And he. I, I think the call wasn't that bad in this circumstance. Hook knows Mike, you're on the air in Tampa. Go ahead. <laughs> Hey, good morning, Howard. You hook nose, Jew bastard. Listen, I wanted to know if uh, you had any new bits to play today. Or do I have to listen to the wrap up show to hear? Oh, I'm glad you called, Hook Nose. <laughs> yeah, the new bits now debut on the wrap up show because uh, because I'm an asshole because so Gary did, never knew that he thought so it was did, over. I should tune into anything that's uh, anything that's new and exciting. It's the wrap up show. Yeah, yeah. Right? yeah listen right. to Sal, Richard, and Gary on the wrap up show today. They'll probably have some some more stuff to play for you that I haven't played yet. I'll try and rush to get to a lot of it, but if I if I miss it, you know. Hey, listen, if you, if you miss yeah. it, Howard, they're going to play it. So oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, tune in. I'm telling you, you'll never know what you'll hear. Nate, you're on the air. Yeah, Howard, uh, yesterday Sal did say something to Gary on the wrap-up show about it. Oh, I'm sure he did. Gary does what Gary wants. Well, we have a tape of it. We can listen but, to it. I'll listen to it. But I'm going to go back and listen to the show. The point is that you, Howard, did take it off the page. You I did. did tell me to remind you. You That's did right. sit for it. So for, you knew, too, that I wanted yes. it. Well, you sat on uh, it for a long time, and yes. I think... Yes. How long do I have to... So I know. Yeah, there's a shelf life. I, I how long is the shelf life, Sal, before you and Gary play it on the wrap-up show? <laughs> That's your call. You're yeah. the boss. You, you, well, no, you, I'm not. You're the ring You leader. and Gary are the boss. No. You decided yesterday on your own to play it. No, no. So I, who's the boss? You are. No, you are. You you decide when things are played. No, I've been played I, fast enough for you. I told Gary he should not do it. I mean, but so. I, get, so Gary, not, I don't recall you telling him I not said, to do it. I said maybe it's not a good idea. And he said, trust me, it's a good idea. But I think in this case, Gary made a good call. I mean, I, Oh, I, you I, do? Oh, maybe, you think he made a good call? If you okay, weigh good. it out. All right. Okay. Well, but from now on, I'll right. check in with you. No, you don't have to. All right. Thanks, Sal. All right. Thanks a lot, pal. But I don't want Gary. See, Sal thinks Gary made a good call. <laughs> well, <laughs> that's all that counts. Glad we got a lot out of this. Don't come in here. Don't come in my office and apologize to me with your fucking stockbroker bullshit. Don't come in here. Don't. Well, first, don't fucking come in here. What this are you guy. angry about? Yourself, I hope. No, I'm angry. He that told Sal, you not to Sal play it. Any, will say anything in front of you to make himself look good. No. Gary couldn't have played it if they hadn't gone to get it, the, so the, he he wasn't that adamant. The point that I was trying to make to you, Gary, is you said to Howard three times, Sal said you took it off the page. You were already implying that it was me that led you to play it on the wrap-up show. No, Gary did it himself. He knows no, what, he knows the rules. For it, but don't sit here and re- say like you ran in like a fireman and said, don't play that bit. You always do that to try to make yourself look good in front of Howard. It's not true. He, according to this listener, he did say, don't play the bit. No, oh, he, he didn't. didn't. No, he didn't. I said, so, Gary, Nate, you sh- heard it, right? Oh, definitely. He said, uh, you know, Howard still might play it. And Gary laughed. He goes, trust me, he ain't going to play it. That's yeah, Howard. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He knows. But so, Gary, said, get back in here and apologize said, to me. Apologize know, to Sal, I don't Gary. Know. And then you went to get him. it. Gary. Fuck him. Apologize to Sal. You're I'm lying. He's a cunt. Why is he a cunt? Apologize. Because he just will do anything to make it. Why? He warned you not to play it. When he feels the avalanche coming, he'll do anything to get himself out. But, Gary, he warned you not to play it, so apologize he to him. He didn't warn me not to play it at all. I was looking to help you. Oh, you're show. terrible. <laughs> Can I just say that, thank God Sal isn't smart and he stayed in. <laughs> <laughs> right. That's what I get for looking out for Gary. Oh, you're terrible. No, I mean, Gary, listen, listen, Gary's working with me 20 years. He doesn't know. Just give me a call. Don't make decisions on your own. He knows that. Call him, Gary. Never make a decision on your own. Sal, listen, though, a piece of advice for the workplace. If you're going to be phony and fuck over people, do it to one party, not to everyone, because then everybody's going to get... be mad at you. Artie, 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 what do you want well, There's no phoniness. Like, it sounded like you ran in here. I, I mean... When you ran in here and said what you had to say about Gary, you made it sound like you were way more adamant, like you were the hero of the situation. No, no. And immediately okay. got Howard, uh, you know, on listen, your side listen. about it. It didn't sound that strong. Okay, but let me explain to you what I, the point may, I was trying I've to make. I've been made very uncomfortable today. Me too. No, 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 no. Were you I don't happy care about that your... it was played? He certainly was congratulating said, himself yes, for his reaction. I said Gary he made was a happy good... it was done. Yeah, I said Gary made Gary a good, made a good this... call. Yeah, I said yeah. Gary made a good call. I think so, so. And I'm... Um, yeah, I yeah. mean, good. I he me. got your bit on the air in uh, ASAP. But the point I'm trying to make—he when- overrode my decision and uh, decided that it was and time, that's and that wrong. was a good decision. That's wrong. I see. But in this case, but you really 50/50. didn't feel Howard was going to play it. 
Right, and I didn't. You yes, don't know. And, you don't know anything about it, and I don't know anything about it. But, but the thing that, is, my point is that was the feeling you were conveying in the room that it was never going to be played. You had lost uh, hope and faith. It was fifty fifty. That's why I said to Gary, I, I don't think know if it you was should more in ninety ten. Robin, if, if, <laughs> Robin, I did all say right, to Gary. Right, thank you. But you have on. to leave now. The point I'm trying to make, though, please, is that uh, you made all the points. It's boring. Gary said five times. Sal said you took it off the page, so he's already implying right. that I led him to do it, and I didn't. Right. So I'm not trying to be. Right. That's now, the point. I that's why I came, off, but that's why I came in here. Sal, I only came in was, here. It was my decision. I take responsibility for it. You guys didn't pressure me or anything. But don't say you tried to stop it like a fucking fireman running into a burning building. Well, Gary, when you say five times, Sal said you took it off the page, it sounded like you were implying that I All led right, you to do you, it. thank you, thank so you. So you came in to defend yourself. That's exactly why I right. came in. And yeah, I, I think we should hear the you're tape. bitching and complaining about not getting it on. Tim, you're on the air in Pittsburgh. Go ahead. Hey, Howard. Hi. Hey, uh, this wrap-up show, man, honestly, it, it's a good show. But in the last month or so, I think it's really been going to, to Baba Bowie's head. He, he sits back here, he's the devil's advocate, he's argumentative, and he's spinning it his way. And Well, I'm on, gonna, I'll tell you what, thank God for tape, because I have a clip that I'm going to play in two minutes of Sal telling Gary not to play the clip. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. yeah, so I, I will play you. it for you. Thank you. Thank you. And then, and then, then that'll be it. Glenn, you're on the air. Hey, Al, what's going on? I don't on recall with him show, saying it. Hold it, Glenn. I can't hear you. One second. Please begin again. I said, you need to get out of therapy. You're getting soft because first Robin's on the Bubba show giving her <laughs> revelation. Now this guy's doing his thing. I mean, what the fuck's going on in here, dude? You need to get a little tough like you used to back in the day, and you need to get that Yenta off the view every day after your show. What? That's Gary. I think he's calling the wrap-up show the view. Oh, okay. Yeah, you know what, Sir, Gary? Gary is, Bowie off of that show Baba Bowie is overloaded. Right. He's really overloaded. I got to tell you because uh, this is—he just bullshits me. Yeah. Well, uh, and, it's no good. that show's no good anyway, really. Oh, come on. That show, the show's good. The show's good. That's not my problem. It was a good idea to have a show like that. And uh, look, it the, creates I mean, this. The caller was right. It's really not that good because, I mean, they just sit around and cackle about what you did already all day. I, mean, I know, like all day. But I'm going to play it because Howard hasn't played it yet, so I'll just play it. And that'll be good. Well, I, mean, I think like, it like, was more uh, an interpretation that you had lost. You, well, you liked it, but you didn't like it no, enough to play. I liked it fine. Because you had previewed it a lot, according to them. It, it, so what? I don't know. That's I'm just my process. telling you. <laughs> That's my process. I've got a process for this thing. It's been pretty successful the way I do it. Can I say something a little behind the scenes thing, which I think defends what you're saying? The other day, and Sal and Richard, 90% of their bits are great, but the other day they played something they did with Joe Franklin. Right. And I sit back here, and every once in a while you'll go to me for an opinion, and I overhear it. I didn't think it was that strong. I was like, it was eh, bad. You know, well, bad, whatever. I, I was like, I was hoping you would ask me because I, I, I saw you were pondering it. Hmm. But you didn't say no, you didn't say yes, and Richard pitched it like a, any writer would, and you didn't give any example of, of you being mad about it or just like, look, we'll, we'll get to it later. And in my head, I'm going, that's kind of smart because you wake up the next day with comedy, it might seem good, right. and maybe you'll want to play well, it. I'll, and I'll you give never you an said yes or no, and if that I was playing on the wrap-up show, and I was you, and I was waiting to sleep on it, that would make me mad. Yeah, well, so well let I me guess... tell you, you've hit it on the head. Right. What I do is, when I prepare the show, I have a, a computer in front of me. Like, for example, here it is. Jack and Rod with Joe Franklin. It's right. been sitting here now for a week and a half. And I'm thinking about it. I'm thinking about how, how could I make that good? How could I explain who Joe Franklin is to a lot of the audience? And who knows? Joe Franklin may come up uh, in a conversation, and then exactly. it's organic. <laughs> and and, and <laughs> so know? even with this Grandpa right. Pizza bit, I know the bit's there. Lately, we've been very full. We've been very busy with different kinds of things. I haven't needed to go to it. And I have a process I work through. And, that, and I also get very comforted by having 10 things sort of laying around that I can hit if I, if I need it. Uh, and Gary knows this. This is how I work. Now, for him to go on a show for, for three seconds of pleasure to play something that I'm sitting on and thinking about and putting this much effort into. That would aggravate me. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm aggravated. Hey, Hal. Yeah. Listen, just tell Gary to start being a boss and run the office and stop dilly down with these fucking two. Right. You know exactly. I mean? Be a boss. He's got to step up and just be their boss. He's well, he's still an boss. intern in his own mind. That's, well, that's the problem. I mean. was never an intern here. Whatever. A, a shadow traffic uh, stooge. Yeah, but in defense of Gary, though, sir, the way the show's structured. Oh, my goodness. I mean, part of the, br part of the brilliance of the show is part of... 
All right, that's your famous line. In defense of Fred, in defense of Robin, in defense... I've defense never defended Fred once. No, or me. I never recall <laughs> that being said. I can't defend you, you fuckhead. <laughs> he had to defend Fred because he's the only man in that place. That's why he's been dragging him with him for 35 years. He's a real man. 35 years? How dare you? <laughs> I've been dragging him like a ball and chain for 35 years. 35 years? That's why. years. Man, he's a man. Well, how's, how's Gary going to get those guys in line when they know, like, little kids, they can run to someone above him and make fun of Gary? Hey, Hal, in defense of Artie, I think... No, you see, a defining moment was yesterday. Oh, Sal, Gary knows Sal and Richard every minute are bitching and stuff. And he, and he, and he talks about it on the wrap-up show. Fine, good call. Right. Look, but listen, he know listen. Hey, Hal, I got I to gotta go. I yeah. got to pay my toll. I'm driving down this... All right, go pay your toll. So you're not in the conversation. Oh, so he's talking I sort of feel that this is my fault because I was the one who said, is there no other recourse if a bit is never going to be played? I didn't know sure this is. was not a... Uh... There's absolutely recourse. Howard? I okay. will give it to the guys, to, and I'll say, hey, put it up there and play it. Our preview page two in red is Sal uh, saying maybe we shouldn't play this. All right, let me okay. hear it. And I, I will... But I still... It wasn't as if Sal ran in and said, stop, stop. But Gary, he, preview page one or two? two in red. Two. I said to. Uh, okay. Maybe this should be an outlet again for bits you couldn't get played and they've been right. sitting there. Because right. Robin's here, why don't you go grab uh, Dead Grandpa Pizza? Go grab it, throw it on a well, CD. Probably up right there. No, no, no. This is a different no, prophecy. Go well, maybe Howard wants to hit it first. It's not going to happen. I'm telling you. <laughs> I was, between you and I, I was about to erase it. I'll go okay? Make it All right. right. So go but, make his. And now, Robin was is a good job. Who asked you to erase it? I didn't tell well, you to I would erase have it. About, but it was about it was about to be you know, we need room on the page. Right, good, good. But good. listen, Howard. Okay. All right, I I, I can't take this. But, but I I'm not here I'm not out to No, you sabotage. Well, me. I'm not out to sabotage you. You did. But you did. But I mean are you do you are, do you uh, You sabotage are me. Are your are your decisions right a hundred percent of the time? Actually, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I am always right. You're never wrong. Never you never, you never make, I'm never wrong. Okay. I can't think of it. I can't even give you an example of when well, I'm when wrong. Well, I can boss, give you one example. When you're the boss, that's the thing. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah he can't be wrong for himself. Go ahead. Tell me an example of when I was wrong. You supported Bush in the war, and then you changed your mind. That's not wrong. That was an opinion at the time. Which you changed. Right. Now, Based my opinion on is, lies, he was feeding us. I was told a series of, of facts about weapons of mass okay, destruction. Bad, bad example. Well, because you can't even think of an example where I'm wrong. I'm no never problem. wrong. How can I be wrong? I got one time you were wrong. Go ahead. 1986, that outfit on Letterman, the black leather pants and the, the brown cowboy boots. All right, you got me there. It wasn't even right at the time. <laughs> It'll never be right. You know what I kept thinking of today when you were getting mad at me off the air then now? You know what I kept thinking of? Take your children to work day. Oh. And I thought, like, maybe they should see this. You know what, Gary? Oh, honestly, see what? See what? See, see, what? see me getting... See, see, see what, that you do things wrong? Yeah, Why should your they, son see that? They should see me get emasculated. Emasculated? Yeah. I'm the emasculated one. I'm the one who feels emasculated in this. I don't even have control of my own show anymore. You yeah. and Sal and Richard emasculated me. Yes, you so cut my balls off. What do you mean you're emasculated? Your son should see how you emasculated me. Yes, he should. Both of them. <laughs> I mean, what is this? Sounds like everybody's running around here with no balls. Yeah. <laughs> He's emasculated. Guy, yeah, you know, I, I've look, I'm not going to, I've never been a producer. I, I think right now, you, after hearing that tape, I got to apologize to Sal. I mean, you were clearly the protagonist in that. No, no, but he made it sound as and if Sal he was, did clearly say maybe he wants to hit, and you were but, like, but, no, 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 but, no, no, but, you but, really he made say, it. He don't play it. He said and maybe already, he wants to you have hit. To hear but the, that's a good suggestion in that situation, obviously. You have to hear the whole conversation right, leading up right. to that. There was a whole, I'm just, I'm not saying I made the right decision. I'm just saying that. Sal was like, our stuff never gets, but he's acting like the entire time he was in there, was like, Ooh, we shouldn't do this. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, but I think you should admit you're right, wrong and deal with your, your uh, the people on. who work for you directly. Uh, well, it sounds like you're in competition with Sal now because your two kids talking to the no, teacher. I'm not like, in no, I'm not in competition. But, but what you said earlier is right. It's very difficult, and I had this problem with stuttering John for 10 years. Oh, no, I know. It's very yeah. difficult to <laughs> tell someone, you can do this, you can do that, when you know very well that they're going to run into Howard and say, mm -hmm. This is not that example. This is, has nothing to do with that. It's plain and simple. Oh, never mind. This is not an example of Sal and Richard <laughs> usurping you. They no, went what I'm to saying you. As a general you made rule, the call. As a general rule, they could. Could do what? Usurping. What are they doing? How do they usurp you? What, because because they make fun, Baba Booey? No, just not that. They, like they'll come in, I'll be like, we shouldn't do this, and then they'll come back in and go, you know, Gary said we shouldn't do this, but we were thinking this is funny. Well, they shouldn't do that. 
So tell them not to do it. So maybe you should, what happens- you know, do the whole parental thing that you and Gary shouldn't disagree in front of the kids. And oh. you should take Gary's side. Gary's the one who went out and reported to Sal, the, our conversation. All right, thank you. Thank you, Gary. You're welcome. Gary Delbate, everyone. Producer. <laughs> His face looks like my behind He's fucking up his words all the time Mama monkey, mama monkey, mama, mama, mama kind ba ba boo he says we kind He's fucking up his words all the time His face looks like my behind Mama monkey, mama monkey, mama, 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 mama kind Hello, this is John Cleese, and you're listening to Bowie 25, only on Howard 101. All I know is, is that John told me he went to lunch yesterday with Baba Bowie, uh-huh. and Baba Bowie told a duty story. You can't let anybody have a moment, can you? <laughs> you can have three for I, a second. All the guys are patting me on the back in the office, and you go, Gary, come and tell you a duty story. So what's the duty story? <laughs> it's, I'm going to edit it as best I can. Okay. All right. So, you know what uh, we should start with? You know what a, a hanger is when you're making a duty? Okay. All right, all right. So, I'm, I'm on the toilet, right? This about five years ago. I'm on the toilet. Nobody's home, Right. All of a sudden, somebody starts ringing the doorbell, banging on the door like crazy. So I was pretty much done, you know? Mm-hmm, but not fully. No, but I I, was, I just, I didn't have a chance to, you know. Wife. To, so I figured I'll just, you know, I'll throw my pants up real quick, run down, get rid of it, and then go go back and finish. So I, I run downstairs, I go to the door, and it's like, I don't know, like the paper boy or something. Something ridiculous. I right. get rid of them quick, you know? Run back upstairs, finish, you know, finish cleaning up everything, and I see... It, it, the only way to describe it was I've stepped in dog duty, except it wasn't a dog's. Wow! It's all over the floor. I must have I must have you dropped a hanger. The house. <laughs> and it was on the, ste- oh it was on the steps. God. On the steps. <laughs> on the steps. Going downstairs, all over the bathroom tile floor. It's like a so crime now, scene. Now I'm like, seriously, how do you explain that to your wife, right? So <laughs> oh I'm like, I got the bucket and the mop out, and I'm scrubbing like a madman before anybody gets home because I don't right. want anybody to see. I'm embarrassed. I could smell animation on this one oh. a while away. Yes. Yeah. So I, do, so I cleaned it up. I never told my wife. She doesn't know that ever happened. Hey, girls, that's your dream guy. <laughs> but I cleaned up quick. I took charge. You know, da, da, da um, duty. You know, the thing with a so dreamy, Jane. <laughs> the thing with a hanger, though, Howard. Yeah. With what he's talking about, did you ever, you know, you know, go, no. to, the, go to the bathroom and then you know wipe yourself, and then like a day later find a piece of duty like in a corner of the bathroom that it flew up. <laughs> You know, like, it, like when you're wiping. No, you I never had that happen, Artie. I'll be honest with you. I've had everything, not that. Norn, you Norn, loof balloons. You and I eating black and white cookies, eating shrimp and chocolate again. My dream date, my professional life is a nine. Ninety-nine shrimp cocktails go by. Yeah. Yeah, I, 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 uh, GP Fence 909, bottom of the screen. Oh boy, that looks so, that sounds so good on my phone. 99 apps on my phone, looking through what I should own, thinking about another day. I should go book another guest, maybe I should take a nap, maybe eat, eat some more chocolate. I'll go hound salad again, copying engineer, didn't get it done. 99 pieces of vinyl go by. How about eBay again? I'm on Amazon. Wondering what I should do right now. Should I take a nap or book a guest? Maybe I should check on Richard and Sal. JD has another thing to put up. My boss is mad. I'm in my office playing solitaire, looking at emails. Who I should do right now? Darn your eyes. Pieces of vinyl. Go by. <coughs> right. Okay, okay, so here's the deal. Bowie 
25 presents What Does Baba Booey Mean to Me? Hey, this is Rob Corddry. Uh, Baba Booey, the name, the word, the man, the event has always been uh, very important to me as a fan. But I think it was the day that I taught my one and a half year old daughter to say Baba Booey that I felt was, I feel like it was my 25th anniversary, my personal one. So enjoy everyone's 25th anniversary. This is Bowie 25 on Howard 101. See how one monkey misstep changed pop culture history. Mr. Griffin, how do you respond to that? Baba Bowie, Baba Bowie, Howard Stern's penis, Baba Bowie, Baba oh. Bowie, Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. <laughs> With Baba Bowie. Happy Valentine's Day, Baba Bowie. It's Baba Bowie. No, Baba Bowie. Damn it. Buy one window, get a window free. Baba Bowie. This is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie. All weekend long on Howard 101. Brian in Toronto, what's your gay problem? Uh, I, uh, my friend met a tranny. Yeah. You better say it faster because we're almost out of time. We seriously are almost out of time, Brian. He met a tranny and he banged the hell out of him. But it was a chick and it was actually a chick. Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Howard Stern's penis, Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Anything you else? wanted us to take I it. did want us to take that. Anything I love else? this loser. <laughs> <laughs> Say it one more that time. That was it? One more. Bubba Bowie. One more. One more. You're going to be a millionaire. Bubba Bowie. Keep going. Bubba Bowie. We've only got 20 seconds. Keep Please going. fill it. 20 seconds of Bubba Bowie. Bubba Bowie, Bubba Bowie, Bubba Bowie, Bubba Bowie. Bubba Bowie, Bubba Bowie, Bubba Bowie. Bubba Bowie. Five more seconds. <laughs> oh, I wanted him to do the full 20. Well, we have to be proud to be an American after the news. Celebrating five years as America's only radio station for the GLBT community. This is Sirius OutQ 109. All right, let me see what else I got here. I got tons of, oh, oh um, this is funny. You know, Stuttering John, everyone, everyone on the show to make extra money makes appearances. Yes. It's turned into a whole business here, whole side business. Casey makes appearances. He's got kind of some kind of warp stand-up act <laughs> about pedophilia, and no one even wants to book him. Stuttering John has a stand-up act. He has a whole traveling circus. So Gary comes to me today. He goes, you know, ever since these guys got stand-up acts, uh, you know, they get they got this whole thing going. He goes, I don't have an act, so I, I still have to take all the crap jobs. Like, he's he's cutting ribbons. Like, yeah. like, like Gary Superman. shows up at rodeos and literally gets it in, in um a, in, a barrel. in a barrel and lets like a bull attack him. <laughs> Dude, you know what they, you know what they did to me? Oh, this is about a year uh, ago. I never you have talk, no act, right? I got to talk to you about this. Did yeah, you so show he up? Almost yeah. has to die. Well, <laughs> Gary did a thing for a while where he was doing like Howard Stern trivia and stuff, but it doesn't go over. Right. I went to a monster truck show about a year ago, and the rap was Gary's going to come out in Bigfoot. You know. Yeah. The but, truck. Uh, the truck. But when I get there, yeah, they not tell the me, guy. oh, here's the joke. The joke is they gave me a little tiny dune buggy with a little Bigfoot thing over it. So mm. now I am, in essence, the clown. Right. You're, I come you're, out you're a clown. In, I come out in Bigfoot. That's like about a four big feet wheel, not yeah. a Bigfoot. I heard you told them you wouldn't do it. I did, and then... And then, and then they're like, well, what are you going to do then, boy? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> what, what you going to do, you Guinness? <laughs> <I remember laughs> you know what the worst part about that was? They, they announced me, right? I mean, time, Come I'm, here, you guinea. Get the <laughs> hell in there. Come here, you grease ball, whopping son of a bitch. <laughs> Get in Bigfoot before I drag you down Route 9. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you, I came this close to killing myself. Yeah. You whopping whore. The thing's got gears on it, you know, so I'm like switching gears and, you know, they teach you how to drive it about a minute before you go out. Oh, it's like you're in a tractor. So they, they announce to go, here comes Baba Booey and Bigfoot. So I go out, what they don't tell you is they turn all the lights on in the place and they throw a spotlight on me. So now I'm blind. I can't see where I'm going. Uh, Why did I'm, you spaz it, Dago? <laughs> <laughs> so I run, and, and, and like all these hay seeds are laughing at you. I'm going off a of memory. I'm driving a stupid thing off a of memory. Uh. <laughs> it was so embarrassing. What are you doing this weekend? I heard it's weird. Well, this weekend I'm going to a place down in Florida. Yeah! <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're waiting for it. Three wheel at meatball! <laughs> so what are you doing down there? My manager goes, hey, I got your gig. I'm like, Greg, what is it? Manager. He goes, you know you know those uh, places where they sell condos? It's a divorce attorney. Is he? Yeah. That's also, his John, manager. also your manager. <laughs> wait a minute. Wait a minute. He, you say a place where they sell condoms? Condos. Uh, oh, condos. Condos. So you know how they have the open house at the condo? You know, the, the, uh, what do they call that one? Um, like Century the Village? The Model House. The Model House, yeah. I'll, I'll be appearing at the Model House. <laughs> you are kidding me. 
Why don't you just dredge cesspools? <laughs> hey, Baba Booey, how much for taxes in this son of a bitch? <laughs> the worst thing about that is, you know no one's going to yeah. show up. That's, how yeah. little, That's hard. Well, if somebody that, does, get... they're going to mistake him for like some realtor who can yeah. show him the place. Uh, right over here is the toilet. <laughs> yeah. I used to get sick before those kind of appearances because yeah. you know no one's showing. Right. And I know Gary's you know, probably getting paid you know, decent money. And then when like no one shows, they Believe just, me, like, I know yeah. that horror. When oh. I was in Detroit... I mean, when I was doing radio in Detroit, I mean, not, not that I'm not doing radio in Detroit now. I mean, we're <laughs> yeah, on a we syndication, <laughs> but I used to live in Detroit and do radio in Detroit, and nobody. I used, we used to, they used to send us out on appearances so people would get interested in us. And I even said to the program director, no one's going to be interested in us. Right. Of course, we're going, you've got to do good radio if they're going to be interested in us. So uh, we'd send me out in like costumes to like Rocky Horror Picture Show movies. People would throw eggs at me. Oh my what kind God. of costumes? Like 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 one night I had to host a Rocky Horror Picture Show Halloween, and I had to dress up like like a, a vampire or something. I show up as a vampire. <laughs> you got any pictures? Thank God I didn't. Yeah, I do. I put them one in my book. I think. Oh my goodness! I'm a vampire, and I show up, and people's throwing toast and crap at me. You know, like the, that Rocky For Horror the Rocky thing. Rocky Horror thing. Yeah. Then I go. I had to go to introduce a punk. Like a punk club in in Windsor, in Canada, because it's right over the border. Right. And Windsor's a big market. People start throwing eggs and stuff. I said, I'm not doing this anymore. (laughs) Then I had to go race cars, like race against another guy, the Dock of Rock. What was the picture I saw of you in D.C. or Detroit? Oh, that was the... the, I had to do a tug of war. No, no, you were in some sort of a foot race, and you were wearing a leotard, almost like you were dressed like Superman. No, that was me wrestling a woman. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I used to do dumb crap. Well, here's the embarrassing part for me. Like, for, here's a perfect for instance, right? If I'm doing an appearance at a place, I get there like a half an hour early, and I do flybys. You know, mm-hmm. I drive back and forth with my car to see if the parking lot looks full. Mm-hmm. And if it's not, then I just torture myself. Yeah. Right? I get like a, I get like an ulcer. So I went to do. Um, well, who's gonna go to a condo? I, listen, listen, I open went to, house. But here's the, where it gets really embarrassing. In Florida, is this the stereo store story again? No, no, no. I went to go do Bally Total Fitness in um in Englewood Cliffs last week. Hmm. So I'm going by and I see they got like balloons, you know, to make a big deal out of it and everything. I, it, this embarrasses me to death. They hired like they had gotten like at least a half a dozen like cops, you know, to hold, oh, the no. to hold the people back. Yeah, I don't the know. They, they hired security, like crowd control. <laughs> what, was only high pitch no, there? I mean, it was it was no, it was a decent. High pitch didn't even show up. I got to tell you, I, the Which only you didn't like need. I'm, not, I'm not going to that. I'm hey, New Jersey, oh. tell these cops to let me in. <laughs> Crowd control. I can't, I can't get by the cops. The only appearance of my whole life I've ever needed crowd control for, for were the ones I followed you in. <laughs> right, right. Yeah, tell, them the one about, tell them the one at the stereo uh, store. Come on, that's the best right. one. This, this has got to be about, it's about nine years ago. Yeah. It's a stereo store in New Jersey. It's a, in a little strip mall in the middle of nowhere. So it's like a stereo store, a deli, and like a realty place. In the middle of nowhere. It's a Saturday in the middle of July. Anybody who's got anything to do is at the beach. It's like a, right. It's got to be 80 degrees. It's the best beach day ever. Right. It's a little, you know, it's, this guy owns a store. It's just, I walk in there, he's got like a ton of food for all the people that are going to come. <laughs> <laughs> he got like a six foot hero, a uh, bunch of salads. He got his entire family there to help with sales and with security. Uh, yeah. uh, Three people. Oh. In two hours. <laughs> two hours. Uh, <laughs> and you sat there for two uh, hours? You have to, uh, I guess. Uh, hey, yeah, I still take the chair. Are you ever tempted to just say, you know what, you keep the money and I'm yeah. leaving? But I, I, you can't I, do that. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. guy goes, hey, I guy, was, you want to take uh, some Zapolas home? Right. Yeah, he's giving him a bag. Yeah, what do you, so, what do you say to the guy? What do you say to the guy? I said, listen, I'm sorry. It's usually not like this. is probably because it's a sunny day. You know, I mean, I've done better than that 90% of the time. Do you talk to him the whole time and try and keep him busy? Dude, I'm behind the counter. And I'm just talking to him and his girlfriend for the whole, for two of, hours. Of buying things. <laughs> yeah, and you, and you see the look of disappointment on his face. You know they were so nice about it. They could have been really you know mean about it. They were. They were so nice about it. So then when the whole thing's over, I just want to leave. But now they want me to come back and eat with the family. I feel bad even eating the food. <laughs> we got a. We got. We, yeah, right. <laughs> we got a videotape their uh, condo appearance. Yeah, we're thinking of buying a condo. Let's go see Baba Booey. <laughs> Yeah, let's go to the Baba Booey condo. Uh, like, what do you do when the people do show up? I mean, when you when they had the six cops hired and there was no people, like how many no, people there were, were people there? there? But not enough to like a hundred. Yeah, like a hundred, like yeah. over, over two hours. Right. You know, over, or maybe over an hour. It's like five people in line. Right. So that no, when people I, sort of dribbling. Were in. the cops laughing at you when I got there? Yeah, the, dribbling in. In fact, <laughs> in fact, it was really funny because I walked in and they immediately whisked me into this private room, hmm. and then some girl walked in who had been on our show once. Private room. Yeah. <laughs> this girl walks in who'd been on our show once, and she just. 
came to say hello, and they, they you know, they get very cut. Like, okay, you got to leave now. And they like pushed her out of the room. Yeah, I yeah. gotta do something. Great. Like she can stay. You with finally me. had a person. <laughs> remember the remember the parents he did where he had a big sledgehammer and he had the lights on, busting up a car. That was at a monster truck show. I but had to do one of those the old time in Detroit war- because uh, everybody hated foreign cars in Detroit. Right. I had to go smack a, a <laughs> Toyota I- or something. I actually ended up in Time Magazine. It was like a big deal that I well, did. Well, that it. was because it was news related. <laughs> yeah. Can I tell you but, the worst uh, one ever, Howard? The no. worst gig ever? I predict more people are going to show up for my rabbit at Petland today <laughs> yeah. to go oh, see please. Lucky. Yeah, hire a cop for that. The worst yeah. gig ever. <laughs> hire a cop for the, for the <laughs> rabbit. You do appearances with Lucky. <laughs> there you go. Why don't you bring Take Lucky? Lucky? You want to get Lucky. <laughs> I'm afraid Lucky might be kidnapped. <laughs> By right. John. Yeah, there you go. Uh, Gary and Howard Stern's rabbit. You, guys, you were lucky because you had stories. You ought to adopt what, a rabbit. I would take a rabbit on a plane. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, at least it's yes. something for people to look at. Hey, that's lucky, that rabbit Howard Hey, rescued. Baba Booey, where's that goddamn rabbit? I got okay. I got to take Hey, Baba rabbit. Booey, where's that goddamn rabbit? <laughs> Can you imagine, Howard? I'm staying in two different hotels. I'm staying in one hotel on Friday and one on Saturday. I got to take the rabbit on the plane. Yeah. I got to transfer hotels with it. I got to keep an eye on it. Dude, at least you have something it's to do. It's better than nothing. Did you appear? I heard that you appeared at a Burger King with a clown. I appeared at a Burger King at a clown with John. Uh, oh. With me. We, well, we did a Burger King together. And uh, then I, no, I appeared at a Burger King, and the marquee said, uh, today, Gar- uh, Gary Baba Booey, two to four, tomorrow, Pogo the Clown. Oh. You know what, Howard? You want to see something funny? In L.A., we did an appearance at Bally's Fitness, yeah. okay? And when they lined up a table with us to sit the sign stuff, it was a whole line of people who just worked out, getting ready to see us. <laughs> and John said, Melrose Larry to get us Burger King. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Already eating Burger King. We're in the middle of Bally's. I'm eating a Whopper. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. I'm stop signing on the grab like a mayonnaise on it. But the worst gig I ever did in the history of all gigs, and I told him this wasn't going to work. Remember, you you know, car cash. I don't know if they're still on with us. Yeah. But car cash is a place where you go to sell your car. In essence, it's a garage on 11th Avenue. Right. That's what it is. I mean, right. you go. To that, it's a good place to go sell your car. Right. Saturday from noon to two, it's pouring rain out. Okay. <laughs> no. I'm, and I'm in a garage on 11th Avenue. Yeah, that made no sense. One guy, and the one guy that showed up had a million things and was not leaving. Right. He showed up at 5 after 12 and stayed till 2, and I had to talk to him for two hours. Yeah, well, at least he had something to do. <laughs> but you know what? No, I, he, you know, he, he was, was busy with them. He was so creepy, he was weirding them out. What did Car Cash think was going to happen? Like, people going to drive to Car Cash to see you? I, I, I once did an appearance at Staten Island at Roy Rogers. It was, it, it was me and Barney. Yeah. yeah, how many people? Oh, I bet you more no. people show up for Barney. Yeah, he, he outdrew me. <laughs> <laughs> you got to be booked into the right venue. Hey, Baba Booey, this here's a nice condo. I hear there's a bunny somewhere here. <laughs> hey, John, you're on the air. Uh, yeah, Howard, how you doing? Hey. Hey, uh, Gary's not the only one that uh, nobody shows up. I, I felt sorry for him, but it was Fred about a couple years ago. I went yeah. to see him at this, uh, what, Boodle's Opera House in Chester. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I, I was counting the people, and uh, by the time he started, it was only about like ten people there. There you go. Yeah, I went to see Fred I one mean, night. I there was about. For him. He's, he's good and everything, but there was nobody there. I went to see Fred in Brooklyn one right, night. There was about yeah. seven people there. Yeah. And, uh, and all I know is Fred ignored me. <laughs> <laughs> I was sitting there like jamming. I brought about eight people with me. I'm getting you a rabbit. The audience. Yeah, <laughs> you need the rabbit. <laughs> Seriously, Gary, if you toured with hey, the Howard. rabbit, people would go. I'm not kidding. He's got to bring the rabbit to Boca. You got to go get that rabbit. Imagine my rabbits in Boca this weekend. <laughs> and then, you know, yesterday he was in the park abandoned. Now he's in yeah, Boca. Now he's doing a tour in Boca. <laughs> now he's getting first class of comedy. He's stuck with Baba Booey. And yeah. you know, and you know, he's like, put me back in the park, <laughs> goddammit. He's going to hang himself. <laughs> hey, Baba Booey, could you take a picture of my wife from the rabbit? <laughs> Howard, you know what the other weird thing is? Is that, is that people show up and say and do really inappropriate stuff because again yeah. I, I'm just there to talk to people so people come and say hey your teeth aren't that big and they think they're complimenting uh, me and everything oh you're not as fat as I thought mm. but uh, I was at this Burger King and this guy was a plumber and you know that there's a big plastic ring that you put on the bottom of your toilet I don't right. know if you know about this but when you put your toilet on the ground it's a big rubber ring yeah. right. the guy goes hey he pulls it out it's wrapped in plastic it's brand new he wanted me to bite it he said, could you please bite the ring? Why? And I said, no. He wanted my teeth indentation in the, in the ring. Oh. And I said, no. And he started making a big scene about it. Yeah, but hey, man, I came. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, there's your story for you. Yeah. I love that. You are a good person to the max. That's you are right. a nice friend in the mix. That's my show. You are the producer of the Howard Stern oh, oh, Show. I see, I see. You are a hardworking man of God. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. 
you are a workaholic in me. You are a busy bumblebee. You are a busy bee with big teeth. You can really flush your teeth with a little bit of slugger. Ba ba boo wee. Ba ba boo wee. Ba ba boo wee. Ba ba boo wee. Well, let me Ooh. tell you something. Rock over London. <laughs> Rock over New York, New York. This three. It kills gingivitis. Right. Ooh. From TV's 30 Rock on NBC. Hey, did you know that everybody here went out last night without us? Thursday Night Thunder, that's been going on for years. You know about it? How come I've never been invited? Don't you think that's a little bit rude? Well, I yelled Baba Booey at Walter Cronkite's funeral, so I actually have no idea of what's rude or not. Booey 25 continues next on Howard 101. See how one Gary Goofup changed prank call history. 911, what's your emergency? Baba Booey, Baba Booey. Baba Booey, I'm saying Baba Booey, Baba Booey. What does that mean, Baba Booey? I, I don't know what it means. Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. This is Booey 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Baba Booey, Baba Booey. And Baba Booey to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. Baba, you were in a bad I role. Know. Yeah, I'm in a bad role. But as the reaction shows, people will not put up with it anymore. She and Aaron, good. It's gross. Mm-hmm. Just nasty. Just it's what you're saying that's the problem. That's exactly right. I'm not. I mean, again, I'm not saying that it's okay to jump in front of reporters and yell anything because that's annoying and it's dumb. It's dumb, and you, in the end, you just look like an idiot. Yeah, but right. it is the words, especially that these people are using. It is line. way different than the Baba Booey on right. um, and Howard Stern. Himself and himself this is disgusting. Yes. I mean, it's just it's. it's gross. Please stop defending gross, gross, gross. it. Yes. Whether you agree that it's sexual harassment or not, it's still not right to do. Yeah. Do yourself a favor and just stop. Just stop. You're, you're not doing yourself any favors. Booey 25 presents What Does Baba Booey Mean to Me? Hi, this is Adam Scott, and what Baba Booey means to me is, you know, it's kind of moved beyond Gary at this point. I mean, there's so much funny stuff about Gary, but it's also, for me, just a puncture in the sort of staid seriousness that how, how serious the media takes itself in general. Like when I hear a Baba Booey shouted out at a golf match or some reporter in front of a federal building reporting on something, someone screams Baba Booey. It's just nice to, you know, just puncture that ridiculous pretentiousness. And any time it's shouted out, it's usually better than whatever it is it, it's interrupting. Um, I would say 99.9% .9 of the time, they're doing whoever it is they're interrupting a huge favor. This is Bowie 25 on Howard 101. 
see how one monkey misstep changed pop culture history. I yelled Baba Booey at Walter Cronkite's funeral. Baba Cluey was there. <laughs> you gotta love Baba Cluey. Baba Booey. Jane, wanna say hi to anyone? Yeah, my nephew Wesley and my pet monkey, Baba Booey, Baba Booey. <laughs> is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. Mm. <laughs> oh, I wanted this cock ever since oh. you walked in the door. Yeah. Which one? This one? Uh, that one. Uh, Baba Bowie. <laughs> See that Baba Bowie look? Uh, yes. Hi, Baba Bowie. Oh, yes. Oh, fuck. Mm. Oh, yes. Okay, cool. Suck that. Cool. All right, time for rock and roll trivia game with Woo. Hank the Angry Dwarf and Gary Delabate, Baba that Booey. That song got us ready. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Here's the deal. Hank was on the show the other day, and his drunken stupor proved to us that he knows a lot of rock and roll trivia. Yeah. Gary Delabate is about to go on Rock and Roll Jeopardy on VH1. Where it looks like I'll be competing against uh, Weird Al Yankovic. Oh. <laughs> How yeah. bad could it get? <laughs> you didn't know that. No, 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 I didn't. That's one of the few things he doesn't know in rock and roll. Now, what I'll do is uh, Hank will start the round. I will ask Hank a question. If he gets it wrong, Gary gets the question. All right. All right. You get a point for every right answer, a negative one point for every wrong answer. How many Got questions that? are we going to do? I don't know. Right. Let's yeah, just go with it. I just sort of asked myself. All right. Here we go. Hank, Hank you your first. Question. All right. Van Morrison's first band was called what? Them. That is correct. All right, ja Gary doesn't get to answer that one. <laughs> that was amazing yeah, no, in itself. Amazing. That's amazing. Did you know that? I knew that. And I'm thinking there's one for me because I'm sure he doesn't know that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Delabate. Now, Hank, don't answer Gary's or else you'll help him. Wait till I call your name. I won't. I'm, just, right. I'm loving that he's got about an inch left in one bottle, so the other bottle's going to go any minute. Right. <laughs> Do you save the bottle so you can refill them? No. No. Okay. That's not a rock and roll question. <laughs> yeah. Gary Delabate. <laughs> I got it. Keith Moon's replacement drummer in The Who is named what? Uh, Kenny Jones. That's correct. One point for you. Ooh, one and one. We're Did you know that, Hank? It. Yes. Okay. I've seen The Who in concert. Okay. All right. Hank. I got it. What band was Peter Frampton in before he went solo? Humble Pie. Right. That's right. This guy, can you believe this? this? Amazing. Oh, this is great. So he's going to beat me because sooner or later I'm not going to know when he's going right. to know more. This is great. Gary's going to lose. And that every time thing. Hank gets the right answer, he hits that baby bottle <laughs> filled with vodka. You know, Gary's only hope is that Hank keeps getting drunker. Yeah. But th no, that doesn't That's my hope that I'm going to win. He's as drunk as he's ever been here. All right. No. No way. The time when he Gary Delabate. What was the Who's original name? Gary. Who? Uh. uh the high numbers? Correct. Oh! Did you know that, Hank? Yeah, I did. All right, okay. All right. Hank, who played keyboards on Let It Be? Uh, Billy Preston. Correct! Damn. Damn. All right, come on, Kendra. Howard, you got to pull this out is amazing. some tough questions. Hey, dude, come on, did you know tough. these? These are pretty no, tough. No, I didn't know where Exactly. <laughs> Kendra J, did you know these? Yeah, this but she can't, she can't answer any of the questions. No, no, she's not going to answer. Don't get upset, Hank. We're going to run it fair. All right. All right. All right. <laughs> Gary Delabate, what lead singer was both in the Moody Blues and Wings? Shh. Lead singer in the Moody Blues. Don't say anything. And no, Wings. I but I know it. Shh. Um, Shush, Hank. Shh. Uh, Gary Delabate is up. Give me a second. I can, I got the guy's name. Uh, it's the Irish guy. Hey, hey, Haver. I don't know. I don't know it. All right. Gary, negative one. Hank. Denny oh. Lane. Right. Jesus Christ! Gary, you're in for a drubbing. I'm done. I'm done. Isn't this amazing? It's beyond belief. He's Rain Man of something stupid. He's Rain Man. The guy's loaded. He he. he you can't even get him too drunk. I think he's not drunk. <laughs> he's drunk. Yes, I am. I am this drunk. Is no I can barely stand on this. Uh, All right, on Hank. Seat. The uh, now you get the uh, question. All uh, right. What rock and roll band is mentioned in the song "Smoke on the Water"? Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. That is correct. <laughs> is this amazing? <laughs> hey, come on. What's amazing is we didn't get to it earlier in the show. <laughs> Gary Delabate. 
You ready? Yeah. Okay, okay. <laughs> I love the music. <laughs> let me, let me, I'll, I'll try. I'll, I'll go to some other songs that might be, I mean, some other groups, because most of this is like who and stuff. Okay. All right, here we go. Um, Who had a hit with the song Cars? Gary Newman. That is correct. Yep. Did you know that? Yes. Okay. Don't insult him. I know. Please. <laughs> he knows more than you so far. He's winning. All right, are you ready, Hank? Yes. Okay. Which 60s girlfriend of Mick Jagger recorded their song as tears go by? Mary Ann Faithful. That is correct. <laughs> Gary, go home. I knew that one. No, but see, <laughs> see I can't win now because he's not going to miss any. Right. Ready? It's not my fault. <laughs> <laughs> Only teasing you, Gary. All right. <laughs> All right, go ahead. All right, who's next? All, All right. right, this is uh, this is Gary Delabate. All right. All right. This lefty is the lead guitarist for the Cars. Elliot Easton. That is correct. See, I didn't. That one I didn't know. Damn. Hmm? That's the luck of the draw. Hank, are you ready? Yes. Okay. According to Pearl Jam, his daddy didn't give him affection. Jeremy. Ugh. That's correct. I didn't think he would know that. I didn't Jesus. Think he would, I didn't think he would didn't be current. He current. He's current. Yeah, I think he'd be current. He is current. <laughs> All right, I'm going to give you an album title, Gary. You give me the band, okay? Ooh. Here we go. Damn the Torpedoes. Uh, Tom Petty and the Heartbreakers. That is correct. Hank, music from the Big Pink. The band? Right. I was ready to jump on him. I thought oh, he was it. asking you a question. <laughs> Gary, Disraeli Gears. Uh, Cream. Know. That's right. Wow. Hank? Hank? I know that one, yes. Are you ready? Yeah, go ahead. Zenyatta Mandata. Sleep with Matt? Nope. Wrong. Oh. The score is tied. Of G Gary? The police. That is correct. Oh, I knew that one. Actually, the, if Hank is still ahead by one no, point. No, 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 no. No, they're even. We're they even. should be, but whoever's keeping score is completely we, screwing up. We both up. missed one and got each other's. All right. No, according to this, Hank is still one ahead because yeah. he went first. Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. Okay. All right, I don't know. Seven, six. So now it's, my, now it's my now turn. Now it's your turn. Now you it's your turn. It Who's All right. Turn? Mine's? No, Gary. <laughs> All right. All right. Mine's... Tell me who sang these songs. Are you ready? Yeah. Green Eyed Lady, Gary. Green Eyed Lady. Uh, <laughs> name the group. Don't sing. <laughs> no, we didn't ask you to sing, dude. <laughs> it's not Do You Know the Lyrics. Uh... Oh, Gary. Uh -oh. Your chance to I'm go done. ahead. Right, he's a, uh, Hank, Green Eyed Lady. Sugarloaf. Right. Oh. Oh. Hank, oh. 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 He killed oh. me. Oh, they. Look at him hitting the bottle. Oh. So that proud. Drink. Oh. <laughs> this sport is your sport, Hank. Drinking and trivia. Wow. Look at this drunken so dwarf. Good. So what's the score now? He's not it's angry. now eight to five. Oh. And it's, and it's uh, his turn. And it's his turn. Ready? I'm going to name a song, Hank. Tell me who sang it. You ready? All right. Yeah. Okay. It's go This is going to me, right? This yeah. is going to you. All right. Go ahead. All right. Eyes Without a Face. Billy Idol. Right. Yeah! Oh, my God. Gary Delabate. Eye of the Tiger. Survivor. Correct. He's right. But Thank you're you. still behind. I'll get my ass kicked. Mm. <laughs> who sang this song, Hank? Can't you see? Billy Barty. Uh, no, <laughs> shut up. I know Bill Duke. Can't you see, uh, please? All right, hold on. Oh, uh, I know it's a Southern Rock band. The Outlaws. Wrong. I will take a point on that one with the Marshall Tucker Band. Marshall Tucker Band, and it's Gary's turn. So now, what's the score? It is Hank eight, Gary Delabate seven, Ooh. and it's Gary's turn. Uh oh, another chance to go even with Hank. Gary. All right, Gary. <laughs> Name the drummer in this band. The Cars. Oh my God! <laughs> the drummer of the Cars. That's right. <laughs> uh, not a clue. Uh, okay, Another that's minus point. point. I, have, I have no idea. All right, that's a minus point for you too. Oh. Who is it? David Robinson. All right, name the song, Gary. It's your turn, right? Yes. Okay. Name who sang it, rather. Excuse me. Draw the line, Gary. Who sang Draw the Line? <laughs> Hank, be quiet. Don't look at I, me. Well, I'll throw a guess out because uh, 
Uh, I have no idea. You're going to lose a point anyway. Lose a point. The Allman Brothers. Wrong. The Allman Brothers is incorrect. Hank. Aerosmith. Correct. Oh, Aerosmith. Man. Look at this guy. He <laughs> is trouncing you. Help me up, man. I'm going to fall off the chair. Oh, he's, he's falling off the chair. Back on his chair. <laughs> <laughs> Hank's falling off his chair. <laughs> he kicks my ass, and I got to pick him up. Right. <laughs> Hank is in the lead, eight to five, and it's Hank's turn. This is the. Uh, let's go with one more question All because right. obviously he's better at this. I'm going to give the nickname of some rock stars. All you right. tell me who the rock star is. All right. All right. Hank, the Lizard King. Jim Morrison. Correct. Gary Delabate, the Motor City Madman. The Motor City Madman, uh, Ted Nugent? Correct. Uh, Hank, the Thin White Duke. The David Bowie. David Bowie, that's wow. right. And David Gary. <laughs> David Browie. <laughs> Gary Del Bate, pig pen, pig pen. <laughs> right, I don't Pig pen, for, uh, do I have to know his real name? Or the real name. Pig pen, the guy from the Grateful Dead, the keyboard player, but pig, <laughs> pig pen Markham, I don't know. I don't know. Wrong. <laughs> Ga uh, Hank, what is it? Ron McClendon. Correct. Oh! All right, look, I'm going to stop uh, the contest. It's, it's too much. It's, it's, I, 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 feel like, I feel like Lennox Lewis. <laughs> Gary, you got to be blown out by uh, Hank's knowledge. Absolutely. He knows He knows everything. I mean, you know a lot of stuff, but Hank just knows everything. Yeah, Did no, you it's... feel that you would beat him? No. Oh. No, I knew the other day. He started answering stuff that was really weird. I knew I was doomed to lose. <laughs> I just laugh because I know Hank's so proud of himself that he's going to fall off that chair yeah, and humiliate himself. can't even stay in the chair. <laughs> Hank's now holding his empty bottle, trying to open up his full bottle with his other hand. Yes, because he desperately needs something to quinch his thirst. Yeah. Like that. I'm all right. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. You're far well, from all right. But I'm, Hank, congratulations on beating Gary like that. Have Do you ever, has he ever won anything before? <laughs> what do you think? Yes, the, I have. The short I, lottery. <laughs> Come to think if I have. All Your right. stereo low fidelity. Kendra J, like do you see Hank in a different light now? I think that that was amazing. Right. I, I didn't think he knew that. Would then. you consider him sexually now? No, no, he's a genius of rock and roll. Hank, come sit next to Kendra Jade. Casey, just bring him over to the couch. <laughs> All right, thank you. I'm warning you. He's just talking and talking. Doesn't know he's not on mic. Who cares? <laughs> he's not a professional. <laughs> no, I would like to know what he's saying. I could study his pants all day long. Why? Because they're just. They're not shorts and they're not jeans. They've been specially made and they're just they're just very odd looking. I don't have to wear these. Hank, sit oh down. <laughs> Hank, come sit next to me. Just put him on the couch. Put him on the couch, Case. <laughs> oh, how much does he weigh? That's what I do with my kid when he doesn't listen. I just pick him up and sit him down. <laughs> you should get a stroller for the first try. <laughs> a stroller. <laughs> Casey <laughs> just picked him up and threw him on the couch. <laughs> how bad does Hank know. smell over there? <laughs> Casey, how's Hank smell? <laughs> he what? smells how it, he smells so bad he's really <laughs> a mixture of like vodka and puke <laughs> hank did you brush your teeth this morning i want to sleep <laughs> look at him he is falling asleep and he you beat wanna... you uh gary oh sleep is yeah go ahead go ahead lay down <laughs> he wants to sleep. do you want to sleep look yeah. at him he's nodding uh, you want to sleep <laughs> casey get him a blankie oh he's going <laughs> he's got to lay him down all right <laughs> <laughs> Hank, did you get any sleep last night? Oh my goodness. Yeah, I f kept on falling asleep. And yeah. people he smells like a know. cab's balls. <laughs> uh, well, I had all these chicks coming over to me and Where they were think you? I'm alive. Wait, wait, wait. In He's, the green room. Wait, he can't even... <laughs> no, no, not in the green room. A chicken. He's so drunk. He can't <laughs> move. I've, I've never seen him like this. Hank, <laughs> hey, can you move your arms so that you can get comfortable? <laughs> Help him out. Can he get Run comfortable me. there? Don't you think he's I, used to sleeping he without a comfort? On the he's so loaded. Uh, goddamn uh, <laughs> telephone in which he doesn't know who's, where it's going to. Some, what? Um, he doesn't even know what he's talking about now. I just fall on. Probably somebody's talking to me right now. Not even listening. <laughs> Hank, have, Hank, have you ever in your whole life of drinking, have you ever hallucinated? <laughs> oh, please. When I was a acid? Yeah. No, no, drinking. When you what? <laughs> Uh, oh, maybe on the heroin or something. Like that. I don't know. Is he wetting himself? I, I, no, I do a lot of drugs. He's going to fall. Um, right, don't fall off the couch, Hank. Are you no, sleeping? Hank, I think the no. couch is not wide enough for him to well, sleep. I, <laughs> Hank, you need a night well, night? Well, let me on the floor. I got to get the floor. I got a mat. Hank. I got to get the telephone underneath my back. Hank, do you need a night night? No. <laughs> Wait a minute. Are there Those, headphones I don't like that under shit. his back? What? <laughs> I don't like that. <laughs> He's I rolling just, off the couch. Whoa, whoa. I want to get up the floor because there's a fall on the floor. You want to lay on the floor? All right, come on. You want to lay on the floor? I got a mat. I got a mat there anyway. Hey, can't you get up? <laughs> no. Uh, yes, I can, but nobody's letting me get up. All right, let him get up. Let him get up. Let him get up. Watch the... <laughs> 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 
petting zoo. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Hank is, is like passed out on the couch. <laughs> he is hammered. But do you realize he was this bad off and he beat Gary? All right, help him now, Case. <laughs> <laughs> and lay him down on the floor so he can sleep. Oh, <laughs> oh my goodness, he's listing. Come on, come on, Hank. Get on the floor. Yeah, give him a mat. Doug, you're his manager. We'll help you. We'll help you. Come on, buddy. Come on, buddy. You need to lay down. He's going to drop dead, I swear to God. Are you all right? <laughs> Taking the orange bottle, though. Yeah, I need to move. Put it down. And let him lay down and go to sleep. You need a doctor, Hank? No. 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 All right. No, no, no. I'm not that bad. Okay. Oh, my God. You just didn't get any sleep? Just sit, just sit down. Just sit on your butt. Just sit. Right here, right here, right on this mat. Turn around. I don't think I've ever seen okay. anyone that drunk sit, in my life. Down. Not that short. No. <laughs> no. No, just sit. Sit down, Hank. Doug, what are they supposed to do? Yeah, Doug knows. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> bad boy, bad boy. Oh my goodness. He just laid down on the floor. And on a little mat, it's we like got him on a gym nap mat. time. Is he all right? Oh my god. He's all right. He's out. He snores. He Already. Snores really, really let me see. Let me, see. Let me hear the snore. Give him about a minute. Just listen. <laughs> <laughs> He's gone. He's gone. He, he just, just put his head down. Yeah. He's got like narcolepsy or something. He sleeps like a baby. And he didn't even take his glasses off. He's no. lying there in glass. <laughs> oh my god. I've never Gary, seen this before. This is crazy. Gary, you lost to this mess. <laughs> <laughs> How bad is that? What happens? Does he do this a lot, Doug? I I've never seen this. I, I hope he's all right. Really? Breathing. Another oh. thing he does when he's sleeping, he farts really, really loud. <laughs> oh, so should I put a mic on his you butt? Get a mic on his ass. <laughs> oh, God. You know, I don't know if you heard. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little guy. I hope he. You know what, man? I don't predict a long life for Hank, as you know. I've said that in the past, but we try to get him help. We try to try to get him off the booze. Well, you know what's really weird? I was talking to Doug the other day. Doug, of course, works for us and manages Hank. Yeah. And I said, if, is there a woman? Maybe if you got him a woman. You know, could she get him to stop drinking? And apparently, Hank is madly in love with Doug's wife. Really? And they go out to dinner, and he's very inappropriate. Is it, what does he do? He rubs her back and tells how much he loves her and stuff. Is that right, Doug? He yeah. figures if yeah, Doug he, got her, he's he could in love get with her. her. I took him out to Marla's a bar. Marla's a very good-looking woman. I took him out to a bar, and it was almost uncomfortable. He wouldn't get his paws off of her <laughs> the whole time. He was like rubbing her shoulders, and I was like, you know, it makes him happy. Let him uh -oh. be happy. What was that noise he just made? Shut up. He hears Marla. He's the best. That, that I heard. Why? You know, I would not do anything to. Uh, Are you all right? You just tired? Uh, yeah, I wouldn't do anything to hurt Marla. That's oh, one thing I won't how do. Sweet. Well, would would you marry her? He's a King Kong. Is he asleep? Yes, I kick your ass. I will go. Yeah. Is he asleep while he's talking to you? Or know, Hank, what do you need? You need food or something? What, what's the matter? What time is it? What time is it? It's time for you to go to sleep, I it's, think. It's 1 o'clock in the morning on Saturday. No, it's not. It's 1 o'clock. In... It's not even 1 o'clock. <laughs> you're not that drunk. How the hell can it be 1 o'clock in the morning? I don't know. <laughs> it's February 2010. You're Rip Van Winkle. <laughs> you slept through the last 10 years. I think I know what happened. He, he, you know, he usually stays with Hype at Eric when he's in town. Yeah. And he has been uh, Partying. adamant about not staying with Eric. So I put him in a hotel and, and he was on his own last night. So I told him, you know, he promised me he would eat and go to sleep. I talked to him. I did all that. He probably went out all night hmm. and just partied and drank and sat at the bar. He goes out by himself or just go to a bar? No, he goes to the bar in the lobby. Did you hotel. go to the bar in the lobby? He's like, he has, fr he has friends. He's friends with, there's a piano bar. Up. Let me get up. I, I, I know. Oh, he's Take a had nap. a nap. Right. He's ready to get up now. <laughs> no, no, no. I shouldn't be sleeping here. It's not right. <laughs> well, you can sleep. <laughs> Hank, feel free. You've done a lot yeah, of things rest. that aren't okay. right. We got you a bed. It's okay. Bruce, go ahead. What's on What's on your mind? Sir, how you doing? Hey, man. I'm, uh, I'm calling. I'm worried about what time Hank. is it? Okay. For one, he's a, uh, for him no, being. seriously. Uh, sir? Yeah, we're all worried about Hank, but we can't get him to stop drinking. I know. That's not the thing is that is. Like just now, I was going to tell you, he's going to get up in about two more minutes. Yeah. Okay, which he just did. Go ahead. All right, and it, it's like, it's almost like a narcolepsy. I don't know. Eric's supposed to be and here anyways. It's like... Around, at around this time. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Don't ask me why. I don't know why. What's going on medically, do you know? Gotta get his enzymes checked. Who is this? What is this guy think he's a doctor? <laughs> <laughs> why do you have to get his enzymes checked? Because of his liver and his kidneys. Don't get a broom. Oh, please. His liver and kidneys are shot. He's, he's a... I know. That's what's making him fall asleep, like not that. sleep. Well, he doesn't like me, so he doesn't want to talk to me. Who are you uh, talking about? Don't shoot him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Why did he want to stay with Eric? 
Because he, he, I guess he babies him too much, uh, which I, I don't mind it. He was just so adamant. He's like, if, if I had to stay with Eric, I'm not coming. I heard I heard that uh, Eric makes him sleep in the closet. Is that true? No. What? Is it? I hope not. That's what That's Eric told me. Yeah, he sleeps no. in the closet. I would never stay at his house. I made him sleep in the closet once. You managed manage him? Yeah, I yeah, No, and it wasn't really a clock. Proud of that, real what proud. Does that entail? Like, what sort of gigs do you actually turn down? <laughs> uh, no. Pornos. People that don't play enough down. money. Pornos and dwarf toss. Hey, hey, dude, what do you want me to do with this guy? I just, uh, try, to, try to get him, uh, get his enzymes checked. All he right. probably hasn't had his enzyme checked in at least five years. What can we do? No, to, that's not That's not true. true. We've, we've the only time I've seen him. this before is when, remember we took him to the dentist and he passed out? Yeah. yeah. What, the way we uh, we made that better is we just gave him food and he was fine. So right, I know he probably guys... didn't eat. He tells he told me he ate today. I know he didn't. He he's very yes, sick. So. What'd you eat? I don't, we'll uh, get food in him. He'll like be fine. some eggs, but yeah, that well, was about, I didn't eat about much. to eat, buddy. It doesn't right. even matter if he's right. bread. Hank likes pop tarts, don't he? Is his favorite? That's, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what do you like to eat, Hank? It's like a baby. I already like fruity pebbles. All right, all right. We're gonna go feed him. And yeah. I'm telling you, we've sent him to doctors. It doesn't okay. do any good. He just... sounds like his. Oh, oh he's going Mark again. Left, yeah, his... What happened? He's I'm just waiting to die. Over. All right, sir. What happened, Hank? I don't know. Some... No, but I didn't say. I wasn't the one who said. Oh, somebody else. No, we said because he almost tipped over. Oh. He was fell right flat. No, I was just getting off the. Uh... Listen, McCall. Can't, can't, you, can't you have sex with him? Maybe he'll stop drinking. He doesn't know he's falling over. Hey, Marlo's pregnant with your kid, Hank. <laughs> Doug's mad at you. Yeah. I couldn't. I couldn't. Even I couldn't do that to Doug. All right, all right. You couldn't do all right I got to take a break anyway. We got to do some news. It's getting late. We can't watch Hank anymore. What time is it? Well, you, unless you want to get out of here at some point. It's like having a fish. <laughs> <laughs> Just watch them. It's because like kids who were lucky enough to have like a monkey. Right. Maybe they'll have a crab. Just keep them off the furniture. <sighs> Hank, you want to go back to sleep? That was funny. What, sleeping? Yeah. <laughs> you were snoring and you were farting. And I was. I don't remember. <laughs> I'm not even gonna mention that. I don't remember that stuff. Congratulations on winning uh, the big competition, Hank. You're amazing. <laughs> no, you're about to compete with Gary. That I have to. Do I can't well. believe how s faced you are, and you beat Gary in a Je in a Jeopardy competition. He didn't beat me. He crushed me. He crushed you. He really did. He did. <laughs> he can still answer more. Well, questions. I just he said, dude. <laughs> yeah, right. He can beat me what, now. What happened? What happened? And that's. What happened? It's like a puppet. <laughs> <laughs> you're so loaded. Were you drinking all night in the hotel? Tell the truth. I was drinking and sleeping on it north, so it was like a combination of uh, both. But you didn't get much sleep. In other words, I didn't know what I was doing. Imagine you wake, <laughs> you you sleep, and then you wake up to drink. What do you do? You go down to the bar, and they give you like a glass. Like instead of drinking out of a little baby bottle, you drink out of a glass and stuff. Something like that. Uh, I had them call me up on uh, for like a like the last call thing. What? And all that type of stuff. And they call him to let him know when last call is coming. Well, they call your room. Something like that, yeah. It's always something like that. They call your room and let you know when this last call? Yeah. <laughs> That's an important call. And I'm the last one there. <laughs> Heck, what's in the bottle? You drink you drink vodka? That's the deal? No, I always put soda in it. I, I, can't, I can't drink... <laughs> Gary, no, no, seriously, what's I can't... In the, what's in the soda? Vodka. Oh. Yeah, he, he can't, can't drink, drink straight, straight vodka. Right. But... I think I you're turning I'm, Kendra Jade off with your, you know... You oh, I can drink Kendra... <laughs> Straight right. up. We got to uh, we got to take a break. Uh, Hank, you'll go eat something, and we'll be back right after. Can I work. just uh, stay here and see Kendra naked? Take a nap. You want to, Kendra? Would you show him your naked body? G give him sure. a thrill. Will you? All right, thank you, Kendra. You promise not to fall asleep. You won't fall asleep. Here, she's I gonna show you. Look, look oh, at those. Oh, oh Look at that. I'm in love. <laughs> you're all better now. Hey, look at Way you. Now you're sobering up. Yeah, I'm yeah. definitely. I'm, in fact, I I am awake now. This I got my second wind. How's that? Nice? You just showed you everything. Nice. This is great. Yeah. All right. Hello, this is Michael Kane, and you're listening to Bowie 25. Oh, blimey. Only on Howard 101. Bloody hell. One, two, three. That was the wrong count, obviously. Oh, all right. When it Wait a feels minute. like the world is on your shoulders And all of the madness has got you going crazy It's time to get out, get out into the street Where all of the action, you're right there at your feet Well, I know a place where we can dance all night away 
New Jersey workers plan to rally in Trenton against the government shutdown. Eyewitnesses reporter Ken Rosado is live in Jersey City with more for us, Ken. And good morning to you, Lori. Good morning, everyone. You can see behind me, in fact, many of the state workers gathering here in Jersey City outside the state office building. There, the state office building. The state office building. You're listening to Buoy 25 on Howard 101. See how one Baba Blunder changed Stern Show history. I guess if you don't know who I am, I do look like a stalker. <laughs> the, the dummy. Like Gary Puppet wants to tell me something. August Fool, Gary. <laughs> Shut up, you piece of wood. Fa, 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 fee. I look back at my life and I look back at my resume, and here's my crowning achievement. <laughs> 
Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. <laughs> Baba Bowie. This is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie to go. All weekend long on Howard 101. Good morning, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Boy, I got nothing to say. Yeah. Yeah, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, how you doing, man? What's happening? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Hey, it's good to be with you. It's good to be anywhere, actually. Well, if you're nowhere. Right. That's where we are. We're nowhere. What a good morning it is, because ratings. Yes, ratings. Yeah. All the newspaper articles couldn't say anything bad about us, because, you know, one thing that shuts them up is the ratings. Yeah. What, well, they don't splash headlines either. No, They're no. Like... <laughs> they can never do it. I think it should be front page news, but <laughs> it always seems when we do bad, it's more of a headline. Like stern tumbles, stern falls. Right, that's when you get the bold black lettering. Yeah. But they didn't say anything bad. No, no names? Either? No, they didn't even call me any, Not even Newsday called me names. That guy who hates me in Newsday. <laughs> even he had to shut up. <laughs> you know, it's like, you know, you can't argue with big numbers. Well, don't they ever begin to feel that they're maybe out of step? You know, I yeah. thought about this the other day. Yeah. You know, instead of bashing us all the time, maybe they ought to just think, you know, a lot of people listen or watch this guy. All right. Maybe we're wrong. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it must be kind of weird when you, you bash me all year and then you realize everyone who reads your newspaper digs us. Yeah. You know, it's like, boy, am I out of step or... And I don't even think the reviewers who hate us, I don't even think they hate us. I think that they're supposed to act like they hate us. It's become a thing. Yeah. They can't write something nice. They've been doing it for so long. It's like habit. And if you write something nice, is anyone going to read it? You know, that's the other thing. True. You know. Got something there. Yeah. However, they never say that about Robert Redford. That's true. <laughs> but I suppose if there were certain reporters who wrote nice stuff, I would tell them more stuff so they'd have more stuff to write. I would give them... Yeah, you'd be more amenable to... Uh, interviews and stuff. Interviews or making statements about certain things. Mm, then want. again, maybe I wouldn't. I tell you what was funny reading your year in quotes uh, uh, around the country. Mine? Yeah, you know, various things like, you know, the Rolling Stone thing. I finally got around to oh, reading yeah, Rolling that was good, Stone wasn't that it? month and what you said about rock and roll. Yeah. <laughs> Is rock and roll dead? Well, we we wrote a whole bunch of answers to a bunch of Rolling Stone questions. I was kind of disappointed that they only used one. A lot yeah. of them were real good. Really? Yeah. Did we say that? And and um you know, I don't know if we say... I, I think I have it at home, actually. I could bring that in, but... That's a funny question to ask, Howard. Did yeah. you save it? Yeah, of course I save it. I save everything. Did I, can I, do I know where I save can it? Can you find it? Yeah, the that's other... the problem. What I meant was, did we give it to Gary? Uh, no, nah, no. We, we weren't that smart. <laughs> Believe me, Gary doesn't know where anything is either. Yeah, did we give it to Gary to throw away? As disorganized as I am, Gary's worse. <laughs> Gary goes... I, I had him over vacation working for me, so I call him up and I go... He goes, you know... We're missing a whole bunch of logs. He goes, I know we had them because we log pretty much everything we do. He goes, I know they exist, but I don't know where they are. So I, go, I said to myself, you know, boy, isn't it great to have an assistant <laughs> who is as helpful. stupid as I am? You know, the, the one area that I'm good in is being on the air. 
<laughs> his area is supposed to be that he knows where junk is. Yeah, and he keeps you together off the air. Fred evidently did a whole bunch of handwritten logs when we first got to WXRK, K-Rock. Right. And uh, Gary seems to have misplaced them. That's why we have him. Yeah, but that's okay. <laughs> that's Gary. I love it how he gets on. He won't take responsibility. I know they exist. Yeah, he was trying to say, like, maybe I have them, but right. I know I don't. Why would I have those? But it is his responsibility to know where they are. Yeah, but he doesn't know where anything is. He really doesn't know where anything is. <laughs> I swear he doesn't. He is, is as disorganized as me, but his gym bag is very organized. But he, what makes me laugh is yeah. he's always saying, I have my file. He must have three files. He says he has files, but he really doesn't. He <laughs> three can't, files I, with nothing in them. And then when you ask him for stuff, he goes, you know, there's a lot of different stuff. I have to l have time to look for it. No, no, you're supposed to have that at your fingertips. <laughs> That's the whole idea, having an assistant. Oh, you, he's got a file drawer in there. There's nothing in it. Yeah, I wonder if our lives would be any easier if I like fired him and got a secretary. Because you know they're real good at filing stuff. But and finding stuff. But it wouldn't they... be. The cat, they be ba ba boo. <laughs> <laughs> but he knows I'll never fire him. That's that's, <laughs> that's the problem. He knows I'm too nice a guy. Mm. As bad as I get at him, I don't fire him. If you could, if you could take the time to teach him everything he needs to know, then he could do it. I know. <laughs> what I, you're hoping is that one day he'll just figure out how I should do that. Yeah, but there's even certain things that I can't figure out. Like, when it comes to that mundane junk that he's supposed to be good at, mm -hmm. he's supposed to figure out systems. No, but you know what it's like? If you tell Gary you should have a file on this, then he'll go make the file. Oh, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but then he'll forget where it is. Or he won't use it. And it'll, right. only, it'll only last a couple of days. Well, that's true, because you've been telling him to follow you around with a yellow legal pad hey, for you want, years. You want, to see me yell at, you want to see me yell at Gary about something he's probably not doing that he's supposed uh, to do, but if I don't remember to tell him? Okay. Right, right, right. Hey, Gary, come on in. <laughs> oh, he's too funny. Hey, Gary. Baba Booey. <laughs> I mean, Baba Booey. <laughs> That's right. You hey, have to hey, call Gar him by his name. Hey, watch this, Robin. All right. Hey, Gary. Hey, boss. How you doing? How you doing this morning? Happy New Year. <laughs> Happy New Year. <laughs> <laughs> you know, my my, Happy New Year. My New Year's resolution is not to take you guys so seriously. And not to get so upset. Right, that's right. Why should you get upset? How long do you think that'll last? Right. Why get upset? Let me get upset sure, for us. Right. Okay, there you go. <laughs> my New Year's resolution. <laughs> Don't make any resolutions. Right, they never work. That's right. Do you, um, on our computer, mm -hmm. does, does the operator like John now, does he sign in on the computer? What do you mean, does he sign in? Does he... Does he log his name in every day that he is the operator on the computer? No. Nope. What? No. He uh, will now, but... How long ago did I tell you to do that? How long ago did I tell you to start doing that? Probably right before Christmas. And I think I've mentioned it three or four times. No, you probably mentioned no, it No, I've once. mentioned it three or four times. I've, in your mar yeah, probably, you pro you're right, you probably right. have. You okay. Probably, okay, okay, see you later. All right. All right, thank you. Okay. All right. Repeat after me before you leave. I... I... I am... Am... Disorganized. Disorganized. All right. Baba Booey. This year... This year will be will be the same as last year. <laughs> everything everything is lost. <laughs> I am lost. <laughs> Repeat that. I am lost. Say I am lost. I am lost. You have no idea how many times I have recommended to him <laughs> that he you know get that going. You know what the problem is? Whenever we go through our logs, we can't tell who filled them out. And so if we have a question, ask, yeah. so I said, th we've gone through this a hundred times. I said, have John log in his name. All he's got to do is, as he's typing, type in John. <laughs> this right, is, hi, the well, first thing he types in at 6 in the morning, hi, I am John Melendez. But John's not the only one who'll be on the computer today. Right. Or so hi, I am no, Mike. Then Michael sign, come on, then John will come can back. I make an idea, can I make a suggestion? Sure. Put a sign by the computer. When you sign on, sign your name. Right, but so if John's on till 7 o'clock, right. right, and then Mike comes on, Mike should so sign on at 7. So he writes John off, Mike on 7. Right, and then when they, and so if they switch back and forth, that's how they should do it. See? Yeah, you're so right. Right. There you go. See what I meant? We've already you had this discussion. That. We've had this, but you see, if I could just say to him, Gary, I want people signing on the computer, he would jot that down, and then he'd say to himself, okay, is, that's, but I just wanted to show you. See, the whole thing goes kablooey. I'm going to mm. tell you how his mind works. But you want to know why? You go, you know, but you want to know why I go kablooey? Why? Because I'm sitting at home yesterday and I'm like, I got my mind on a million things, and I go, you know, every once in a while it pops into my mind. I go, I bet you Gary hasn't hasn't done that with the computer because I'm going through these logs. And I'm having trouble. Right. So I said. Uh, well, to be I honest said, with you, we've I been said, gone. I, we haven't me. done anything yet. Okay. So, so I, I haven't said, missed anything. 
Right. I'm sure. I haven't. We haven't uh, missed anything. Yet. Gary, John Gary, John don't even start yesterday. with me. I'll go crazy. Please. You have missed a few things. Okay. So I say to myself, I better go get a pen and paper and write this down. <laughs> then I say to myself, if I got to sit here and write this down, this is on the third time, and I write, remember to tell Gary again. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going, does this make my life any easier? No. I should have to say it once, and Gary should be so frightened of losing his job that he goes, I better not screw this up. I'm not good with you. I've, well, let you, I've been too lax. Let me just say this. Yeah. Let me just say this. is yeah. Why don't you? You say everything hardly else. Need yeah, your go defense, ahead. But I'm going to say it anyway. Right. See, what happens with Gary is you say, Gary, have John sign in on the computer. Right. And then it dies. And then, no, no, no. Hmm. Gary says, okay, I'll have John sign in on the computer. But John's not the only one who signs in on the computer, right. uh, logs on the computer. And his mind just can't handle that. <laughs> it so overloads. He throws the, out the yeah. entire suggestion. Yeah, I think that's what happened. You overloaded. <laughs> Instead of saying, wait, if he's not the only one, how can I get it so that everyone who has to sign on? But he doesn't do that for no, me. No, he throws it away. Because it's, it's too difficult. I don't want to get into Gary Bish. I just right. want to show Robin that I can pull like <laughs> lots of things out. But I had like Gary help me over the vacation, and he did. <laughs> and and he did what exactly what I told him to do. Yes. I said, Gary, go pull a bunch of these tapes and then bring them out to me. And you know, but that's sort of like where the initiative stopped. Right. Like whatever I said, he did, and that was it. Like he didn't say to me, I'm going to come out the next day and organize all this, or take, let me pull all these tapes out right now and I'll organize them for you. <laughs> Not that I expected him to. You understand? He just did just enough to say he helped me. Yeah, but you know how I said the other day that PR Never person knows. was running around. Yeah. Uh, wor Justine Bateman hadn't said anything. Right. But she was like, oh, Justine's not happy. I got to get something going here. Right. She's constantly watching Justine and thinking before well, Justine reacts. Well, she's such a big star. <laughs> and you know, Justine like, has nothing to do Justine all day. Justine Bateman gets this, and it's nothing to do. I realize I've hired low-level people. <laughs> Listen, when you got sorry, Jackie. When you got me, but even ja even Jackie will agree to that. I mean, let's be honest. When you got me, <laughs> you were not. You got you got a paid intern. Yeah. Is what you got. So you're you saying got... that now that I have a salary? Well, no, I developed. I grew with the job. <laughs> yeah. Get out of here, really. Seriously, you are very annoying. <laughs> really, Gary, you're so disorganized. What's that? <laughs> he grew with the job. The only thing that grew is your teeth. <laughs> Ever since I hired you, they get larger and larger. <laughs> like being, working with a beaver. I am not. I am, <laughs> what happened to your New Year's resolution? I'm, I'm doing is that fine. out the window? No, no, yeah, you're no, doing no, all right. No, doing yeah. What's uh, oh, New Year's resolution? What's your New Year's resolution? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> all I'm going to say is I am not that. I realize I am not as organized as I should be, but right. when you're dealing you're not with four people who aren't even near organized. No, but what about oh, when I please. what about when I say stuff like, "Well, Rob, four people. Robin doesn't uh, Robin, ask you for organization. Robin doesn't ask for anything. That's right. All Robin can do is sit so on her perch. Already. All Robin can do is sit on her perch and, you know, <laughs> in hindsight, tell me what I did wrong. Right. Ah! Well, <laughs> which she does well. You do do that well, Robin. Right. <laughs> Repeat after me. I am in. You are I am. <laughs> disorganized. Disorganized. Yeah, I can't right. even get that right. <laughs> Everything is lost. Everything is lost. I am I, lost. I am lost. All right, very good. This year will be the same as last year. <laughs> there you go. Oh. Yeah, I remember that. Oh. <laughs> there will be absolutely no change. No, I wouldn't. Po I couldn't possibly get between what? you and Howard. I would never ask you for anything, Gary. What's that? <laughs> I'm sorry. What is it? I mean, Robin thinks I'm nuts for hiring you. I just want you to know that. No, I've grown to love Gary now. No, everybody <laughs> loves Gary. I, but Gary should be our friend. That's we right. We should go to parties with he Gary. just hang out with us. Right. <laughs> he shouldn't be working for us. This show's way too successful for we Gary. We hire Gary so he can hang out with us. Go to what party? Why do we have to pay for friends, essentially? <laughs> And here I'm paying Fred to be my friend, and he won't even talk to me. <laughs> He's not even a good friend to me. I know. I have I'm to Rick hear Carter about Fred's life from other people. Fred, repeat after me. I? This year will be the same as last year. <laughs> oh, no, it won't. No, good. Thank you. It uh, gives me hope. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> oh, my goodness. I have to repeat after me. Everything is lost. <laughs> <laughs> From now on, I'm only paying Fred when he talks to me. <laughs> Pay him by the word. Yeah. So he'll get wordy. He would have made nothing last year <laughs> if I paid him for how many words he said to me. I think last year, the one sentence he said to me was, uh, how? Uh, I have to go to the dentist. <laughs> 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 oh. I chose my worst character. Oh. <laughs>
Oh, uh, how? Oh, uh, how? I have to leave early. Uh, <laughs> something's come up. What is it? I uh, can't talk about it. <laughs> See, okay. Like what kind of people? What can I say? All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so what are you going to do? You going to go back and? Uh, but you see, it's, it's already it's already become a major undertaking for me to get you to do this. See, well, things have got to go easier this year. I think that should be the resolution that you know things in the Howard Stern organization go easier. Maybe that's a tactic, though. Maybe it's he work, slows down. It's a, right, it's a, it's work, a work slowdown. <laughs> it's, it's seriously, Gary, for what purpose? Wait, I seriously, know Gary, why. I've got a list of stuff at home that I, I say I better ask Gary if he did this. It's like a checklist. You got to go through every day. What did I ask Gary yesterday? And even though in your mind you are now convinced that I only asked you to do this once, we've talked about it three or four times. Okay. Okay. Just so you know. All right. Now I want to know what I want to hear Robin's reasoning on why I would do why I would slow down what I'm going to do. No, 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 no. This. Not necessary, just, Robin. No, not necessary. All right. I, I was only talking to Howard. You should. And by the way, this wasn't meant to be Gary bashing this morning. I just wanted I wanted to show you just how at any point. at any minute, like tomorrow, I could come in and give you another example. <laughs> Of stuff. I know what she means by a work slowdown. What she means is he knows if he accomplishes 10 things this week, you'll expect him to accomplish 10 things next week. Whereas if he accomplishes seven things this week, you only expect I just want to say one week. thing to Gary. I swear on a stack of Bibles. Oh. I don't expect you to accomplish 10. Well, maybe I do. You know, maybe, you know, have, maybe there's something to that. Listen, I have Gary, no, I understand now. Okay. But I have no. You're a dock worker. I don't sit there and say, <laughs> All right. oh, Howard gives me too much or we're doing 10 things. I don't sit there you know and what it number is? them. Exactly. You're like a retarded guy. You're just like, you, you're like, you know, I don't understand. That's all. I do what you. You know what? I think I load you up with a lot of things and some of them get done and some of them don't. I do what you give me, but I don't sit there and right. say, oh, I'm, this is too much work. I'm but not But initiative do it. should be your, your main thing this year. Mm -hmm. Initiative. Like all of a sudden saying, hmm. Yeah, I know how it only asked me to do this, but this is what I'm really gonna do. I'm I have, go a, I have a step further. I'm gonna go a step further, <laughs> and you'll see your job will go. Uh, you, you will be that much more valuable to the organization. Mm. You will be totally valuable to me to the point where even if I lose my job, I'm gonna have to have you around me. <laughs> what fun that will be! Yeah, <laughs> I got to admit, when I lost my job at NBC, I missed the little pecker. <laughs> All right, a little Baba -ba bashing this morning. Baba -ba Booey. Baba -ba Booey. Baba -ba Booey. All right. Uh, I got a Baba -ba Booey, by the way. Good, good. Right. Baba Booey. From your girlfriend? Baba no, no, no. I, uh, I, right before we went away, I did that animation cell you know, thing down in Washington. Yeah. You hosted a animation show? Right, yeah. right. Animation cell. Uh, and yeah. what happened? What you happened? Got I was paid Baba Booey and some cash. And you were paid in Baba Booey. And some cash. Oh, boy, you are oh, a thick you. headed. You, you went all the way down in Washington and got a Baba Booey got a picture. Fake painting. <laughs> yeah. I, got I a went to uh, the, I was in Orlando. So I went to one of those places where they actually have cells and then they have yeah. those animation fake cells. Things. Yeah. And I saw the difference in price for a real painting right. from a cell that was actually used in the movie right. to one of those things Gary had. I see. So. <laughs> right. What was the difference in price? Gary's essentially paying yeah. five or six hundred dollars. <laughs> Gary. Track. Gary, go pay your mortgage with that stupid Baba Booey. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see the landlord's face. Yeah, I got equity Because bills. a real yeah. cell goes for like five thousand dollars. Excuse me, we are in a time of recession. Can I pay you with my Baba Booey? <laughs> then you'll see what the thing's worth. Baba Booey. Baba Could Booey. I use my art collection? For collateral. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Baba Booey. Art is only as worth Baba as much Bowie. as it is worth to you. Oh, there you what? Go. <laughs> <laughs> I see poster. <laughs> All right. Go to commercial Baba before Bowie. I screw up my Baba resolution. Bowie. All right. For Barry, Barry, the, 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 the big. Right, I am very fucking stupid. I'm an idiot. What do you want, a cookie? You little piece of shit. Presents What Does Baba Booey Mean to Me? Hey, this is Jerry Miner from Unbreakable Kimmy Smith. 
What Baba Booey means to me is the affection of the show. When you call him Baba Booey, it makes you so personable. It makes it like that's the thing that makes it seem like Gary's part of my family. It's a nickname for him. And it's also Baba Booey is something I grew up with too as a little kid with El Cabong. So it's even more endearing. And it makes me like Gary more to call him Baba Booey. It makes him, it makes him almost like a, like a pet. <laughs> monkey. Anyway, that's what I love about Baba Bowie. Happy 20th anniversary. This is Bowie 25 on Howard 101. See how one little mistake changed sports history. McElroy. Baba Bowie! 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 This is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie to go. All weekend long on Howard 101. No, but we've always had a great relationship with Z, and uh, he called us and said, let's do something else. You know, let's make a new project together. So we got together and, and came up with this idea. We're proud of it. It's going to scare you. Um, it's a lot of fun. It's a, it's a silly goof. It's a, sort of an homage to Baba Bohai. Mm-hmm. Oh, I didn't grow up with that in Canada. We don't have Baba Bohai in Canada. Yeah. Well, you must know the old Baba Bohai uh, Haunted house shows they used to do. Oh, yeah. Is, are these going to be specials that you continue with Adult Swim? Because obviously a lot yeah. of people miss your shows. Yeah, we're going to do a special for every um, holiday. No. Oh. Thanksgiving is called Fla Fla Flunky. No way. <laughs> yeah. Are you really going to have, so you can come on our show every time you have a big special for yes. So, yes. Well, let me do this now. We have a lot to get to, and uh, certainly I want to get to all of it. Uh, the Bowie songs. Let let me uh, um, let me get through that. The the five thousand dollar grand prize. We put that up a couple of months ago for the best Baba Bowie song parody, and now it's time to to bring it down to five songs. We have to vote. So I'm going to introduce to you now. Uh, are we bringing everyone in at once? Okay, we're bringing everyone in at once. Here is uh, Matt, Yoros, Josh. Uh, Ham Hands Bill, you know, and Brian. <laughs> wow. There are the guys, and I'll get everyone in here, and we'll get some microphones going, and before you know it, you'll be talking to the entire gang. This looks like an audition for the next big boy band. In sync. In stink. In stink. All right, I like that. All Lakers right. fan, look at you. Yeah, yeah. All right, which, which guy is Matt? There's Matt. Okay, hey, Matt, how you doing? How's it going, Howard? Now, what is that, wireless or hardwired? Hardwired A. Oh, my goodness. Well, I don't hear him on hardwire A. Is that hardwire or wire? Hello? Hardwire. Hey. It is a hardwire. I see the wire. Can you hear him? No. Hey. Hello? 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 B's Yours working. works. Give him a... Scott. A is not working. I guess it was... <laughs> Someone remind Scott we're going to use these microphones every, every day. day. Every hey, day. How you doing, brother? Good, man. All right, Matt. You produced the song called Carmina Baba Bowie. Is that right? Mm. Carmina Bowie. Carmina Bowie. Oh, wow. And uh, had you ever done anything like this before? Bowie song? Uh, no, I thought about it, uh, yeah. but it really took the contest for me to uh, get into it and get one done. So, Are you a musical kind of guy? Do you, I am. Do you yeah. play instruments? Play instruments, guitar, oh, stuff like that. Is he working in the music business? Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm kind of in the business, sure. What do you do? I do engineering and production and that All kind right. of stuff. So right. uh, It took you three to four hours to make this song, you say? About that. Okay, and uh, what's the hardest part about making a Baba Booey song parody? Uh, for me, it was all about song choice. Just really about picking the best song. All right, and so, you only entered once. This is it, one this song, is this it. is it. Okay, here we go. Uh, you're married guy? Uh, uh, no. <laughs> Single guy? Single guy. Single guy, you get laid a lot or what? I do all right. You do okay. I can see you, nice looking guy. Why Dude, not? you win this, we're going to roll together, me and you, brother. All right, That's tonight. Right. All right, so <laughs> I'm going to play your song. Of course, I don't even know where your song is, but I'll find it. Here we go. This is Carmina Bowie or Carmina? Carmina. Carmina Bowie, okay. Isn't it great looking at Bowie while you do it? It's unbelievable. It's an amazing visual. (laughs) (laughs) She's laughing at it. She likes it. It's funny. How many singers are on this? Uh, It's me. 
a bunch wow. of times. Just doubled and doubled and doubled. How many wow. times did you, like, is that 10 times? 16, yeah. maybe 20. Wow. Because, wow. yeah, he sounds like a choir. Oh, no. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Fucking jackass horse breath. You're angry, aren't Fucking you? Fucking smelly. <laughs> Did you ever envision a video with this? We could do a music video, sure. Yeah, yeah. you ever have any ideas on that? What Gary would be doing during this song? I'm sure it would be pretty ridiculous. Ridiculous. <laughs> I, I envision an opera where a fat woman is riding me, the horse tooth jackass. <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah. All right. Well, there it is. That's Beautiful. our first entry Thank and you. one of the five finalists. I see gladiator buoys fighting during that, you know, <laughs> swords and, you know, real muscular men. 300 buoy. Yeah. <laughs> so that is Matt Bob. Gladiator buoy. And uh, I ask all of you in the room to uh, think about that song and consider it as the winner. Because, as you know, the winner gets $5,000. What are you going to do with the 5000 should you win, Matt? Um, well, my first idea was to uh, give it to Jason to help out with his wedding. I felt really bad about him <laughs> really? last week. But uh, wow. I, I thought better of it. I thought better of it, and uh, I'll keep it for myself. So. All right. <laughs> That's a very good song, by the way. Nice job. Yeah. Thank you. You know, if you ever make a video to that, I see like a giant Baba Booey, almost like uh, in those Japanese films where uh, Godzilla stomps <laughs> on the city. He could come stomping through the studio and destroy it with his feet. Yeah. And then his, he could breathe out fire, a whole thing. It's yeah. epic. Epic. Okay. <laughs> you say your name is Yoros, contestant number two, right? That's right. Yoros. What is where that? Are you uh, Greek? From? Yeah, it's Greek. I'm from Cyprus. Yeah, oh. can you, uh, you guys know it? You were born in Cyprus? Mm hmm. Uh -huh. So your parents are real Greeks, huh? Yeah, they still live there and everything. Oh, no kidding. How'd you mm -hmm. end up here? Well, I came for university, uh -huh. and then I just stayed to work. What uh, universidad did you go to? I, uh, I went to Penn State for my first degree. Okay. What degree I, did you get? In mass communication. No kidding. How All many right. degrees do you have? Well, then I got a master's at Ohio University, well, which is where you. Uh, you guys were talking about it, where Jason's mother went to university. All right. When All do right. you start working in life? <laughs> yeah, yeah school. going to school forever? What do you have uh -huh. your master's in? Who are you, Van Wilder? <laughs> your father's like, uh, yeah, when you start fishing like me. <laughs> father's like, Yoros, when you work, no more school. Come I back am, to village. I am poor fisherman in <laughs> Cyprus. Now, I've been working in D.C. for two years. What have you been doing? Uh, I work in foreign relations. Foreign relations? Really? Excellent. All right. You with You're the CIA, here? FBI? Who are you with? Let's leave it at that. We'll leave it at that. Oh, All right. Wow. Oh, oh you All right. <laughs> now, you made Baba Blues Brothers. I like this. I like your singing on it very much. Uh, how long did it take you to make this song? You know, it took me about two minutes. Like, the inspiration came, <laughs> yeah. and then I just... Just That's, went for it. You out. know, some of the greatest songs in history were <clears throat> written in two minutes, honestly. Right. You know, uh, well, one guy works on something for four hours, you work on it for two minutes. Doesn't matter, you're in the top five. Right. Doesn't matter how long you worked on something. And uh, let's see. Um, um, let, let's listen to your song. Why not? Here we go. This is, um, you call it Blues Brother Bowie, no, right? Baba Blues Brothers. Oh, Baba Blues <laughs> Brothers. Okay, here we go. <laughs> nice job. Hello. You know what I I I think of that song Gary has just done something incredibly crazy in the studio, something stupid. Right. I've yelled at him, and then bam, Fred hits that, and I could see it Those going over Those are usually bait. the best ones. Yeah, yeah see, I, the way, that song's really uh, representative of one type of genre, which is the, the only lyrics to that song are Baba Booey. Right. That's right. And he figured out a good way to do it. Yeah, it's funny, and your voice is funny. Right. Uh, it's good. You got a girlfriend? Yeah, she's in the green room. No kidding. Yeah, v uh, congratulations. Usually most guys who write Baba Booey songs do not have girlfriends. <laughs> American? She's, she's American? She's uh, Greek-American. She was born here. Do you have to marry a Greek? Is that sort no, of a thing? No, she's actually the first Greek girl I've ever dated. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. Are you getting in her pants or are you still courting her? Yeah, I'm in her pants. Oh, yeah. you're in her pants. Nice. Right, okay. So, I mean, you... a lot of, you sure it's your girlfriend and not a chick you promised you'd take to the studio just for a day. Yeah, right? we can prove it. If you guys... I believe it. What, are you going to do her right here? I don't want to see it. What are you doing? You're going to give it to her right in front of us. <laughs> not, Why not? Not, to get any two, not to get any sexual stereotypes, but I don't want to see two Greek people prove they're fucking. <laughs> right. Do you support the reunification of Cyprus? Of course. You 100%. do. All right. Okay. All right. Is that a big issue? Of course. I yeah. didn't know it was a part. <laughs> well, you got to follow politics in the world. Got to read the news, Gary. Right. 
Right. What about the stereotype that Greek women are into anal? Do you find mm. that to be true? Yeah, like 99%. 99%? Is that, is that true? Yeah. No <laughs> kidding. Oh, wow. I do want to meet your girlfriend in a second. Uh, uh, let me Back meet the girlfriend. The let me see her. Yeah, I, he says 99% of Greek women are into anal. I want to meet her. And when are you going to get the Greek dream of the diner? <laughs> He's not into being in a diner. No. He's a good foreign relations guy. He's Let me a, meet her. Yeah. Oh, you're yeah, doing all right. Wow. <laughs> oh, you you're, you're not bad looking at all. <laughs> and you are Greek, I take it. Yes. Oh, you're hoping he wins, I bet. Of course. Yes. And he says he gets into your pants. Nice. Is he right about that? Do I look like a happy lady? You do look like a happy lady. <laughs> you uh, what scared. You, just uh, verify for me. 99% of women, Greek women, are into anal. Is that true? <laughs> Greek women and men? Is that right? Sure. Well, 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 you enjoy this, this oh, anal? <clears throat> no comment. All right. But I'll take it uh, 99%. You might be in that. I don't think you're in the 1%. Who knows? Well, look at you getting laid. How'd you get her? She's hot. Yeah, we just met. You met her? Where you meet her? Uh, at work, actually. You're going to marry her? Uh, I don't know. We haven't talked about it. <laughs> you in love with him? We've we only been dating like uh, three, four months. So. You in love with her? Sure, why not? Sure, why not? Are you in love? Oh, she goes... Four months. <laughs> Five months. <laughs> well, you in love with this guy or what? I love him. You do love him? Mm -hmm. Oh, look at this romance. And by the way, you're wearing no bra. I noticed that. I I, oh, you are wearing a bra. Who knew? <laughs> Good for you. All right. Well, nice to meet you, and Good let's see what you. happens. All right. All right. Congratulations on that. Let's meet Josh now. Josh wrote and produced Law and Bowie, the Law and Order. Yep. Oh yeah. Uh, he thinks. Uh, what What are your chances of winning this contest? Do you think uh, you have a good? You've heard the other contestants. Yeah. I mean, it's pretty stiff competition, but uh, good as chance as anyone else, I guess. And you work in the music business, right? Yeah, I'm a I'm a recording engineer and editor. Okay. And uh, you. Uh, Took a long time to make this, or is this one of those quickies? Couple hours. Couple hours. What inspired you? What made you come up I with this concept? It just popped in my head, and it yeah. just seemed to fit so perfect, because I just pictured a bunch of marching Garys. Like. <laughs> marching <laughs> Garys, we should think about <laughs> yeah. it when we uh, listen to this. Yeah. Here we go. Think of marching, marching fla, fla, flow flies. <laughs> wow. No, no. <laughs> no, that's not it. Long buoy. Long suey. Oh, lawn buoy. <laughs> Sorry. I was just about, right. to, just about to go, wow. All right. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> da, 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 da. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> Was it fun making this? Oh, I loved it. Yeah. I loved it. Right? <laughs> Why that song? I have no idea. It just came into my head, and I thought a lot of people haven't done it. You know, I so see. why not? Where do you live? I live in uh, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. So I'm, I welcome you to the show. You are a five thousand dollar finalist. Yeah. Only one of you can win. You understand that? Yeah, that's fine. With so me. we'll see what happens. Yep. All right. I'm going to introduce you to a guy you've met before. We all know him. A we all love him. Former winner. Uh, a former winner of a song parody contest and made it into the top five yet again. This is Ham Hands Bill Soto. Hey, uh, how, are, how are you? How are you? Robbie, uh, 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 Fred, how's everybody? A former winner, a current loser. Oh. <laughs> Ham Hands, uh, speaking of hands, what's going on? Why are you in a Are you in a cast over there? No, or? no, it's, it's just for the sweat of the hand, but it, to keep it in a, in the, like in a brace type of armrest. How yeah. disgusting. Thank I, you. I always forget that you're in a wheelchair. <laughs> yes. I, I, well, how did you end up in the wheelchair again? Uh, accident. An accident. A long yes. time you've been in that wheelchair. Car, car accident? Yes. Yeah. Your fault? Uh, yes. <laughs> it was your fault. It's hard yes. to believe. I yeah. can't believe that it would be your fault. Yeah. It, it was raining, so, you know, some problem with that. But you weren't yeah. drinking, were you? No, no, no. No, I don't. I, I don't drink. I only drink like once a year. You know, a couple of wine or champagne or something. Yeah. But I'm. I'm not a drink. I'm not a night person. You know. I used to be 20 years ago. <laughs> it changed your whole life. This car accident. Yeah. Yeah. It puts you in the wheelchair. But I'm. I'm doing pretty good. You know. You doing good. You getting late at all? Uh, it's been about seven months. My ex girlfriend moved to Miami. Yes. So right now, you know, I'm looking. You know, I. I. I, I, try, I was trying to find uh, a guest to bring to the show. Maybe someone took it in a bikini to present or something, you know. Yes. But I couldn't find it. But not even, not even an SFN or, or, no, or nowhere. 
Well, I don't know what you're talking about, but it's always funny. <laughs> <laughs> Just and what keep is, him talking. And what is this hat you're wearing? It looks very Muslim. Oh, is no, it's a, 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 a New York Yankees uh, hat. Right, it oh. looks like a kufi, yeah. right, Howard? It looks Yankees. like a kufi. Yeah, it almost looks like New York Yankees. You see? Yeah, Yankees. Right, Yankees. Big, oh, there you the go. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it's just a, a cap turned backwards. backwards. Yeah. Yes. All right, it's a good look for you. You're, you're a snazzy dresser. I got to get. Well, what thanks. are you wearing there? You got a uh, Lakers. This is the, the Lakers uh, uh, suit. Right, and your foot is in a cast. Uh, no, the thing is, the, my right foot is too sensitive. Yes. So I use this because oh. I mean, any sole of any shoe for two hours it would be too hard for me to. Oh. To, uh, I see. Wow. Yeah. All right. this, <laughs> you look like a crippled Ali G today. You really <laughs> do. True. What are the medallions, Howard? Yeah. Now you're wearing oh. multiple medallions. No, it's only one. I see. It looks like a lot. Yeah. Uh, what is that medallion you wear? And your shirt is om- your shirt is completely unbuttoned. We yeah, because the thing I'm nervous, you know, I, I, I slept two hours last night. Right. Uh, I was, uh, you know, memorizing the song in case you want me to sing it because I always have some new dirty stuff added to it. So, lady, if you want it, I'll do it live for you. Do you want to do it live? You're welcome to. I mean, uh, do you want me to play it now or you want to do it live? This is your Baba Booey song parody. Uh, if you'd like to do it first live, I'd, I'd love to hear it live. Why not? Sure. Oh. Um, you want me to? Uh, all right. Sure. So if you work that hard on memorizing it, go ahead. All right. Um, and your and your song is called "Grab My Cock at the Ballpark," yes. right? <laughs> we don't, we, how long did it take you to write this? Well, the thing is, you know, I have problem with the technical part of the thing. So my computer being eight years old, you know, I had to find a program to record it. So after a day, it took me like five, six minutes I to record the whole thing. And you uh, play Gary's father in this, right? Yes. You're Gary's father, and you're talking to your son. And uh, that was the premise of the of the uh, song parody. Well, well, what I did was I said, uh, uh, it's about Gary, so I said, what comes to mind when it comes to Gary, the Mets. I remember Ari and Gary fighting because Ari says the, gay, the Mets are gay. So I say, let me be uh, Gary's father. Molesting him at the game, at the Mets game. That's an easy leap to make, by the way. Wow. You know, so, so in the song, I, 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 uh, Gary's father molests Gary when he was a little boy. Now, your Robin song parody is a quite a hit. We still play it. You mm-hmm. won that contest yes. uh, where you put the chunk of Vaseline. You were Robin's father, and you put yeah. the chunk of Vaseline on your dick. Yeah. And you uh, gave her uh, anal. Yeah, this time I dipped my dick in, in chocolate ice cream. Right. And put it in Gary's mouth. I'm putting it while he's sleeping. I switch his thumb uh, with my... Now, is there any music in this uh, song parody? Well, uh, what I did was I used uh, like a sad track. Yeah, I don't know if I have beginning. the track. So we I'm, don't have the track because yeah, we, we weren't don't. expecting this is, uh, uh, this is well, Bob Murphy. Welcome it, to Met Molest it, Day, Jake. I, I have it here. It's called, uh, oh, okay. it's called Sad Violin. All right. Sad Violin. Sad Violin. If you want to do it live, I can hit the track yeah. for you. Should yeah. I hit it and then you'll start? Yeah, what I'll do is I'll, with, with that track, I'll do <laughs> the, the intro. All right. And let, let it play and finish, and then I just go straight to a cappella to do my... my uh, All right. So should I hit it now or should I wait till you point to me? Um, you could go ahead. All yes. right. All right. Here he is. Go ahead. Ham Hands Bill doing his finalist song. He's in the top five. For the Baba Bowie song parody contest. And congratulations on that accomplishment. Thank you. Thank All you. Right. And by the way, Howard, I am Baba Bowie's father. And his mother used to link my dirty asshole after I shit. She also choked my cock with the back of her throat, <laughs> making me come. I am not proud of things I did at home and at the Mets game to my sweet young Baba Bowie. Way, way, he, was, he became my strong, handsome thin boy. <laughs> At night, Baba Boo slept sucking his thumb, so I dipped my dick in chocolate ice cream and slowly switched his thumb with my guinea dick. <laughs> I know, I am a fucking grease ball. I will now play a tape of me. At the Mets game with my young Baba Boo under a big pancho, a rainy Mets game. I was trying to teach my son a fucking lesson. <laughs> a lesson to a cack and balls, of course. <laughs> Gary, grab my cack at the ball. Grab my cack with your left hand. Jack it off at a medium pace. You better don't let they come in my face. Open your mouth, put your head on my chest. Suck on my jeans so there is no mess. Score 
all the game while my eyes take a rest. Without you, my boy, I am fucking lost. I hope the smell of my balls is in gross. <laughs> <laughs> By peanut butter and jelly cans. Mix a big chunk in my ass with your hands. Lick it all. I know you won't snitch. Hemorrhoids make my ass so itch. <laughs> I don't care if you choke with my cat, cause I shoot, shoot, they just pass your teeth to let out some steam. Cause I shoot, shoot, in your mother's throat to stop her scream. <laughs> don't worry, oh, one, two, three. Um, uh -oh. <laughs> and stop. Well, cause enough. it's one, two, three. Anyway, Gary, don't worry. Tonight I sing for you, and this time uh, my cock will have better aim. Your mother is lame, and you still suck on my jeans. Your daddy loves you. Oh, oh. Isn't that nice? Hey, can I ask you a question? Gary, how realistic is any of this? Uh, that is a complete reenactment. It's right. not true in any way. It's if you said it's a complete reenactment, that means it's that true. Is, yeah, well, whatever. <laughs> it's a fake reenactment. Oh. Hey, Bill, how do you come up with the idea of? Um, the music stopping halfway through the song. Like, <laughs> That's the charm. Because yeah. he's going to do, then he, he turns it into Take Me Out to the Ball oh. Game. He's yeah. so on fire about you, there's no song long enough. <laughs> he he out-talks every How song. How did Quincy Jones think about Eddie Van Halen's guitar and beat it? This is genius at work. All right. All right. Listen, that was a great one. Uh, really? Good job. Thank uh, you. Ham Thank hands you. Built. What are you going to do with the money, should you win? Well, I was telling Will that recently... I made some stupid bets and I lost my savings of 4200 oh, which happened to me before, but I mean, what the heck. What'd you bet on? I bet on the Federer, which won five straight Wimbledons. The Federer? Oh, no, Federer. You, Wait, you bet that? on Wimbledon? I bet I put, I, I put 2800 on What kind of dude bets on? I thought you bet on baseball and, and football. But, you know, yeah, I, it depends. Sometimes you know, it's something they say is a sure thing. You won five straight. Mm. So I lost 2800 that. Then I bet 1300 on... Rampage Jackson, UFC. What? Rampage Jackson, UFC. UFC. Oh, oh the UFC. Fighting. Rampage Jackson. If you're betting on that shit? He lost that one. I bet you bet on the Lakers, too, against the Celtics, right? I hope you did. I, I, I won with the Celtics, but, uh, but, but I lost it all anyway. Uh, wow. And, are you a regular? What do they do to you if, uh, they, if you don't pay break your bets? Your no, they no, can't I, break I, your legs. I, I, I do it on one of the websites that used to be a sponsor of this show. I see. Yeah. So you bet, and now you lost your entire life savings of $4,200. Uh, it, it took me about five years to save, you know. Uh, why'd you do that? That's well, so crazy. No, why are you betting? It's like Gary. I mean, Gary, he sees something, short thing, you know. You know. You, you, it would look like free money. Yeah, I mean, yeah. so. Right. Yeah, but your I entire mean, savings is, well, I guess I used to do that. It before. wasn't an absolute <laughs> lock that Federer would lose this time, but yeah. I know nobody thought it was that Could close. you not have bet $100? Why did it have to be the entire life savings? But I mean, it's just a short thing. You, you think you're going to double up, you know, like Ari says, things like that. Mm -hmm. Then I had a hundred bucks left, and I bet on a, a Koto boxing last weekend. He lost. He never lost. The first time he lost, I lost on the box. <laughs> wow. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to you hear that. You can't win well, for losing. You know, what can you do? All right. So there he is, Ham Hands Bill, with his entry. It's called uh, Grab My Cock at the Ballpark. Good luck. It's Gary's father explaining that he really tried to turn Gary off to homosexuality by sticking his dick in Gary's mouth and jizzing on him. Mm. And uh, that'll turn... I don't suggest that. You know, do it. What a good dad. Because uh, he, he, his mother, his, Baba, his mother stopped licking... Uh, all right, all right. I got his it. Father I got also. it. Oh, yeah. Stop licking so father. father Turn to Baba Boy. Right, so right. promise. I got it. No, we get that. To these he, stories. Why does uh, Gary's mother stop licking the father's asshole? <laughs> because I guess he, he was forcing his mother to, to lick his asshole after he took a dump and shit, you know? Oh. All right. All right. I'm, I'm done with him. I know. I feel you're good. Now, you know. Uh, well, listen, now it's uncomfortable it hearing about your parents' sex life. I think we have a winner. Well, so in other words, uh, you know, it's funny. I have to think that Ham Hands Bill has some issue with his own father mm. because every one of your song parodies right. is about the father. And molestation. And molestation. And no, no, no but I, I got the idea from Robin, you know. Since right. Robin was molested, the contest came at that time. I said, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to become her father. <laughs> Did you have any good relationship with your father? Well, my father has always been a good man. Right. I mean, he was 30 years with my mother, you know, my right. mother Maria, my father Manuel. Did Manuel ever try to teach you not to be a homosexual? No, no. no. The thing is, right. he, he was a tailor. Right. So he was always out of the house, you know, doing things. 
coming down Sandine or something like that. Knitting. But there was no, no uh, you know, doing suits for people. But you had you know. a nice he time. He had no time it. for you at all. Uh, he was in and out, so there was no much time. Yeah, you're right. right. So you had, a, you had a good relationship. Yeah, he, he did my, my suit for high school, you right. know, two-piece suit for high school. Very he nice. did my ninth grade graduation, uh, three-piece suit. I see. So it was always good. But, right. I mean, I got the idea from the show. All right, because of Robin's book. Yeah. All right, thank you. And thank uh, you. there he is, Ham Hands Bill, a finalist. Uh, congratulations <laughs> on your accomplishment, <laughs> making it into the top five. Oh, this is going to be tough. Who this do is we t- vote This for? is really tough. All of them are so good. And uh, finally, we have a, a gentleman named Brian Scott, who's over here. Brian, you have a, a, another great hey song parody. Hey now, congratulations getting into the top five. Thank you. Where are you from? I'm from Detroit. From Detroit. The suburbs, actually. Yeah, where, where in Detroit? Royal Oak. Royal Oak. Oh, you're doing pretty good in life if you're from Royal Oak, right? Mm, there's not. some people with some money over there, aren't there? Yeah, there's some yeah, people. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you wrote Angry Young Bowie. Are you a Billy Joel fan? Yes, I am. And uh, you recorded this with your friend Michael. Uh, does Michael get a cut of the money if uh, you win? Absolutely, we're uh, going to split it. I see. Right and, and, and how long? This song seems very involved to me, intricate. This must have taken more than two minutes. It took about three days, actually. Wow. Okay, so that's uh, probably the longest amount of time—three, four days. Some of the guys uh, had to put in. And uh, you, uh, you say here in your notes, this is interesting. If you don't mind me bringing up something personal, <laughs> um, you suffer from Peyronie's disease. That's correct. Do you know what, what is that, that is? No, I don't. Tell actually, everyone what that is. This is my revelation right now. Nobody, nobody knows about it except uh, my doctor. One chick I banged, and one chick I almost banged. All right. <laughs> Bill Clinton has <laughs> this, I believe. Basically, it's a it's a fancy term for a crooked cock. You have a crooked penis. Now, what does that mean exactly? A crooked your, penis. Your cock runs a, a criminal organization. <laughs> does your penis curve up, or does it go to the right or left? It goes down and to the left. Down and to the left. So if you if you threw it at a forty five degree angle, it would come right back to you. Wait, wow. it's, like it's like a, a boomerang. boomerang. Yeah. Wow. So how it, can you have sex? It's difficult. It is. It's possible, but it's difficult. Wow. Yikes. What, did, did your father have that? Is it a hereditary thing? I think it is. Um, it either happens from a traumatic experience, like if you get. I don't know, kicked in the cock by a, a racehorse or something. Right. Did you have anything like that happen? No. There was no trauma. Um, right. Could be caused can, from masturbating a certain way, right? Yeah, yeah, you could. But uh, that's not yours. Of course issue. not. I, I never masturbate. You don't do that. Um, <laughs> so what do you think caused it? Hereditary? They uh, don't know. They it's, don't know. It's, it's a mystery. And Could there's you... nothing to do about it? Well, I finally, after 13 years from suffering from this, finally saw a doctor a couple months ago. And right now I'm just putting some special cream on my schmuck. And will that actually change things? It's supposed to. The cream will straighten it out? Yeah, it's a special uh, compounded prescription mm. gel. Wow, no yeah. kidding. And so is it painful when you have sex with a woman? Well, I've only had sex three times in my whole life. Oh, really? Because of this? Because of this. Are wow. you serious? And I didn't lose my virginity until I was almost 29. How old are you now? I'm 30. Wow. <laughs> are you really and it was serious? With a, and it was with a black chick. Really? Yeah. Wow. How much? How much? 250. <laughs> 250? <laughs> yeah. Did you have to pay her, really? No. Uh, so when you, when, when you pulled down your pants and you said to this woman, look, you be prepared. I you actually didn't... prepared her prior to the uh, experience. You what? got some crooked dick! <laughs> <laughs> That's some bullshit! Actually, I think there was a mistake in my GNA, because I'm a Jew. Right. And uh, my, my whole family on my mom's side, they all have this standard issue Jew hook nose. And right. I have, a Jew, I have the, the hook cock, so... You yeah, got right. a Jew <laughs> cock! You got a small nose, I noticed that. Uh, so, so, so explain something to me. Uh, and I'm not being funny, because this is a serious problem. Go so on. you had a... In other words, you had, you're a nice-looking guy. You probably had girls interested in you and stuff. You were always afraid to sort of go further with them. You didn't want them to see your crooked penis. Exactly. I was, I'm was. i so self-conscious of it. Uh, wow, this really be crooked. It, I mean, it, like, does it go, like, all the way? No, the no. Sun? It's not that bad. It's it's maybe, like, a 37.7 degree angle. I see. And it's got to be um, uh, uh, But weird. how do you use that? Yeah. How do you prepare? How did you I got to fuck this? around corners. How did you prepare the black woman for what she was going to see and I, deal with? I sent her an email. Did you really? Yeah. <laughs> What'd you say in the email? I have a crooked I just penis. Told her, yeah, I told her. I told her the truth, and and she said because she was probably wondering, hey, how come this guy's not fucking me? Exactly. And so you said, listen, the reason we haven't had sex is I've got a crooked penis. I've been uptight about it. And, and I'm she's, a virgin. Did you tell her that? Yep. Too? Yeah. And yeah, yeah. I, just, I told her everything. And she I said, was, I don't care. I want you. Yeah. Wow. Don't she was a really know? sweet, sweet girl. I understand. Did she suck on him before you had sex? <laughs> uh, not the first time. She didn't suck on it before? No, the no. second time, and I felt so bad for her. Show me with your finger what it looks like. Show me, show me how it... How it Look, 
like that. I, I like see. That. So when and you I, insert, it, it, it gets. It, it feels like it's being jammed. Yeah, it's 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 uh, uncomfortable. Uh, see, don't wow. you think he could have used this to his advantage? Don't you think that there's a curiosity factor if you tell chicks sure, that they just sure. want to see it? Hmm. But and, then what? Then you use it, and He's then they throw up. So what happened it. when you when you lost your virginity? Were you in a lot of pain? No, I wasn't in a lot of pain. It was just certain positions were difficult. What was your favorite position? Uh, missionary, but the legs had to be pushed way back wow. for, it to, for it to work. Wow. And did she like it, or was it? She, did she say it was I kind of... I think I actually hit a spot that had never been hit before. Wow, so she said, hey, She's... this is pretty good. Yeah. And then did you continue seeing her? Um, actually, she ended up moving out of state. She moved away from no. because of your penis. <laughs> exactly, yeah. That's I'm getting the fuck out of here! <laughs> never with a white woman? Never. Never? I she... actually was dating someone a couple months ago, and we almost had sex, and I did the same thing. I, I sent the email. Right. And uh, her, her ex-boyfriend actually ended up getting the email. Oh. The guy that she had just broken up with. Oh, my God. Got the email. How and does that, that, that happen? everything up. How does that happen? He had her password. Oh. oh. So, who's me? Mr. Crooked Cock you're hooking up with? <laughs> oh. Oh, it's your fucking cock. Did you have to get hard for the doctor when he examined you? No. You did not? No. He could see the crookedness even with uh, the soft... Uh, he could feel something was wrong. Wow. Well, I hope the cream I mean, works. When, when I you're not too. excited, does it look like a normal... Yeah, it looks pretty normal okay. when I'm, when I'm uh, flaccid. Mm -hmm. You need to find a virgin and tell her this is how all penises are. <laughs> that's your problem. You're just going with all these experienced women. Uh, you need somebody new. Well, that's a, that's a serious, serious problem. Yeah. I mean, Maybe you could hook weird. me up with someone. Uh, uh, all the women I know want a guy with a straight dick. How about a crooked cock uh, contest? Well, maybe. Who knows? Maybe the, he's a nice-looking guy, right, Robin? He's not yeah, a bad-looking bad. dude, right? He's not bad. He right? seems to have an all right personality. Well, also, can... it, it depends how you masturbate. You, he couldn't get it straight by masturbating with the other hand. <laughs> you know, uh, you're, 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 the music. You know, the, it doesn't matter what you say; it's funny. You know that. You know, if if he's if he's going this way, uh, jack it off to the other side. Yes, and, you know, and, and you get it straight for sure. What is this accent? Do you what are you Puerto Rican? But it's going to take a few years. What are you Puerto Rican? I grew up in Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. Okay, all right. All right, listen, I might, so... Uh, also try to put a chunk of Vaseline on the end of my deck. <laughs> Did you ever try to jack off with your opposite hand? Is there, there any truth to that? I tried my that? feet and everything. Everything. It's yeah. just not working. No. But you can't masturbate, right? Yeah. Yeah, Every, that's fine. It, the, yeah, it functions perfectly. Right. So. Well, I, I'll tell you, I'm not laughing at your problem there. Okay. Yeah. Please do. All right. Do your parents um, know? No, no, they do now. <laughs> they do now, right. Yeah. They're probably like, oh, my son. I figured why not tell the whole fucking world? <laughs> well, you want to know something. If there's a cure, for, maybe they can do an oper Can they do an operation on it? If this, this cream doesn't work out, then they... How the does the cream measure. straighten out your dick? Yeah, I don't understand that. It's, I don't know. I don't get it. Did you say to the doctor, it's how's like, this going to work? It's like calcium blocker. Oh, I see. I Maybe exactly you have a calcium deposit. It's supposed to basically soften every the tissue. Yeah. Up and, yeah. and it's cock straightening cream. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I never heard of such a thing, cock straightening cream. Yeah, well, uh, scientists are unreal these days. Uh, all right, so here we go. Let's listen to your uh, brilliant song parody. All of you have done brilliance here to get into the top five. This is called Angry Young Bowie. It's actually uh, the Bowie Joel song because it's, oh. it's two Billy Joel songs combined. All right, you call it the Bowie Joel song. Okay, here we go. <laughs> Like balloons, and he looks like an author rich we a baboon. And he scratches his ass as he's licking his lips, and his breath is as bad as an elephant shit. And he'll always be known as Papa Booey. <laughs> when he opens his mouth, it's a vile, wretched smell. And his stories are long, you'll be hanging yourself. When he tries to be witty, he never succeeds. Cause he can't get a joke, pencils, monster, his teeth. He gets born in Las Vegas. <laughs> He should go back to sleep in his cage at the zoo. He got shot in the eye with vagina goo. <laughs> wow. Wow, he's right. Look at this. Of talk on 
the show. <laughs> I don't think you can script someone more pussy with what a fucking homo. <laughs> and dinner is always slim pickings. Cause Jackson and Lucas get dibs on the chicken. <laughs> he's left with his fat finger up his nose. <laughs> oh, and that's just the start about Gary and Mary. He looks like a chimp and he's so damn hairy. But he should be lucky for a guy who looks like John O. <laughs> wow. Man, that's good. That is good. Wow. Ba 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 boo. Whoa. <laughs> fly, fly, flow high. There's many names there on a call this guy. How did you ever find a spouse with that Italian says poo mouth? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Who wrote that? You wrote that? I wrote it with my friend Mike and my and brother. And who's singing? I'm singing. Wow, you got a good voice, yeah. too. Thank you. Yeah, do you, you ever sing professionally? No, uh, just fucking around. Yeah, I was you, in a band. You sing good. You were Thank in a you. band, and so you have some musical background. Yeah, a little bit. I'll tell you, that's pretty good. Well, it's time to figure out the $5,000 wow. grand prize. We've got to take a vote. Let's uh, hear what some of the audience is thinking. All right, uh, let's go to Mark. Mark, what do you say in Jersey City? Howard, Ham Hands is great, but I'd have to cast my vote for Carmina Bowie. It's original, it's dramatic, it's <laughs> absurd, it's everything a great Bowie song has to be. You're talking about this one, of course. <laughs> So that's your vote. Okay, yeah, all right. Coming into the studio with that playing behind him, it's, it's just fantastic. <laughs> right, it's, it's good. Uh, let's go to um, Jose. Jose, what do you say? Howard, let me tell you something. You don't give Ham Hands Bill that 5000 I will. It was unbelievable. <laughs> you love Thank you. Do, your favorite is Ham Hands Bill. See, this is yeah. going to be tough. It I, I, I kind of like elements of all of these. This is my problem. I hate this voting. I really do. I'm sick of voting. We should take it out of our hands. Why should we go through this? Stress? I know. Why don't we have the audience vote? Why the however hell? That, however, that opera one, I forget the name, the one you just played. Carmina that Bowie. Is Carmina that Bowie. is pretty fucking funny. It too. is I, real good. I, I, this, is a, this is very, very tough. All right, let's go to Ralph. He wants to weigh in. He <laughs> loves to vote. Go ahead, Ralph. What do you think? This is a clear winner for me because I'm thinking about, you know, what, in perpetuity when Gary comes in and uh -huh. classic and sticks in your head. I can't get out of my head. Ba ba ba, booey. Ba 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 booey. Ba, what, what song is he doing? Talking about Blues Brothers. Yeah. That's the best oh. one. The other one is good. Ba 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 booey. 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 Ba 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 booey. Yeah, it's it's tough. Picture like Gary fucking something up and Sal behind him jumping around. Yeah, doing his dance. It adds a lot of energy. Yes, it's good. You know, you know, it's funny when each one of these guys does his thing. I go, oh, vote for him. Right. I know real. each one was just brilliant on its own. I but know. Now one, we have to compare and choose what we think is the best. The first one is good, like you said, it'd be good with a video or something like that. Well, right? All right, we heard your well, opinion. You're, you're lobbying for uh, yours. Jenny, yeah. go ahead. You're on the air in Amherst, New Hampshire. I have to go with the Carmina Bowie because I'm trying to picture the same thing you said earlier about if, if Gary does something <laughs> stupid and Fred <laughs> chimes in with something. That would be really funny. As you're yelling at <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is hard. Uh, all right, Jenny, thank you. Ay, ay, ay. What do we do? This is tough. Adam, yeah. yes? Adam, go ahead. What do you want to say? Give me some help here. This is a tough decision for me. Oh, man, I like the uh, the last one, Clint. I think Ham Ham's song, man. That's a good song, dude. You like it Ham Ham? a good song. You're talking about Grab My Cock. Grab my cock in the ballpark. Greg, grab my cock in the ballpark. At the ballpark. At the ballpark. Right. That's good. All right. Let's go to Bong Hit. Eric, you seem to always have an opinion. Go ahead, Bong Hit. Who would you, who would you vote for? I know. Um, I think they were all really funny, but that last one with the going through two Billy Joel songs sounded like it took a lot of work, and some of those lyrics were really fucking funny. I agree. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I agree. do too. Yeah. Uh, Christine, go ahead. Christine, what do you think? Hey, Howard. It's Christine from Orlando. Yeah. I just want to go for the last guy. I thought he did a great job. I'm not a really big fan of uh, Billy Joel, but that song was awesome. <laughs> 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 
And I can see Gary having to walk in with this, too. I got to tell you, Howard, I haven't seen you smile like this in ages. Every time you push the button, you smile. I love them all. You really do. I wish they all could yeah, win. I mean, when you're arguing Man. with Gary, I can see hitting them. Uh, I'll take a couple of more comments from the audience. Jay, quickly, who did you like the best? Uh, the first one. Carmina Bowie? Carmina Bowie. Yes, that's correct. That one. Okay, thank you. Tom, what about you? <laughs> Which one did you like best? I, I got to go with Carmina Bowie because when you hear that song in movies and sporting events, it's going to totally ruin it now, and you're going to think about Bob Bowie. All right. I have to go with Carmina Bowie. Carmina Bowie. All right. She whiz. Yeah, Dan, what do you say? Quickly, which one? Dan from Philadelphia, what do you like? Carmina Bowie, Angry Young Bowie. Carmina, Carmina Bowie, Bowie, Angry Young Carmina. Bowie. Carmina's perfect for a video. All right, Angry people seem a lot of votes coming in for Carmina mm. Bowie. Uh, what about you, Kendall? You got a favorite? Yeah, Law and Bowie. Law and Bowie. Hmm. Thank you. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> Good one, too. All right, it's time to vote. Ugh. You want to do closed voting or closed open voting? Closed voting. Closed? Oh, come open on. Open voting, no, Open voting. <laughs> you can't get off that easy. I already easy. lost one vote. <laughs> All right, Robin, I'm going to go to you first. Oh, and I know crap. how hard this is. I, I apologize to going to you first, but it's always funny to watch you squirm. <sighs> you got Carmina Bowie. You got Blues Brother Bowie. You got Angry Young Bowie. Lawn Lu- Bowie. You got the Grab My Cock at the Ballcock Bowie. <laughs> you got all kind of Bowie to choose from here. But you can only choose one for five thousand dollars. We can only have one winner. I'm sorry, guys. Who is the winner? Come on, let's think. What do you got? I think. If you want closed voting, you have to do it open shirt. So you might as well do closed <laughs> shirt, open voting. All right. I'm torn between Carmina Bowie and uh, Bowie Joel. So mm-hmm. I think I'm going with Bowie Joel. Bowie Joel. Thank you, Robin. Yeah. All right, that I is think one that's vote. What I have to do. I'm going to write down the name Bowie Joel because that has received one important vote and a step closer to $5,000. All right, let's go to Baba Flowfly himself. Yes, what does Gary uh, think? Uh, I Gary, thought, these are all about you. Yeah. You should be honored. Go I thought ahead. they were all good, even the Ham Hands built one, although you were Baba just Bowie, that's creepy. Baba Bowie. Yeah, creepy over Baba. the top creepy. But, but Baba but Bowie. Thank you, Baba. Thank you know what? For, for me, I thought when I first started hearing him, Carmina Bowie was it. Then I heard Angry Young Bowie, the Billy Joel one. And those are the two clear-cut ones for me. But I think of what somebody was saying before, the epic part of it when you when I first walk in, uh-huh. and I'm voting for Carmina Bowie. Right. But they're both really good. Thanks, Gary. They're one, all really good. One vote for Carmina Bowie. Carmina Bowie. Okay, I'm going to write that one down with one vote. I'm going to go to a man who has been controversial in the last couple of days. He got into a some sort of altercation in a parking lot. There was uh, a lot of heated words. Yes. But, Fred, it is time to vote. Okay, here we go. If this were best documentary, Ham Hands Bill would be the clear winner. Right. However, but documentaries are true. Since Fred. it, and that's that's why I'm saying this is a true story. However, as a song, it needed editing. It had been half the amount of time. Better song. Okay. So it's in fifth you place. You feel it went. Right. You feel went it went too, too long. long. Okay. And he had one of the best lines in there about the chocolate uh, ice cream on the dick. But to me, it's like just the, an award-winning line. All right. Number four, and it, this was a tough one, but third and fourth place. Law and Order Bowie is number four. At one point, it was number three, but number three is Blues <laughs> Bowie. Thank you. Really? So the top two, in my opinion, and I'll use a movie analogy here. If you were watching the movie Rocky, I would say Angry Young Bowie is like the Eye of the Tiger song in Rocky, and Carmina Bowie is like the theme to Rocky. So my clear choice is Carmina Bowie is number one. Uh, Carmina thanks, Bowie Thank receiving you. two Not votes. A clear choice. Wow. <laughs> that and is I got to tell you something. The author of Carmina Bowie looks a little shocked. I, I don't am. think you thought I you am. could take this, and yet you're in the lead now with two votes, aren't you? I'm also looking, as Ralph said, the, the stuff that has legs. Yes. That's right. one of those songs that Hand has Hand legs. Hand Bill doesn't have legs. Is that what oh. you're saying? <laughs> but you can see my website standing up. Yeah, on your website, you are standing up. <laughs> yeah, you can see me holding onto the bed. My three sisters and my mother. Right. He has head. legs, Fred. Well, if that's a knock against him. I need special shoes, but I stand. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, usually I wouldn't do this, and probably it's a big mistake, but I'm going to go to Benji. You're going to let Benji vote? See, he's surprised. Let Benji vote. Because then he's not ready. He would never uh, but I'm, I'm going to hope that Benji will not spend too much time with Stick and just get right to his I, answer. I'm right to it. Uh, the My vote goes for the uh, Billy Joe Bowie. All right. You're I talking sp- about Bowie Joe. Yeah, I especially love the uh, Eritrea line, which I'd never noticed. Right. Yeah. right. There are, there's a lot to that song. That The song does have legs, actually, because every time you hear it, you hear new things. Right. And before today, we didn't even know there was a second part. Yeah. That's right. Go ahead. 
Artie, it uh, is your time to vote. Yeah, I tell you what, I don't know having legs was a requirement. <laughs> <laughs> Both in the song and physically. So okay. fuck that. Uh, no, I gotta, I gotta agree with Benji. Uh, I loved all of them, but that fucking buoy jolting is is an impressive piece of work. It's got. Really obscure recent references yeah. like the chicken with the kids and the getting it first and fitting in a lot of words uh, and uh, I, I I think it's uh, a clear winner. I go with Bowie. Well, Bowie Joel. Joel has three votes. Carmina Bowie has two votes. And when mm. you vote, if you vote a particular way, it could be a tie. Then we have could to go be. to a tie. Break. If it's a tie, we're going to have to go to a tiebreaker. Unfortunately. Ah. Now let me tell you how I feel. Uh, I happen to feel. On a funny meter, I agree with Fred. I believe Ham Hands Bill could have won this thing hands Absolutely. down. Absolutely. Thank you. Too but long, to, he, you fell apart at the end. Yeah, he missed. You had a his killer opening, a killer mm -hmm. middle, and at the end, the damn thing just fell apart. I know. You had it in your hands and you let it slip through. And I like you. You did not you hit are, a home run. Yeah, and I, I like that, you know, but... Uh, it was it, a triple. You just missed, motherfucker. Missed a bit. I know. <laughs> well, you know, yeah. It was when you in are, the park double. When yeah. you don't know what you're doing, is there an out of the park? <laughs> <laughs> there is, actually. You know, I um, I was going to say, yeah, when in doubt with you, uh, Hamans, just say something like, Tip of my dick. <laughs> you know what I mean? I when gotta you, tell when you, you, you are something. a super the talent. The intro was Thank way you. too long. All of yeah, you are super talented, but we do have a problem here. It came down to, believe it or not, for me, uh, Bowie Joel and Carmina Bowie. That's not unbelievable since it came down to that for almost well, everybody. You would think it would be different. Uh, I happen to really be a big fan of the Blues Brothers Bowie I thing. was too. Uh, I'm not a, a Law and Order guy, so I don't know that song that well. So it didn't really uh, resonate for me, but it was good. It was beautifully yeah. produced, and Thanks. you know, you did a great job. There's no question because you're in the top five. Thank you. Uh, I really like Blues Brothers Bowie. I could see that still, it, despite this contest, that'll definitely that'll be, be a show used. favorite. Oh, you know it. But I've got to say, when it comes down to it, and you think about it, and as great as Angry uh, Young Bowie is, because that is brilliantly mm. produced and done. Carmina Bowie, when Gary walks, and I could see that being a show favorite, a classic, and something that is most over memorable. Time Best produced, over and over again. Bowie Joel. Funny, Bowie Joel, but also funny, Carmina Bowie. So I had to give a little edge to Carmina Bowie, and unfortunately, I've thrown this into a 3-3 three, three right. tie. Ooh. Well, the reason yeah. I was thrown toward the Bowie Joel yes. was because it made me laugh more. While, ah. just while it was being played. Both of them have legs. However, I think the Carmina buoy is the more dramatic and will be used more as Gary walks into the okay. studio. Well, can, maybe you make a good point. Can, can, I make a statement here about, can I make a statement about that? I see it like almost like the visual thing, and I know this is radio, but when, every time Gary comes in and he's standing there and a song comes on, I see Carmina Bowie having a more major impact. Oh, I understand in that. that moment. I'm simply saying, just on the merits, I laugh at both. I laughed more. At Which Bowie is it going to be, Robin? Is it going to be? Is it going to be, is it going to be this? <laughs> or <laughs> that is good too. Yeah, it's just the beginning of this. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, boy. This goes I, got a good, I got a good tie break. I do, too. What's the tie break? I, I, cock I, off. Whoever has the most crooked cock wins. No, what yeah. I would do is <laughs> I'm going to give them a list okay. of my next 10 gigs. Whoever can read the, my plugs the fastest. Oh. That would okay. be the tie breaker? I have yes. two ideas. No. Thing. Okay, that's one suggestion. Right. I have two ideas for a tie break. Yes. One could be we could bring in Scott the Engineer to be the tiebreaker. He certainly <laughs> oh. is. Or that would certainly be bizarre. Or, or you could the three guys that didn't get a vote could uh, vote. Oh, mm. I like oh, this that is like as a tiebreaker. You I have like to that. Select the person in your tribe. I like that Who idea. Who gets the you, five thousand? You're guaranteed to have a winner. There's only three of them, All so right. it's got to be two to one. All right. Since it's tied like at three three, Carmina wow. Bowie and Bowie Joel. Both are great. Both heavily produced, by the way. You can tell both guys did it. They did a great they did job. A great yeah. job. Um, uh, we have. I, I forgot everybody's name, quite frankly. I can't even think of it. It's. Uh, let's the, see. The great kid. Uh, Matt wrote Carmina Bowie, and of course. Uh, yes, sir. What Euros. 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 Like Euros. <laughs> uh, I thought it was Eurosi. No, not Eurosi. Who wrote uh, the Billy Joel? What's your name? I can't think of a name. Brian. Brian. So it comes down to Brian. And Matt. Right. 
one. Yes. All right. I'm going to ask the other guys oh, to man. vote. This is going to be good. First, I'm going to go to your Rossi. <laughs> Say that again. <laughs> what, is so, your uh, <laughs> what is your name again? Yoros. Yeros. Yeah, I already gets it. Right, I'm sorry, Yoros. He's much stronger than our dollar right here. <laughs> Yoros is a much better name for you. But I go have ahead. to say... And by the way, I'm th- sorry you didn't win. You're terrific Yes, talent. I loved no All right. what you did with the Blues Brothers song. Who do you vote for? I thought from the beginning of the competition that Carmina was the best one. You did. All right, yeah. there's a vote for Carmina. Vote for That's Carmina. for Matt. All right. This is for $5,000. I'm going to go to our other friend here. Uh, Josh, right, Josh? Yep, you got okay, it. Josh, Josh wrote... Lawn Bowie. Lawn Bowie. Bowie. Go ahead, Josh. Sorry you didn't win. You did a great job. No, that's, that's job. fine. Okay. This is enough of a prize being here. So, um, I, I wish gotta... I felt that way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, go ahead. I got to go with the one that makes me laugh the most, and that's Carmina Bowie. It Carmina Bowie is too. It really does. Oh, that's it. That's it. Well, that's it. Wow. it. Uh, that's ham it. hands. Uh, what were you going to uh, vote? Uh, could, could you play a people uh, one of each one? <laughs> well, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't really we played them seventeen <laughs> times. <laughs> we played them a lot. <laughs> hey, you this, was, this was Carmina. Okay. I'm just curious. <laughs> and this was Angry Young Bowie. <laughs> Who would you have voted wow. for? Uh, I would take the first one. It's like an intro, Babu Boy messing up. Yeah. All right. And by the way, I, I can speak a little bit of Greek. You yeah. can. Stikanis, kala. All right. As a what, Chinese. Does that, what does that mean? Uh, hello. Hello. All right. Thank you. Well, uh, first of all, let me say to uh, Brian, uh, you did a great job. Thank you. All right. Look. <laughs> Uh, these two lovely girls are bringing over a check to our friend Matt. Matt, how's it feel? You won. Uh, it's unbelievable. Enjoy Thank you very much. How about a kiss on the cheek from the boy? Oh. What is that you said? Oh, well, a kiss on the cheek from, to, to the boy. Sure. <laughs> oh, isn't that nice? Oh, <laughs> Bill directing. Boy, Ham right. Hands, you really know how to uh, charm. <laughs> nice Thank you. It always cr- works. <laughs> it always works, doesn't it? A nice, you love a kiss. Now yes. kiss my dick. <laughs> <laughs> the tip of my dick. And there it is, your winner, your champion, Carmina Bowie, you want to say anything? You want to thank anyone? You got anybody you want to? How are you, you feeling? Wanna... I feel wonderful. This is great. It's great to be here. All right. And uh, the money will go toward? The bank account. Oh, uh, Jason wants it. He's pointing toward. Oh, okay. Jason. All right. I, I've, I've given that second thought. I think I'll use it on myself. <laughs> All right. Well, there it is. Your winner, Matt. Matt, congratulations to you. Good work. Uh, you, Brian, our runner-up. Good work. Guys, all of you deserve yeah, a big really round of applause. Stuff. I know how hard it is to make that stuff and come up with a good idea. And uh, we say to Baba <laughs> Bowie, Carmina Bowie. By, by, by the way, Howard. Yes? Oh, can, Bill. Can, can we take a picture with you, all the all the contestants? Oh, on, Bill. On the break? Oh, please. Oh, Bill, you know how to be a buzzkill. Please, yeah. please. Oh, one picture with Howard saying and all, all, all the contestants. Right. Oh, yeah. Bill. Thank you. Never enough for Bill. Thank you, thank you. You know, stop taking advantage. Bowie, that uh, puppet, that Baba Bowie puppet making a big hit on the E-Network. Very popular. People love it on TV. They can't get enough. The Garionette. The Garionette. Fred, I noticed when you work, Gary, you should like really turn your head off to the side like Claude Kirshner. Well, that's I'm, trying to, I'm trying to still work this out. <laughs> look at a Fred Swastik <laughs> on the middle of his forehead. You know, it doesn't look unusual at all. No, it almost looks like it lives there. <laughs> Wolf, you are a genius for thinking that thought up. <laughs> I would never bought the hand that laid the golden egg. I love you, Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All true. Yeah. 
Hey, Gary and Ed, how are you doing today? Good morning, Bob. How was your night? Uh, how was your night in the paper bag? Oh, I was very tired, Bob. I was standing in front of the mirror all night. I wanted to see what I looked like when I was sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to, of course, the Gary Annette, the Gary puppet that uh, everyone loves so much. In fact, people are telling me when they listen to the Gary Annette over the radio, they even like him. Yeah. Yeah, he's very funny to listen to as well. <laughs> you know that we added the moles of Gary. Yeah, let, the Gary that's Annette. singular, Robin. One mole. Mole well, there and a mole right here. Where? Two. There's a mole right about there in the back of the neck. <laughs> I'm right. If you look, look you'll see it right under your ear. <laughs> I have to go look. And I thought I was a dummy. <laughs> <laughs> Gary doesn't even know how many moles he has. Well, I didn't think the other one was noticeable. <laughs> I was watching the television show the other night where Robin says to Gary, Gary, put the ga put the Gary puppet right next to your head. Uh, and Gary couldn't get the puppet next to his head. No, no, I was, trying to, to, I was trying to find the back of it so I could work it when I put it next to my head. That oh, man, it looked it. really funny. I don't care what your excuse is. It was 15 minutes before you found your head. <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> no, it was closer to 20. <laughs> We had 20 minutes. 20 minutes. <laughs> it was so funny. It took him like 20 minutes. To, he couldn't get that puppet next to his head because yeah. Gary couldn't find his own head. <laughs> true. That is true. I, could you bring in a mirror so I can find my own head? Ooh, where uh, is it? So, Gary Puppet. <laughs> yeah, Bo. What are you going to be doing today? The uh, weekend's coming up. We got uh, Fred's bachelor party. That's right, Bo. And uh, you're going to be, uh, you're going to what, watch the girls dance? Absolutely, Bob. But now that you're married, you can't really look at the girls the same way. Oh, no, I can't, Bob. I'm telling you, me and my wife, we're having such a good time in the bedroom. Yeah? In bed, we use chapstick as a lubricant. Is that right? <laughs> That's right, because the baby has chapped lips. <laughs> <laughs> what are you saying, Gary Puffett, that you and your wife still have sex even though the, uh, the, your wife is pregnant? That's right. And what do you think it's going to be, the baby? I think it's going to be mutilated by the time I get through. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't mean that way. I mean, what do you think the sex is going to be? Oh, uh, good. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what what, uh, Gary Puppet, what do you think the sex is going to be of the baby? I don't know, but it's probably going to be another dummy. <laughs> 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 you know, I reached in my dummy pants, Yeah. And I think the guy who made me forgot something. <laughs> <laughs> you mean you're not packing much? No. <laughs> <laughs> I like that Gary in that. Yeah. Yeah, he's funny. But if there's one word I could say that could describe the man Howard Stern, it is media genius. Thank you, Gary Annette. Thank you, Bob. Frank, can I, I make one suggestion in your ventriloquism? You, your voice has to be near the microphone and the Gary Annette. He puts the Gary Annette near the microphone. And he moves his head away and you can barely hear Gary Annette. Well, I'll try and work that out. Yeah. So Small much, detail. <laughs> so much for throwing your voice. Yeah. Fred throws his I out of the room. You're yeah, like, move your microphone so you can, like, turn your head. That's it. There yeah. you go. Okay. Maybe we could have a dummy mic for There the you dummy. go. Yeah, a little and dummy yeah. mic. Another there dummy mic go. for the dummy me. <laughs> so what was I talking to you about, Gary Annette? I don't remember. No, Fred, put the mic near you. <laughs> he, <did laughs> he still can't again. do it. He can't get it together. <laughs> we can't hear you. <laughs> he doesn't have to talk into a microphone. You That's do. That's right, Bolt. Okay. There you go. Now the Gary and Ned's like in, uh, words I can hear. I Next, love you, Volf. I wish that puppet could work a Fred Norris puppet. That would be really funny. I always want to say one thing. Everybody always leaves Robin out of getting credit. But let me say that for a black person, Robin has a pretty good brain on her shoulder. <laughs> hmm, thank you, Gary and Ned. That's very nice of you to say. <laughs> mm, a little earwax in the morning doesn't hurt. <laughs> what was you I? need your earwax, too? Yeah. <laughs> what, what, what were we talking to the Gary and Ned about? Oh, uh, the baby? The sex of the baby? Oh, yeah. So, uh, with the baby, are you excited that a baby's coming? Oh, yeah, Bull. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be moving to Greenwich. Is and that you right? Know, they have thousands of miles of bridal trails. <laughs> <laughs> Is that right? You're saying that there's a lot of bridal trails? Then why would you be interested in bridal trails? You don't own any horses. No, but it gives me plenty of places to trot. <laughs> <laughs> so, you're going to be trotting the bridal trails of Connecticut? <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right, enough talking to the Gary and I throw him back in his bag. An outrage. I can't remember why I came in here. Yeah, why did you come in here? Ask not what your country can do for you. Ask what you can do for your country. And now across the pond, London Radio gets a blast of Bob Ogluey. And you're on, you're on Tuesday, are you filling in for me? Okay, well, there we go. That's, that's, um, that's, that's got to be worth having a listen, isn't it? 
I sounded really insincere, insincere and sarcastic. That's good. It's got to be worth listening to him, isn't it? Mm-hmm. No, it, it, it probably will be. I can't make it not sound insincere now, so I'll stop talking about it. He's on at one o'clock. Uh, line two, you're on the wireless. Baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. Yeah. Baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. Yeah. Uh, baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. Is this a recording? No. Baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. Oh, is this actually a person? Yes. <laughs> oh, in that case, it's got a, it's got like a sort of hiss to it, as though it's a recording. But well done, you. Thank you. Baba booey. Baba booey. Baba booey, baba booey, baba booey. I'm quite happy to let you stay on for the next half an hour doing this. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Much love. Bowie 25, every weekend from now until the end of summer on Howard 101. See how one monkey misstep changed pop culture history. The governor's call was gracious. Romney's going to be the winner. At the RNC convention, and that may have a lot to do with having to reorganize the the, uh, whole idea of... Ask not what your country can do for you. This is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie to y'all. All weekend long on Howard 101. All right, Baba Bowie, do your production number, even though my whole show is ruined. <laughs> I'm going to make it up right here. I'm sure. Smiling when I'm smiling. The whole world goofs on me. <laughs> Cause my choppers, my huge choppers, are like tombstones, not like teeth. My gums are rotten, and they reek like manure. My mouth is stinky. It's a pink and green sewer. (laughs) I'm so smelly. Yes, I'm so smelly. That I make the whole world puke. I'm so ape-like, so goddamn ape-like, my body's a hairy wreck. I'm a chimp boy, Howard's chimp boy, I'm surprised I walk erect. I got a nice wife, she must be deaf, dumb, and blind, cause I'm a moron. With a monstrous behind, I'm very hairy, I'm downright scary, and the whole world goofs on me. I'm very hairy, how the hell did I get married? The whole world goofs on me. You did a good job with that. I'll give you that. Hey, it's uh, Gary's birthday on Friday, and of course, today's the birthday show for Gary. Ah. Oh. Yeah. It's Gary's birthday. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Gary Delabate birthday bash. There'll be no guests because I'm fucking busy, so <laughs> too bad. As you know, we had some of the world's most famous performers at my birthday. So for Gary... We're going to have the world's most famous radio producers, which unfortunately means we will only be having Gary as our Gary guest. Gary is his own guest. Yeah, I don't think there are any others. <laughs> I'm sure there are other producers of radio. I know there weren't when I got in this game, but... But now everybody has Now everyone one. demands one. Well, Howard has one. Why don't we? Well, good. Gary. 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 Gary, Gary. Fortunately, we don't need Gary, Gary in here for his birthday celebration <laughs> because that would just suck. Well, Gary still has to produce. Right. Happy birthday to Gary. Happy birthday to Gary. Happy birthday to Gary. Happy birthday to Gary. Oh, boy. <laughs> That's uh, piercing. Happy birthday. I can't hear anything. Oh, he's so irritating. When when Richard Simmons came to my house years ago for uh-huh. dinner, 
I was like the biggest mistake ever. <laughs> it was so obnoxious. Like I thought for sure when he got like into the private life, he would just like He'd drop calm that thing down and and not be that guy. He was fifty times worse. Oof. I just remembered like he ran into the house and then he started picking me up and squeezing me and my wife and and uh, we had a housekeeper who like was so thrilled he was there. But when he'd squeeze, he'd like squeeze your ribs. Right, he'd hurt you. And it actually fucking hurt. What a fucking angry guy he is. And uh, then, and then I don't know. We we made these really nice hors d'oeuvres, and it wasn't like we ordered the food from somewhere. We actually made them, you know. Uh-huh. And they were on cucumber, little little cucumber things, with like maybe some caviar. Or, and he would just take the cucumbers and whip them into the pool. Ugh. And it was just like, fuck, is this for real? Like, am I am I getting goofed on? Oh, it was so fucking bad. And I like Richard. I mean, I love him on the show. He's fun. Yeah, but this is the only place it's yeah. safe to have him. Yeah, but you can't socialize with him because it's like nonstop shtick, and it's such an angry, aggressive shtick. And it's like, oh, my God, it must be so exhausting being him. Well, anyway, back to Gary's birthday. Uh, of course I have a guest for today. The boss is here. That's Gary's favorite. Yes. So by the boss, I don't mean Springsteen. I mean me. I'm the oh. boss. Hello, Bolf. <laughs> Bolf. <laughs> Want to take a walk down Gary history for yeah, his birthday? Yeah, why not? All right, You've a never of, done that before. All right, a couple of Gary moments for Gary uh, for Gary's, I think, 53rd birthday. Oh, Gary, you... Ga- Gary is 53, if you wow. can believe that. Boy, Fafafui. Gary is 53. 53. All right, anyway, here's John Hine to sing a love song, because John Hine is Gary's closest friend. Yes. And John Hine is in love with Gary, and Ga- more importantly, <laughs> Gary's in love with him. In fact, even when I had all the guys out to my house, uh, some guys, I had one room where two guys had a bunk together. Those guys ran into the room together. <laughs> but is it a is it Gary loving John more or John loving Gary? I think Gary more? loves Who's more in love. I think Gary loves John more, but they're both pretty in love. <laughs> anyway, to start off the big birthday presentation, here's John Hine to sing a love song to Gary. Oh, Gary. You are the love of my life. No one knows vinyl and chocolate more than you. Oh, Gary, I wish that you were my wife. You're my big tooth dreamboat. Yes, you are. Damn, I love you, Gary. Every moment we spent in that room at Howard's house was pure heaven. Can't wait till the next time. Happy birthday, honey. <laughs> That's so creepy. Oh, my. Well, anyway, uh, Tyne and Gary, we do have some of the performers from my birthday show here. We have me, we have Robin, and we have J.D., so <laughs> get ready. Happy birthday to Gary, 53 years old. I remember when he was a baby chimp. Oh. oh. Don't you, Robin? <laughs> Actually, I remember. Well, first, no tribute would be, uh, you know, right if we didn't get right to the name, how did he get the name Baba, Baba Booey? Baba Booey. Of course. No, they sell those too, but I'm thinking about getting uh, a Bam Bam. No, you ready? Mm. Quick Draw McGraw and Baba Booey. I'm thinking about getting. Mm. Good, oh, good. What, 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 how do you make the final determination? Uh, just have to see, you know, how much money is coming in. <laughs> how much does a Bubba Louie go for? Those are a little bit cheaper. Uh, Quick Draw and a Baba Booey are about three twenty-five. What do you call them? Baba, Baba, Baba Booey. I thought it was. I thought, is it Baba it's Louie? Baba Louie, isn't it? Baba Louie. Oh, you call him Bubba Louie. You're going to hang a picture of a guy you don't even know his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's one thing not to know a Picasso. Baba Booey, he's saying. The Momma Mama. <laughs> I even said to him right then and there, I go, Baba Louie. I right, think he he, you corrected him. You'd think yeah. he'd pick right up on no. that and not do Baba Booey no, anymore. Because whenever I know something, Gary argues with me. <laughs> he never wants me to be right. Baba Booey. Baba, it's a Baba Booey. <laughs> Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Anyway, that's one of my favorite Gary moments. Uh, here to sing a happy birthday song for Gary is Mark the Bagger. Baba Booey dresses like a slob. Baba Booey he sleeps on a job. Baba Booey got fungus on his toes. Baba Booey he makes Howard explode. Right. Baba Booey getting old. He's got the gray hair. It looks like a... Uh, Silverback Gorilla. Well, I was listening to the voice. His voice has changed. Yeah. He was mellower or something. Yeah. That's my boy. (laughs) 
53 years of young. No matter how old you get, my friend, your teeth will keep your legacy alive. Forever. Those choppers are, are true fossils from another era. Well, they won't go. They what? They won't go. When the rest of Gary is gone, That's his right. teeth will well, survive. When, like a thousand years from now, they're going to use Gary's teeth to measure the planet's uh, age. <laughs> An early man. That's right. They'll still be around. They're going to think man was created in the year 2000-something. Well, they'll say man had really big teeth. Right. Man, man had teeth the size of a saber-toothed tiger. And th we're so lucky because most of the teeth have uh, disappeared off the planet, but the only ones we found were this guy. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, other, what other big moments can we pull out? How about... Uh, for years, Sal, when he was a stockbroker, uh, yes. before Sal worked for us, he was a stockbroker, and he used to torture Gary back in the office. Here's another proud moment from Gary history. Hi, Gary. How you doing? Here, what can I do for you? I just wanted a quick quote from you. Um, what would you consider the three essential characteristics that make up good radio? Yeah, you know what? I, I can't really get into this right now because we're on the air. Try calling okay. me back after the show. Okay. Uh, who should I ask for? Ask for Gary. You know what? Uh, let me give you my extension here. Okay. Just when you ask for me, yeah. uh, just tell the secretary that you're a horse tooth jackass. <laughs> <laughs> well, they would. Oh, that was this torture. This went on all the time. Right, right. Very nice. Well, there you go. Uh, Baba Bowie, 53. Well, uh, how about when Gary was sitting in the office and a woman called in and said she was Madonna's sister? Oh, yes. And he came running and he interrupted the show. I was in the middle of something. He said, Boff, I think I got an exclusive here. I got Madonna's sister. <laughs> And this woman got on who was clearly, certainly, I don't know if she was disturbed or she had a problem. I don't know what well, was going on. Well, she didn't that. seem to be Madonna's sister. It, it, it was so obvious it was not Madonna's <laughs> sister. God, did, you know how stupid Gary feels? He was he was duped by someone like you. Done? Someone was, of questionable intelligence. I was duped by the people around her. Right. I was duped by I'm Madonna's not, not sister, her people. All right. I'm sick of it. I'm sick and Gary, tired. you have a better chance of being Madonna's sister. I'm sick and tired. I got the mustache Boo, for it. Yeah I, yeah, I wish we had tape of her actually talking, but she was so obviously not. She was obviously somebody who was out of it. Right. Yeah. Ba, 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 53. And of course, my favorite moment, the love tape. If we got back together and we became a couple again and it, could, and it was working, that somewhere off in the distant future would be... You know, the possibility of m m m m m m m m marriage. I'm kidding, it's a joke. I like when he has to tell her it's a joke, and then he, he smacked himself on the back of the head to get out the word marriage. Right. <laughs> yeah. I'm ready to give you a commitment, and for you to give me a commitment. <laughs> that was one of the lines I liked. And then there's always yeah. my private life is how to do, and my, <laughs> my and my no my I mean my work life is annoying, <laughs> yeah. annoying. Baba's birthday, Baba Booey, Baba Baba Booey, Baba Booey, Mama Mama Monkey. He's fifty-three, Baba Booey, Baba 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 Daniel Mendelssohn. How exciting. What a, what a birthday celebration we're having. And I guess to sum it all up, uh, if you're doing a, a memory uh, walk... Walk down memory lane. If you're doing a memory walk, you certainly want to remember the Gary's pitch that he... Oh. That he did. Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what did he do? He just threw it and it hit the umpire. <laughs> wow. Oh, Jesus Christ. He's got big teeth. 
Ja. <laughs> There's a million of them. <laughs> yeah, he, I don't think he has as many songs as me, but there are quite a few Gary songs. I'm the only person I know who doesn't need to be here for his birthday. Trip. <laughs> I know, you don't even need to be in the room. Is there something you want to say, Gary, on your birthday? Would you like to say something? Uh, thank you all. It's been great hanging out with you guys. And How do you like the party so far? It's amazing. It's, just, it's, it's on a par with yours. That's it on the speech? You're done? He's done. I'm done. He's done. Well, Robin, anything you want to say? You're, you're so good at... Uh... Well, you know, this is off the cuff. Right. <laughs> you weren't prepared. <laughs> well, his birthday's not till Friday, by the way. I just want you to know that. Right. Well, you know, oftentimes you have the celebration not necessarily on the day. Right. But it has certainly been a pleasure every moment of the oh. however many years it's been. Every moment? Every moment. Wow. The highs and the lows. Oh. I wouldn't have missed a second. Oh. <laughs> you got to take the good with the bad. How big are his teeth? How big are his teeth? He's jumping on Cheerios. Gary's licking his gigantic lips. How nice when you have a star like Eli Braden making a personal song about you on your birthday. And it makes you want to harmonize along. And how about uh, the, the winner of the NAACP award making a speech about you, Gary? <laughs> I'm really knocking myself out here. I thought Sidney Poitier was coming, but this is way better. Yeah, well, hey, Sidney Poitier didn't win the NAACP award. I'm sure he has. I don't know about that. <laughs> I know you did, though. That much I do know. Yes, King of All Blacks. Yeah, I was just going to ask Gary, happy birthday, Gary. And I wanted to know, is your wife going to do something special maybe? For yeah, she's going to let him live in his house. <laughs> yeah, she's going she's gonna to make dinner. Right. Oh, she's yeah. Do hey, Gary, do you think your wife will let you have the first dibs on the pieces of chicken, or the kids are still going to go first? Well, my birthday's not until Friday. Right. Mary's is on Saturday, so as always, we will go out to dinner together. Well, that, that, that's the way I ensure getting served equally. That's right. You get what you want. Yeah, that always blew my mind that, like, Gary's wife made sure the kids got their first, you know, like she put down a plate of chicken and the kids and would go Gary's first. Gary's hand if it went out first. It's such a bad thing for kids to learn, obviously. Because, I mean, the dad is the guy who should get some respect. Yeah. I don't know. Exactly. Hey, does the oh, star... No. Hey, hey, Gary, I got a good guess for you. The star of Sharknado 2 happens to be sitting here. Oh. Wow. Sir, do you have anything to say? Happy birthday, Gary. Wow. <laughs> awesome, 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 awesome. Very That's nice. It's just like Brian Cranston saluting you. Wow, isn't that great? All right, enough of the birthday celebration. Boing. All right, happy birthday, Gary who, of course, is uh, all of our hero. The historical record of stuff that happened on this date is an endless treasure trove of contradictions and impish juxtapositions. It's the birthday of Howard Stern's producer, Gary Delabate, the famed Baba Booey. He's 74. It's also the day in 1941 in which Xavier Cugat and his orchestra recorded Desi Arnaz's future hit, Baba Lou. Booey 25 presents What Does Baba Booey Mean to Me? Everybody here, Shirley J. Anthony Brown for the Howard Stern Show. What Baba Booey means to me is make sure you have your cartoon characters right before you walk into the room on the Howard Stern Show. I was listening that day with the Baba Booey. That was the funniest shit ever, man. <laughs> this is Booey 25 on Howard 101. See how one Baba Blunder changed Stern Show history. He always does things wrong. You're, you're right, it was a mistake. I... I... 
No, no. Hmm? I didn't realize it. I just like watching you eat. Those <laughs> eggs are battling those teeth, and those teeth are gonna win every time. Toothy. Ta ta tooty, ta ta tooty, ta ta tooty. This is Bowie 25, celebrating the 25th anniversary of the name that became a movement. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. Baba Bowie. And Baba Bowie P.O. All weekend long on Howard 101. All right, so Gary went out to uh, the W. My Baba My Baba You're the flower of my heart. Sweet Baba So Gary uh, went out and he uh, read to little children. How'd you get roped into this? I had a friend who worked at the station and asked me if I would do it. And Gary likes doing this because it makes Gary feel like he's famous. Or, I don't know, that somehow he's he's a big shot. Yeah, he's a star. Yeah. He likes it. I'm not sure what he's up to. But anyway, so Gary, what happens? They, they have you come out in front of, how old are these kids? I'd say between five and ten years old. Right, and you have to read to them. Yeah, they, you come out and the guy... It's not even like Gary can That's read good. That's a big range, 5 to 10? Yeah. Wow. Maybe even a couple of kids a little bit older. Wow. Really? Older? Yeah, a little bit older. <sighs> By the time my kids were 10, you couldn't read to them. Like they had uh, Ed Koch read a story and some guy named... You know who Doug E. Doug is? No. I guess he used to be on the Cosby show. Wow. And he was in some movie, Cool Running. He read and, you know... Then yeah, but you know what's so silly about... This? These are all people who can't read. And then, yeah. Uh, you know, they're not, not actors. Not professional. Yeah. Reader and Pappy was there. Pappy from Pappy's, I don't know, Pappy's Playhouse. It's a guy that dresses in a cowboy hat and he teaches kids how to draw. Oh, Pappy, dear. Pappy was there. <laughs> is he an old guy? I, you know, I on the TV he looked like an old guy, but when you saw him in person, he wasn't that old. Yeah, Pappy, <laughs> but he's like, you know, you know, he's, he's got like a funny voice, right? He teaches you how to draw. But Gary, Gary, like I've heard Gary read commercials and he's annoying. That would turn me well, off. You know, Gary doesn't even speak that well no. because of all the problems with the teeth and, and the, the lips. lips and the and the gums. So you know, then you add reading to that. Now remember, I'm talking to young kids here because his teeth get all twisted in with the words. <laughs> they really do. I, I, You're not a great reader. I understand. You're not known for reading. I'm not a great orator. I know. Every word is a project. <laughs> uh oh. You know, he knows what he wants to say. The question is, can he say? It? Uh oh, big word coming up, both. <laughs> I divide it into syllables. <laughs> All right. So anyway, first, I guess, what did they do? They interviewed you. Yeah, a guy on stage interviews me. Now again, remember, I'm speaking to little kids. All right. Hmm. You're we talking tried to bring down? You different people to give you a sense as to what New York is all about. And that right now, it is indeed my pleasure to bring up someone who has been working in the city of New York on radio for over 14 years. He is what we call a radio producer, and we'll find out what that's all about in just a moment. He's from 92.3 K-Rock, or 92.3 K-Rock. He is Baba Booey, Gary Delabate. Boy, already. Who's that guy? Yeah, what's Baba his Booey? problem? He was the host. Oh, boy. Where is he from? I don't know. I never met him before. First of all, if you've ever seen kids, like my kids at that age had birthday parties and stuff when they were like five and six. Yeah. You can't hold these kids' attention for 30 seconds. Right. You hear the audience is talking, talking the, whole the whole time. They don't even care where they are anymore. And right. you know, which is why I read a really short book, because uh, somebody yeah. else before me read a really long book, and I heard it was uh, <laughs> a disaster. Yeah. Yeah, and you know, and it's just like, you know, like I know we used to have like magic shows for the kids. Mm -hmm. The magician can barely keep the kids' attention. Right. You really got to work hard to right. keep a kid's attention. That's why I'm wondering, why would you sign on to do this? I don't know. If a kid, if a kid, if, if the magic guy would get a little too talky, the kids would zone out. That's right. You know, and even, you got to wear a clown suit while you do the magic. Right. You got to be distracting in so many ways. Well, my teeth were very distracting. <laughs> right. They, they put on a light show with those teeth. Oh. <laughs> What's up, Gary? Hey, Leon, how are you? Oh, man, so glad to have you here. Now, you know, I was telling the kids that you're a radio... Was this a black guy? Yeah. yeah. 
Yo, I was telling the kids. But everybody talks around kids like that. I was telling, like, if you yell. Yeah, like old people. <laughs> yeah, they'll yo, yo, stay yo, yo, tuned. Yo. I was telling the kids. Producer, now what the heck is a radio producer? Well, I work on a radio show, and we also have a couple of TV shows. And I have a boss, and he's the host of the show. He's the person you see on camera or here on the radio. My job is to help him be prepared be ready to do the things that he does all day long, like uh, make sure like yell at people. <laughs> <laughs> he knows the right scores if they're doing the sports, or make sure he knows the right weather, or make sure make sure he knows things about the different guests. What's the last time I did the weather? Oh, Howard, I'm talking to kids. I'm trying to ask keep it for the brief weather right now. Is he prepared? All right, what's the weather? I don't know. I'm going to go look out my window. <laughs> going to interview today. Well, since today is all about reading and the importance of reading, how does reading? Yeah, Gary reads during the whole show. I can't <laughs> even the, find him. He reads the sports page. Right play into your job well i have to do a lot of reading because we i have to have a lot of information um and when we have a guest on the show i'll read a lot of articles or some books about that guest so that when my boss wants to interview that person my boss my boss he, you do say that my boss well i didn't want to say howard because i don't i wasn't sure if the kids knew what that meant but so i wanted to say you know my boss my boss you're my boss my boss <laughs> A lot of times my boss will be talking about lesbians or vaginas, <laughs> but I'll read. And I have, I have to keep, to keep him on time for my boss. talks about that. My boss. And he knows everything there is to know and can ask them. Kids, he's, he's barely heard over the kids. <laughs> and the kids don't have a microphone. They're losing uh, interest yeah. rapidly. Could you imagine once he starts reading? The good questions. And uh, I like that response. That's very good. Well, you really know your job, huh? Well, you're smart. Well, Leon liked it. No, I, yeah. think, what, I think what Leon was saying, well, you're not as dumb as Howard said. No, what Leon was saying is, hey, how do I get that job? <laughs> I read that. <laughs> you read that. I read that somewhere. Did you have a favorite book as a child? Uh, yeah, I think I liked, um... Yeah, Gary goes to the dentist. <laughs> again and again and again and again. And Fun never... with Dick and Jane. <laughs> Harold and the Purple Crayon. Uh -huh. What was your book? Harold and the Purple Crayon. Oh you like that goodness. book? It's a good book. A kid's I book. wouldn't even. I never had a kid's you book. Re uh, you remember something like that? I colored my mouth with a purple crayon. <laughs> oh. I also like. I can never remember the name of the book, but it's the one about the four uh, Chinese brothers. Yeah, I remember that. And I, they, they're in a boat. Yes, in an oven. yes, yes. That uh, was one of my favorite. I like that one well. too. You know. I don't know that story. That sounds like one of Jackie's jokes. No, the no, four no. Chinese brothers. Actually, I saw that book recently. Four Chinese brothers. I can't even. I can't even imagine you could read that book to kids anymore. It's about these Chinese brothers that you can't kill, so they try to drown them and then they put them that in the That black oven. guy sounds like one of those black guys I could kick his ass. You know what I mean? Hey, how you doing, Gary? Oh, come here, I'll kick your ass. We talked a little bit before about your profession, and I just want the kids to understand again exactly what you do. So tell us again what a radio producer is. Oh, well, no. I make sure everything's ready for when the, the person who talks on the radio... Why is this guy busting your balls? I don't know. Yeah, we just fell in time. All right. Who's my boss? He's, he's asking you to repeat answers. Maybe he thinks the kids aren't that bright. I don't know. There's a show, although sometimes I talk on the radio as well, and um, we have microphones, and so we talk into, and we have headphones so that we can hear what we're saying, and, uh, you know, that's, that's basically what we do. My job is to hear my Wolf holler at me, <laughs> and then I run and do what I forgot to do. <laughs> like my Wolf will say, hey, Gary, go get a tape, and then I'll forget. <laughs> And I think you have a surprise for us in just a few minutes, but and we're going to go to the surprise. But I was just wondering, is this something that you always wanted to do as a small child? Well, I, I don't know. I mean, I like to watch a lot of TV, and I used to listen to the radio a lot. And, uh, and then when I got older, after I got out of high school and went to college, I, I went to my college at, you know, Adelphi University, and I saw wow. the radio Whoa. station. And it just looked like something really neat. I sure. thought to myself, us wow, I, I think I want to do that. Wow. It looks like Both these guys are yelling. <laughs> Come on. Why do they call you Baba Booey? Why oh, they call no. you Baba Booey? Oh, no. Should this be the type of guy that's talking to kids anyway? No. <laughs> so funny, because the second I met the guy, he said the, the best thing he ever heard on the show was the D.L. Hughley phone call. So it was right. like a whole black thing. I see. He's a nice guy. All right. Oh, it's such a long story. It has to do with the cartoons. It'll go over there. We'll, we'll talk about it. <laughs> Kids, as Gary is reading. No, I'm, you know, I've sort of come to embrace it. Really? Yeah, I mean, I mean. Ba ba booey. Now, do you feel at home? I feel at home. It's just like being at work. Did you have your kid there with you? Uh, yes. Oi. So now he's going to be calling you Baba Booey. 
He still doesn't know what it means. Yeah, neither do you. Yeah, you know, he sees ba-ba-boy, people calling ba-ba-boy, it ba-ba-boy, out to you all the time. Does the kid start asking, like, what's this Baba Booey thing, Dad? No, he's never asked me about it. Really? Baba Booey. He's Maybe it. he already Baba knows Bowie. and he's embarrassed. Yeah, he's probably embarrassed. Well, I know my wife pulled him over to the side and said, listen, don't bring it up. It's very upsetting right. to Dad. Right. <laughs> Bunch of your sons sitting there and a bunch of people calling you Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Yeah. You're doing Baba them Bowie. a favor. Baba Booey. Baba Booey. Right. Baba Booey. Baba I'm not fine with it. And then, I did a, and then I did a little radio show for the kids. You did? Yeah, well, I didn't do a radio show. What I did is I brought a little setup. That's what I had in the big bag this morning. Right. Oh, that was the surprise? Little microphones, and each of the kids came up and read, like, you know, one kid did the weather for, like, 10 seconds, and one kid did the sports, and I just showed them how to... Well, how, how come we don't have that on tape? Because I don't know if we have releases from the kids. Oh, too bad. <laughs> Uh, here's Gary reading Clayboy. He ate and ate. He grew and grew. He ate up all the food in the house, and still he cried, more, more. But they had no more. So he gulped down the chickens. And then he gulped down the geese and the cat oh. and the dog. And he got bigger <laughs> and bigger. And Poor kids have to How listen to this. How many kids are there? There's probably about 100, 200 kids. Jeez. And These I, poor and kids have to listen to this crap. And there's TV monitors so they can see the pictures uh. as I flip them by. Bigger. Boy, the clay boy's eating a lot, huh? Sounds like the Chris Farley story. <laughs> <laughs> then, well, he swallowed Grandma. And then, well, he swallowed Grandpa. Boy, oh boy. Then, he started to walk. Thump, thump, thump. He went out of the house on his... Oh, <laughs> oh my It's the gig goodness. from hell. Wow. <laughs> Matt, you're on the air. Hey, Howard. Did uh, Baba Bowie pass out uh, raincoats to all the kids in the front row before he started talking? <laughs> yeah, like a Gallagher concert. Were you afraid his, uh, his, his lips and teeth would... Oh, the it must have been unbelievable. They gave rain hats and raincoats to the kids in the front row. All right, thank you. It's ridiculous. <laughs> well, congratulations, Baba Buhai. Yeah, I thought it was uh, okay. Baba Buhai. Yeah. Sounds Baba great. Bowie. Wow. Baba Buhai. How do they get a hold of you? What's your website? You want to give your number? Sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can visit us online at Ozzy and Create on Twitter uh, or me, Ken Plummer, on Twitter. So. Excellent. Baba Booey, thank you. I yeah. sort of feel like you were Howard and I was Robin. I mean, it was good. <laughs> felt good about this. Thanks for coming in, Kent. And that's Kent Plummer from Ossington Creative. Baba Booey to y'all. <laughs> okay, we're going to see you at uh, Ford Fest. Yeah. Thanks, Kent. You're listening to Booey 25 on Howard 101. Did you see you were in the paper today, Robin? No, <clears throat> what did I do? Well, first of all, you talk so loud. Robin has a very loud voice. She really does. It's one thing I know about Robin. Like, if you're talking to Robin, like, in a room, and, the, you know, let's say I have people, an announcer's voice. Yeah, and people start arguing. Robin <laughs> always wins the argument because she's very, right? Doesn't she have a powerful voice, would you say? I wouldn't argue with her. Right. <laughs> it's a waste of time. But it says there's a, there's a column in the Daily News, a gossip column, and, or maybe it was the Post. Maybe it was page six. It's I'm page wrong. Six. It is page six. Okay. I apologize. Richard Johnson again with a big scoop. He says that Robin and Joan Rivers were on uh, a plane together. They were. <laughs> and I guess the whole plane could hear their conversation. Oh, get out of here. Joan Rivers and Robin Quivers on a flight from L.A. to JFK debating the question of how much money an ugly man needs <laughs> to bet a beautiful woman. <laughs> I hate when you talk about me on the plane. Now. I was going to say, how'd oh, you no, get into that? that is not, it was not about you. But... Uh, well, listen, you got to, on a plane, you got to lower your voice. Yeah. I mean, everyone's involved in your conversation. <laughs> Thank goodness that's all they heard. Well, you know, that can be embarrassing, but I'm telling you, Robin, your whole... <laughs> yeah, you're right. I have to tone it down. You have to tone it They've down. They've made these planes quieter, too. You know, you used right. to have to talk over to the engine to even talk to the person next to you. Yeah. And now they've quieted them down. Were you sitting next to Joan Rivers? I told you. I walked onto the plane. My seat was the aisle seat, and in the window seat was Joan Rivers. Wow. So you were you were just put next to each other. Yeah. And then you entered it up on huh, the whole flight. Not the whole flight. We went, uh, uh, she read a book for a while and fell asleep, and I fell asleep. It's so eye. exhausting when you sit next to somebody you know, and they just want to talk the whole fucking time. Yeah. Oh. And then it's annoying when you want to talk and then the person's asleep, like with <laughs> fa-fa-fooey. I know. We can never get the right mix. I told you that story. 
Yeah, yeah, that's great. Several thousand times. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Gary's please, sick of it. This fucking animated drawn a movie was made of it. Fucking fa fa fooey. Unbelievable. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a plane. Uh, you know, I won't tell it again. I guess oh, enough tell people. it again. Well, no, then I lived just it. briefly. It's a lot of new subscribers. No, it's just I was on the Arsenio Hall show and it went horribly wrong and I was thrown out, you know, physically thrown out of the building and Fafa Fui was with me. <laughs> and I was so traumatized I had a first class ticket to go back to New York and Fafa Fui was in coach and I said, I'm upgrading you. And I said I asked you to, by the way, this is the part you leave out of the story. I said, It's not necessary, Howard. I'm gonna sleep. And you're like, No, 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 I wanna do this for you. Of course, ten o'clock LA times one o'clock in the morning New York time. Let's start there. What? We got on the red eye. It was 10 o'clock L.A. time, which means it's 1 o'clock in the morning New York time. No, it so, wasn't. Yes, so, it, was, it was 10 we, o'clock for us. We'd been in L.A. for a while. Yeah, you were on we were L.A. time. Days, so, so 1 o'clock in the morning. From 10 o'clock no, in the, the morning fucking guy, the second he sits down, and I'm like, Jesus Christ, thank God I got Gary here. At least I got someone to talk to because this was really bad. It was eerie for you. You had just yeah. the, the moment you got off the air, you called me and said, how bad was that? Because I was watching it. They used to do it live, <laughs> and I could watch it in New York live. Yeah, yeah. You were just shaken. Yeah, I mean, it was great. Like, it was, like, wild. It was sort of legendary, but... Jesus Christ, when you're the guy doing it, your fucking whole body shakes. You know, you're like, Jesus Christ, I just went out there and acted like a madman. I guess I am a madman. I must be crazy. You remember the joke that touched him off the most? The actual joke you did? You said, uh, (laughs) because I guess the name's Arsenio, you know. Were you named in a, did your mother name you in a fire? <laughs> and you was yelling out arson, I guess? Yeah, no, no, no. The, the thing that got Howard in trouble. Well, well he, he, then Arsenio went, I, I'll, I, you know, I'll let you talk, but I, I remember the thing that Arsenio said was he immediately went to that card of like, don't talk about my mother, you know. Yeah, right. And right. everybody started going nuts. Like, oh, I'm not talking about your mother. I'm saying, you know. No, there was something about how do you get to keep the show? Do you have pictures of Rupert Mur- Murdoch? And farm animals and stuff. That was like the, the whole audience just. Ooh. No, and then I. I thought it was the uh, African. Edgar. I thought it was the African band. No, no. I thought it was. Uh, do you blame Fox for the death of Edgar? That, was, that was it. I mean, all of the things we just said led to it, but that what Fred said was it. Yeah, I was crazy. I don't even know that it was funny. I was just fucking crazy. You well, were funny. Yeah, I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> Nobody else did. He was trying to. Yeah, he wasn't. He was trying to not let you be funny. Right. Was, I know. was embarrassed to be on the Arsenio Hall show, so I figured I'd take the tack that I was just pissed off. But I, but I, but I really was. I guess. You know what was really embarrassing about that for yeah. me? I got a cousin. I wouldn't know you were asleep when I tried no, no. to. Right, you, didn't, you fell asleep before you could tell him. I, I got a cousin. I got a cousin who lives in L.A. Right? right. And we weren't on the air in L.A. at the time. She'd only heard about you and heard that I worked for the show. So um, we, we hadn't had a chance to see each other. So I got her tickets to the show. I was, like, so proud. Like, uh-huh. this is the guy I work for. And the audience hated you. It was a total L.A. audience. No one had ever heard the radio show before because we weren't out there. And it was a mostly black audience, and I had referenced the South African band that was there or something. Yeah, and, yeah. And it's sort of, I go, who wants to hear from them? Or something like that. But I don't even know what I did. I just remember my cousin and I spoke, and it was, like, really uncomfortable. Like, yeah. she's like, oh, that's the guy you work for? Yeah, he's uh, interesting. Oh. So, yeah, so the point of the story is, well, people don't recognize a maverick when uh, he's in the height exactly. of his <laughs> powers. <laughs> anyway, I look, I was trying to keep it real. But I, then Baba Booey, I put him back on the plane with me, and I upgrade him to first class because I really need someone to talk to. And the motherfucker puts himself to sleep like a baby. He just he just goes, bull, a little tired. And then, like, I'm like, how could he sleep? We just went through something very traumatic. I mean, we didn't. You did. Yeah, but you were there. I know. You, no, you were I know. thrown I was out, tired. too. It was just weird. And then, like, halfway through the flight, he wakes up and goes... <laughs> he licks his choppers because they're That's all dry. That's my favorite part of the story. And he goes... <laughs> and his mouth is dry, and he goes, Wolf, i got to get some orange juice. <laughs> so I go, okay, good, he's up. I'll talk to him now. Because I'm staring at him the whole time, and his fucking mouth is open. And, and you can't I mean, sleep. I, I can't sleep because I'm staring at Gary. And he goes, well, we'll get some juice. And then he, he gets the juice, and he licks his lips and teeth. And then he goes... And he goes, he puts himself right back to bed oh, with his with his juice. You know what's fucked up about that, Howard? <laughs> like in the That's history, great. and then we, we, I had to wake him up when we hit New York. In the history of me flying, <laughs> yeah. I've never ever slept like that. Oh I my swear to God, God. you're like yeah, a. You like a here's, what, usually. No, here's what I, I remember. Like, he has no thoughts. Here's what I remember: the plane took off, I believe, at ten thirty, 
And I remember being asleep before it took off, which is rare for me. I was going to kill myself. And I remember Howard. I go, what a waste of money. I remember Howard. It's like 600 bucks. Really? You, 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 you paid 600 bucks. Oh, so more, than that, more than that, even. <laughs> With no discounts. But you know, it's really funny. I was oh, looking and forward. And had a nice big seat for it. Oh, thank you, Bull. <laughs> I was looking forward to going to sleep, and Howard goes, I'm going to upgrade you. And I go, You know, I'm just going to sleep, Howard. I'm fine where I am. He's like, No, yeah. no, I want to do this for you. Right. It was weird. I didn't want the guy back and coach when I'm in first class. It just would have been weird. But I, I, I even remember Howard, like, going, Hey, we're landing. Oh, I love when <laughs> I'm in first class and my friends are in coach <laughs> because you sit in first class first and they got to make that real embarrassing walk to coach. Behind and I like, you. I point and yeah. laugh. I'm like, ah. Yeah, I just didn't know I'd be sitting next to Bowie Van Winkle. <laughs> <laughs> and, then, and I'm sitting there, I'm like, I, I, and I'm staring at him the whole time, just going, oh my God, I just cannot believe that he is not talking. And then when the juice happened, I was like thrilled because. <laughs> Give it a juice. He was awake now. I remember I'll never forget that sound. It was like. <laughs> That's what I love when you do that. It's, 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 see, it kills me. He was dry, and then he does, you know, and he licks, he goes like this. <laughs> Uh, like in the cartoon <laughs> in the anime. Like, like, See, the thing that sucks about the story for me, Howard, <laughs> is whenever you tell the story... Everything? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Wolf, I'm dry. I need juice. <laughs> Where's my juice? And I was like, oh, no, he needs see, his wait, juice. Wait, hold on. See, this is the, hold on. I want you to see. This is the part that humiliates me, where Robin has to take her glasses off to get a tissue on her eyes because the tears are coming out. You see this? Look at that. I mean, seriously, remember I told you about this? Yeah. This is fucking humiliating. She's laughing. But look at this. She's having a good time. <laughs> she likes when I lick my lips. Unbelievable. <laughs> she likes when I do the teeth licking. Good. Why She's don't you guys it. go get a fucking dinner reservation and go do, the, do it at a table? This gets you when I do that, right? Oh, it kills me! <laughs> <laughs> but I was out of my mind, and I, all I, I just wanted him to wake up. But then he, I woke him up. We hit New York. Well, Howard, let's complete it now. So now you, you could pause, and now Artie can tell his version of it. No, I, no to tell I, I just said that I I had a remember Gary when we flew out. We had a gig in Anaheim. I do. When we the, when we saw Macaulay Culkin, that one. That's in right. Okay. A similar thing, Am, but you were at the aid of Ambien. Yeah, I gave Artie too. an Ambien, which is like right. fucking shooting an elephant in the toe. L literally, right. no, it did. It didn't even make me a little drowsy. Artie goes, wow. Artie goes I go, Artie, That's I got these nuts. pills. I go, these pills are like miracle pills. I discovered yeah. them for the fl for the flights to the West Coast. It's impossible to stay awake. I take one and I sleep for like four hours. Uh. So Artie goes, all right, give me one. So I take one, I give Artie one. Like, I'll take any drug. I'm out like a light. <laughs> Artie, pill. Artie, like, you could have shot it with a dart gun and nothing would have happened. Wow. But then Gary falls right to sleep. But we were we were in business class, That's I right. remember. They were just, they were kind of comfortable with seats. And, of course, my chubby ass, I'm trying to get comfortable. I couldn't. And then I, I almost woke Gary up to get another Ambien from him. Like, yeah, another yeah. one. Artie needs, like, an wow. elephant tranquilizer. Really, yeah, I'll never bottle. forget this. Big I dart. Had, I had, like, Artie steps on the plane and people <laughs> start shooting darts at him. <laughs> <laughs> Mutual of Omaha's Wild Kingdom is on board. No, but I'll never forget this because it couldn't have been a worse movie. I, had, I didn't have Gary to speak to. You're flying to L.A., which is long, like six hours. And the fucking movie was under... A Tuscan Sun. Oh, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh, oh my great. god! I, I like, actually, I actually enjoyed that movie, but I could never watch it on a plane. I would be furious. Oh, I just like okay, now I got the ultimate chick movie. Yeah, yeah. that's right up Artie's alley. <laughs> Although that chick is hot, Diane but, Lane, man, I'll watch her do it. Yeah, anything. she's hot. Yeah, but uh, yeah, so anyway, that was the whole L.A. story. I mean, yeah. I was so mad. Six hundred, seven hundred bucks. I know, right down the drain. You know. Uh.